What's up guys? It's yo boy on this and see. Welcome to What If I Was Reborn in a TLA? Becoming the Greatest Waterbender Finale. Remember to check out the original story, the link is in the description. With all that out of the way, enjoy. After a week of meditation and hanging out with you, I was ready to leave the tribe once again, this time with Sakura by my side. We said our goodbyes to everyone, and marched towards the Fire Nation, with one thing in our heads killing Ozo. Sakura was obviously nervous with this plan, and maybe I shouldn't have accepted her idea so fast. Now, she has to risk everything she has worked for, in this, when I just could have waited for the Fire Lord to open for an attack. After walking for an hour, I summoned Cheshire and Ursok, with Josiah being the key, Fire he who would fly us to the Fire Nation, saving us time and money on this endeavor. But even with Josiah being our transportation method, it would take us two days to get to the Fire Nation border. Though, this was an immense improvement to our other alternatives. Now, my father's name is Akon Laken. He loves playing chess and poker. He has an addiction to chocolate and hates mosquitoes. His favorite sport is Firecatcher. And he loves Earth Kingdom music. But he doesn't let anyone know for political reasons, Sakura said, breaking the silencer. He is a sucker for romance and loves his family. If you want something from him, just call him Papa or Grandpa. He will melt at that quite literally. Oh boy, this is going to be very entertaining. Cheshire purred in a laugh. What am I supposed to be? Ursok shouted in question, wondering what his role was. You two are his pets. Sakura said somewhat uncertain. Just don't talk normal pets, don't talk. Ursok looked at her and barked, bark. Fire bears, they don't barking is for Sakura's side. We will work on that, a pet Josiah hummed. I can finally be an asshole, and people will love me for it. I chuckled, all right, I think I got it. Now onto the next thing Sakura side. If you show too much firebending prowess, many nobles will try to get your hand for their daughters so, try to keep a low profile, arranged marriages, great. I see, we continued our trip mostly in silence, with Sakura telling us about all the customs and things we had to expect from how to behave around other nobles and what to do in certain social occasions, giving me specifically a full walkthrough on how to behave in the first stage of our plan. That was fitting in, and getting some political allies. All the plans were so overly complicated that I was starting to think Varta was right, that it was best if I just went and slay that bitch. No political games in the middle, but I decided to do otherwise, because like I had said, worst case scenario, I end up killing him. Best case scenario, I end up killing him. The difference between the two was the process. One was short, the other was, well, considerably more time-consuming. Though not all things considered, this overly time-consuming plan could bring me some unforeseen benefits. For one, being a noble I would have access to a firebender teacher, being the element I lack the most in skill. If you don't count airbending which I suck the point being, I would abuse the fuck out of my recently acquired noble privileges to get in a firebending school and learn the bases and master my third element. Though I didn't consider myself a master in any bending yet, I had a high standard for it. For me to be a master in my terms, I had to master the element with all their respective subcategories of bending. After approximately half a day flying, we descended on a nearby unnamed island to set our camp. If we continued at this pace we would be at the Fire Nation by tomorrow before midnight. So you want me to call you sweetie or Akira? Sakura teased, getting comfortable inside her sleeping bag. Akira please. I did not like her calling me sweetie. It was weird. Akira the Fire Lord. Huh? Sakura chuckled. Things sure are getting interesting. I am sure it will, regardless of what happens. I chuckled. As a POV father had called me back to deal with some political situations. Not exactly the best moment for it. But with the day of the Black Sun above us. It was to be expected, attacks could occur during such a day. And who better than to ensure everything goes accordingly to our standards. For one there was a very high chance the Avatar and his little friends would attack. Which would provide me the chance to play with the Avatar a bit. Maybe even capture it if I played my cards correctly. That, of course, was only a big if. We didn't know for sure if the Avatar was going to come or not. We are going back. Ye, Ty Lee giggled. Your happiness is deeply upsetting. Mai muttered. I envy your naivety orders from the Fire Lord himself. 
I said with a final tone. I couldn't wait to be back and show father once again why I was the best option he had. The best heir. That I was better than Zuzu in every way. Iro POV the spirit realm was different. At first I didn't understand why. But a few glances around showed me the answers I was seeking for. Bata was missing. At first, I panicked. Arm was nowhere near the skill he needed to defeat a foe like Vatu. But seeing how calm the spirit and physical realm were, it meant one of two things. One, Vatu was still in a prison, but a different one or two. Someone had merged with him. Of course, there were other possibilities, like a more powerful spirit killing him. That would in turn force him to reform inside Rava. But something told me that wasn't the case here. For some inexplicable reason, I had a strong feeling the world had two avatars now. One for order and one for chaos. The world is changing, and for once I cannot know if those changes are for the better, I sighed. After a long long flight, we had arrived at our destination, and I was having a lot of second thoughts about this. Politics weren't my game at all, but once again, I found myself around a little corner, one that I like to call, it's worth a shot, at the very least. My meeting with my grandparents. God, that sounds wrong. Anyway, my meeting with my newly acquired family members was not as I expected. I was prepared for some type of harsh treatment, not to me but to Sakura. I mean, what parent would just accept their child being 18 years away from them without coming to visit? Well, they were pretty okay with her, accepting her decisions, mostly because they were under the assumption she was learning about the airbenders and their culture. She was apparently a researcher, one of those that explore old shit to get knowledge. Another thing I learned as soon I got home, was that her nickname was Sakura, reason why she had chosen that as her fake identity, though I suppose it wasn't a fake identity, just her hiding behind a truth kinda smart actually. Immediately after my arrival, I was greeted by two overly affectionate grandparents, who hugged the ever-living shit out of me, as soon as Sakura introduced me, for them, this was normal, for me, it was weird as shit. A few minutes later, after exchanging a few words with them, I was guided to my room alongside Ursok and Chisaya, mostly because I would probably get lost if I didn't have one of the butlers guiding me. The house was massive once I was in the room. I was a tad shocked in how loaded Sakura was. The room I was given was bigger than any other room I had ever had, bigger than any house I had the pleasure of living in. I had two fucking living rooms in my room, one for visits and one for personal visits, according to the butler. But that was just the tip of the rich iceberg. White marble floors, gold decorations, and more. This family was rich, very rich. And she wants to be a maid. Cheshire was the first one to talk. As soon as the butler left, she probably had a maid for the maid. Well, whatever makes her happy. I chuckled as I jumped into the really, really, really soft bed. God, I think I will take this mattress for me. It beats sleeping on the floor or the ground by a long margin. I had found a love of my life with this mattress. It was no words could describe the texture, and before I knew it, I dozed off. The next morning, I woke up groaning, my body refusing to let go of its newfound soulmate, the mattress, but with determination and a lot of willpower. I blinked away the lingering yet sweet haze of sleep as I groggily sat up on my bed, rubbing my eyes while stretching. Taking a look around I noticed the window in my room was open, revealing a sunny day. And considering Chisaya was still sleeping, and so was Ursok, it meant someone had entered my room. This overly comfortable mattress was a liability. If I can't be alert, I can die. Taking a deep breath, I jumped out of the sweet but dangerous prison of my bed to find, so Fire Nation clothes folded neatly on my night table, meaning it was the butler or a maid that had entered my room, for those clothes were not there the day before. Sighing in defeat, I strip off my clothes, putting on the ones my fake family had so graciously provided me with as I do so. I felt something watching me, but not moving, thanks to my elemental senses, in a mild shock, whoever had entered was still here. I jumped back turning around, with my eyes being immediately drawn to the bathroom, where I had felt the presence. Morning, young master, as the young maid bowed, a single thought occurred to me. I was still as I came to this world well. Not this one, but you get the gist, I was naked. Normally I don't have any problems with nudity, but as a man, I struggle with a problem in the mornings all man or at least most do. One that I prefer not to blind the little maid with I mean. I don't even know her name. Jesus, for the love of why are you here? I exclaimed in shock and mild embarrassment while putting on my underwear in a rush. I did not want her to see my morning wood. The funny thing is, the maid was completely okay with it. Not in the okay sexy way, but in the way that said. I had seen so many people naked to the point I had become immune to the effect known as getting flustered by nudity. My name is not Jesus, Master, and as for why am I here, I was assigned to be your personal maid. 
The maid answered without skipping a beat. Next time, knock. I said with a small frown while putting on my pants. As you wish, the maid nodded. In the meantime, Cheshire, who had just woken up, was struggling to rein his unyielding need to laugh at me. Leave for now, miss. Lee Ember, the maid answered before leaving the room. Really Cheshire laughed, you have Vato inside of you. And you panic when someone sees you naked. Look, I don't have anything against it. Yes you do Akira, just accept it. Heck, she was pretty. But, I don't like surprises. I sighed, which was also true. Like 80% of my panic was not knowing someone was there. While I flashed them unbeckon to me, of course. If I ever flash someone, I will have control of the situation and not. Okay, why am I thinking of that? Get back to your standard train of thought. Young master, after you finish talking to yourself please come down to have a balanced Fire Nation breakfast. Lady Lakin is waiting for you, Lee said through the door. Fuck, I groaned. After asking my grandparents and mother god that will take a while to get used to, anyway after asking them or rather demanding them some privacy, they ordered all the personnel to stay out of my room unless I myself asked them to enter. A man needs his privacy. After that, I started my day with a very delicious breakfast, and immediately after that I was told to go and explore the city, while they discussed some stuff with my dear mother. Seeing I had nothing better to do for now, and our coup plans were going to take some time, I agreed, besides I wanted to see the Fire Nation capital up close anyway. Before leaving I was given a large sum of money to spend as I saw it fit. With no reason to reject the money, I graciously took it, and started to explore the vast and rich fire capital, buying shit I would probably never use, eating in every restaurant that crossed my path, and tipping the servers outrageous amounts. But no matter what or how much I spent, I was nowhere near using the money they had given for one day. Thanks for everything. I smiled at the waiter as I left, tripping into someone, apologize, someone demanded, by the tone of voice, posture, smell and demeanor. I knew it was a noble woman, typical. Sorry? I said, inwardly chuckling as I stood up, being mildly shocked at what I saw. Azala was the one I had just tripped against. On your knees, Azala smirked. I want you to apologize on your knees bay for forgiveness. Oh well, this plan the coup plan lasted more than I anticipated. Two whole days well, a day and a half, no, I said, matching her glare. I already apologized. I wasn't asking, Azala said, glaring at me. If this crazy ass bitch thinks I will kneel and lick her boots just because I crossed her paths, she is in for a surprise. Okay, still not kneeling though. I winked as I walked out of the restaurant. Holy macaroni. He talked back to Azala. Ty Lee commented in awe, and how did I know it was Ty Lee? Well, she was doing a cartwheel while talking. Who are you? Azala asked. Akira Lakin. I replied, without missing a beat, or while still walking towards the door. The Lakins don't have anyone around your age, Mai commented. And how did I know it was her? Well, her voice, body posture and eyes screamed she was so over with everything, she would have fit well in my old world. Mother and I came back I was born outside the Fire Nation. I shrugged. Then I can understand your stupidity allow me to give you a second chance to kneel. Azala chuckled. Here in the Fire Nation, my word is law. By all means princess make me kneel. I challenged, shocking both my entirely. Very well. I shall indulge your suicidal thoughts, Azala sighed, trying to look bored. But she was enjoying this. She wanted to make an example out of me. She wanted to make me kneel. And in the process she wanted to make me suffer. He's dead, Mai muttered with a sigh. Hum? I don't think so. Ty Lee giggled, landing in front of Mai. The way he walks and presents himself and the color of his aura are very scary. I think he has a chance. Oh, maybe we can't match them. Is she really playing matchmaker? I asked Azala. Don't pay too much attention to her. All the brain power she has it's used on her acrobatics. And in this type of thing, Azala replied with an annoyed expression. So, still up for me making you kneel. I chuckled. The only way I will kneel is if someone is strong enough to make me. I winked. Very well. Follow me, Azala ordered. And just because I had no fucking idea where we could fight, I did as I was told. And I walked behind Azala. A single thought came to my mind, that after beating her, I would have to take Sakura out of here, and come back later to kill Ozai. For I knew I was going to win this petty duel, fucking the coup plan. Azala POV I have but one day in the Fire Nation, and I already have to show an insubordinate idiot, why he has to obey my every command. Though Tai Lee was right, this Akira was no normal guy. I also could tell he was a warrior. I wonder how long it will take me to break his bravado. He seems confident of his skills, overly so. So much that it will be a pleasure to break his confidence. To show him why I was the best of the best. So where are we going? Akira asked, with a yawn he was bored. He was going to fight me and he was bored. That wasn't confidence. 
That was stupidity to a place where I won't burn the city while teaching you respect. Neat, Akira chuckled. Ty Lee POVA boy. A handsome one. And one with enough metaphorical balls to stand up to Azula. Finally. Someone that could date her. Azula is always complaining no boy ever hits on her. And how could they? Every single one of them is afraid of her. But this Akira wasn't. He had all the check marks on my Azula dating profile. Handsome check. Confident check. Well in doubt. Well, there is no way a man with such confidence has a small BFF. So check. From a noble family. Check. He was the grandson of one of the richest family in the Fire Nation. Now all he had to do is survive Azula long enough for her to crush on him. And everything will be okay. I am so excited about this. I giggled. I don't understand or comprehend how your brain works. My side. Or if you even have one to begin with. Watched by a few dozen spectators that had followed us. Azula and I got ready for a battle in the training yard the Fire Princess herself had selected. Tell me, began Azula, is this what they call stupid male pride? With a low chuckle, I quickly devised several possible answers for that. Before deciding I might as well annoy her. Who knows? I shrugged, with my arms crossed besides it's only stupid if you lose. Well... I hope you don't disappoint, Azula smirked, getting into position. I smiled at her and said nothing. Disappoint. If someone was about to be disappointed it was me. Though I suppose she also will be disappointed, she couldn't touch me. Very well. I shall indulge you. I smiled as I uncrossed my arms, getting into my own position, drawing from my sword lessons, with legs parted slightly for better support. The same goes for you. Please do not disappoint. I added with an inviting look telling her to attack first with just a glance. Azula noticed, and with a smile of disbelief she attacked. The torrent of blue fire coming at me was deadly but boringly predictable, and copying her motions. I parried the attack easily with one hand, and attacked with the other, my power far from being at its best. I was after refraining from using Vato and his emotions to fuel my fire. Azula dodged the attack jumping out of the way towards me closing the distance between us, showing just how agile and fast she was. She then grabbed my hand before I could move out of the way, and tried to burn my face. But with a smile, I grabbed her fist, stopping the attack before it even began, diffusing it with my own fire bending. Not bad, but too risky. Wouldn't you agree? I smiled, throwing her into the air with a single hand. Azula chuckled in mild amusement as she maneuvered graciously to the ground. Without saying anything, she lunged at me, each kick and punch followed by a deadly torrent of blue fire. But I simply smiled, slipping away without much difficulty, keeping my eyes on her as to avoid receiving any damage. So, is this all? I inquired, kicking the little princess a few meters back. No, Azula replied with a glare, summoning her favorite technique, the lightning. How interesting I commented with awe, studying the motions she was showing, learning every little detail I could, copying her motions and remembering what I had read and watched about this deadly technique. I closed my mind and separated my Kai, while copying her motions, and easy enough, I had generated my first lighting. This was so shocking Azula herself lost composure for a second, but soon recover shooting her lighting that clashed with mine. I took the blinding explosion as a chance to close our distance, and delivering a punch to her stomach with enough strength to make her double over, spitting a bit of blood. She gasped in disbelief for a short time. I must thank you for teaching me how to use that technique, one thing was readying about it. But to see it in motion, it helped me put all the pieces together. I smiled at her, kneeling down to see her eye to eye. Azula growled. Now, I will show you what I am capable of. I sure hope it's a thousand times better. I smiled deep down. It pleased me that she was going to start taking this seriously. Otherwise, this battle was nothing more than me beating her. I continued to study her base and forms, copying her techniques and adapting them to my own style as I battle her. What I had yet to achieve was creating blue flames. I had so far achieved purplish flames that were quite hot but no as hot as the flames Azula herself was using. Well, princess, not that this hasn't been entertaining, but I have things to do. I smiled. I had for one been humoring her for a good half an hour. I wanted to do something else. I had, after all, learned more than enough from this little duel. With a sigh I dash at her, dodging her attack. Once I was in front of her, I created a curtain of smoke and jumped behind her. While she tried to figure out where I was, and then proceeded to hit in the back of her neck with a strong chop, knocking her out cold. He won my commented in disbelief. BMG. Ty Lee giggled, running towards me. While I kept my guard up, I had no idea what she was going to try. Are you single? As soon as that question left her mouth, I heard a beep on my head, like the one people used to hear on the 90s. While trying to connect to the internet, I am I replied, wondering if she was trying to ask me out or something. Not that I was against it, Ty Lee was one of the seven Fire Nation girls I would without doubt smash. The other six were her sisters, jokes aside. I would not say no if the chance happened to be available. 
Then again, she could be trying to set me up with Azula, and I'd rather be single. Good. Would you like to go out on a date with a very pretty girl? Ty Lee giggled. Oh, thank goodness she isn't trying to set me up with the Arkham case. I would be delighted. I smiled at her. Yee, I'll be in contact soon. Ty Lee smiled, running back to Mai, who was repeating over and over again. The fact that I had won as if said fact was impossible. Well, I'm off. I waved at them, leaving an unconscious Azula, a very happy Ty Lee and a very confused and broken my behind. From this battle, I had learned a lot, one that in terms of technique, Azula was leagues above me, for now. But in raw power, experience, talent, speed, and endurance, I was superior to her. Being the sole reason, I stomped her on this duel without much problem. After my little duel with the Fire Princess, I went back to exploring the city before going back to the Lakens' home. Wondering when my date with Tai Lee would be, I was genuinely curious. With a smile, I entered the house. Being greeted by Sakura, how was your day? Sakura inquired. It was interesting. I chuckled. I had a fight. Sakura eyed me for a second before asking. A fight? With Azula. I sighed. Did you win? Sakura asked. I did and learned a lot from her. I nodded, surprised she wasn't scolding me for fighting the Fire Princess. Well, now we wait, Sakura sighed. For what? I blinked. To see if the princess will take this as an insult or a challenge, Sakura sighed. Probably an insult. That girl is in serious need of psychological help, we'll see, and the days passed, and I was fully expecting the Fire Princess to come for revenge with an army, or her father to declare me a traitor to the nation, but surprisingly enough, none of that had happened yet. So I took my sweet time exploring the city, and every little restaurant I could get my hands to. I wasn't gonna lie, I was enjoying this, it was relaxing, none hated me here, being a noble and all. I was loved by some people and ignored by others which in turn made my empath powers for the first time in a long time feel good, especially inside the Lakin's home. Sakura and her parents loved me, and as corny as it sounds it feels good to be loved, especially when you can freaking taste like food every emotion. As for the date I was promised, well, I was still waiting for Ty Lee to come, but by this point I was sure Azula intimidated her out of the date. I can't picture Azula being okay with Ty Lee dating the guy that defeated her. Oh well, I chuckled. Ty Lee POV when I told Azula she had a date with the big strong, handsome, and powerful Akira, she flipped. It was adorable seeing her getting flustered. I knew she didn't dislike this, otherwise she would have let me know very violently. Instead she was nervous, for the first time in my life, both in mine and Mai's life, Azula was nervous. Why would I date the guy that humiliated me? Azula muttered, trying to sound angry at first she was. But now that the prospect of a date was in her horizon, that anger was gone she was intrigued by Akira, about his prowess in battle, she wanted to date him. I have to agree with Ty Lee god that sounds wrong. My side, but he seems like your type. Yes powerful, handsome, and well equipped, I giggled. Well equipped indeed he was his techniques were flawless, Azula commented. With the sexual innuendo flying over her head, she was going to need more help than I had originally anticipated. She's like a baby on this matter. I might learn a thing or two, improving my own technique. My side, so are we doing this? Come on Azula, I know you like him. I teased her. Fine Azula relented, first time for everything. But you two better help me. For if I fail of this mission, I will burn you two down. And there it was our old Azula was back, barking at us. Don't worry if Akira doesn't kiss you by the end of the date. I will jump into your fire. Yeah, that's how good I was. As long as you two have that clear Azula nodded, fire igniting on her hands, very well. I will go to this date, and like everything I will succeed, burning anything on my way. By this point everything was burning around her, while she laughed like a maniac. Alright first tiptoe that down a few hundred levels, maybe I should have promised another thing. We are going to die she will scare Akira out, and we will burn, my whisper to my ear. Don't be silly, Akira can take that, and more. I sure hope so. Akira POV two days later there were a few things I didn't expect in life, things I considered borderline impossible, like soccer defeating me, Paku being funny, Vata dancing, and stuff along those lines. Today, one of those impossible or rather improbable things happened. Azalo was at my doorstep, dressed with a cute outfit instead of her uniform. Looking at me her emotions made everything clear. Ty Lee had tricked me, Azula was nervous, which was something I didn't expect from her. I expected anger, hate, maybe even envy. But none of that, just a girl a crazy one at that being nervous. I have come for our date, Azula stated. I see, I replied. Do you need more time getting ready? Azula inquired with a very awkward smile, her emotions flaring with the idea of getting rejected, making me wonder, why was she so invested on this? Why was a date with a random guy so important to her? I, I wanted to say no, and leave her. But I just couldn't, give me 5 minutes to change my attire, add a compliment Akira. She might be crazy, 
but still looks kinda cute, and she doesn't need another reason to go even more crazy. I need after all to match your looks, though I doubt I will look quite as good, alright that's good enough. Very well, Azula nodded still with a very awkward smile, blushing a bit. I will wait here, Sakura looked at me, and Azula outside from the window, as I dressed, you are having a date with her. I to be honest when I accepted I thought it was with Tai Lee. I sighed. The girl you defeated, Sakura inquired. Yes, I nodded. The fire princess. Yes, I nodded once again. I don't know if I should be proud of you or angry, Sakura added. Meh, I'll be both proud and angry, don't worry. I doubt she will want to date me more than once. I winked. I don't know, Sakura commented with a smile. She seems kinder invested on this. Well, fuck it. Who knows maybe she isn't as crazy as the show showed her to be. Maybe she's just an entitled child. No Akira, you know she's crazy. Stop trying to find reasons to make this a sound decision. I sighed. Fuck, you know the saying. Don't stick it crazy. Well, guess what? That saying was absolutely right before today. I never had the experience of dating a crazy girl. And boy was Azula crazy but I couldn't really blame her. From our brief encounter during a battle, and right now in our date, I had gathered more than enough information about her to get a pretty good general idea of what she was, and how she had come to be what she was. Azala was a firebending prodigy and a dedicated perfectionist, showing this during our date, as she even controlled the way she walked, making sure her steps were perfect and symmetrical, showing she was once nothing less about herself, and other than absolute control. As for a psychological point of view, she very smart, but her incredibly high IQ was eclipsed by her narcissistic and antisocial personality disorders, which had taken roots inside of her head, thanks to dear old dad, Alzai. As our date progressed, I questioned her without revealing my motives about her childhood trying to sound like a guy interested in her upbringing, and just as I expected, she had started to show these cruel and sadistic tendencies from a very young age, with her father nurturing these behaviors with fake love, while shutting down any good in her before it even began to grow. Thanks to Ozai, even as a child, she had proven to be cruel, having a sociopathic personality, showing almost no empathy or remorse for her actions, even when those actions harmed others both physically and emotionally, her targets usually being Zuko and her friends, Mai and Tai Lee. But, from what she was sharing, she wasn't always like this. Apparently, there was a time where she and Zuko were close before the monster of Ozai took a more active role in raising her, showing that Azula was heavily influenced by her demon-like father, who was a monster in every possible way, leading her to a labyrinth without exit, as she believed she would win his love if she was more like him. However, that was impossible, for Ozai was a ruthless man incapable of love, and as Azulta desperately tried to win Ozai's love being like him, her mother Ursa and her drifted apart. Because as soon as little Azula started to emulate her father, being cruel and sadistic to win his love, Ursa started to scold her for her acts of cruel nature, which apparently occurred pretty often. With her showing clear favoritism to Zuko, Azula focused on trying to win the favor of her father, but without her mother's love. But none of that came, Ozai never loved her but did show favoritism to her. But without the love of the two most important people of her life, she was traumatized, shaping the fear that she could not count on the love from anyone, no matter how close they seemed. Which cursed her to be unable to trust others, and like her father, began to control those around her using fear. This, of course, wasn't what she had shared. This was the empathic version I had gotten with powers, as she shared her story from a very delirious point of view, showing her grasp of reality was very broken or that she was forcing herself to believe otherwise. Zuko was always jealous of me, Azula grinned, finishing her story, but behind her confident smile, I was drowned in a sea of pain, pain like I had never before experienced. True sadness? How in the world can she talk without crying is beyond me. That's quite the story. I smiled, so I have another question for you. Very well. But that means you owe me two questions, Azula stated in a demanding tone. Why did you agree to come and date me? I asked, knowing very well it was Tai Lee who had put her to this. I mean Azula would not have this initiative, and besides, she was laughing even when I wasn't trying to be funny, meaning Tai Lee had given her some awful advices. I know for a fact this wasn't your idea, at least not fully I mean. After winning a duel, I expected you to come at me, but not in a romantic way. Azula frowned and then smiled. Well, I because together you and I will be the strongest couple in the entire world. With our powers combined we will dominate the earth. She finished, lighting her hands in her signature blue fire. So, because I am strong, I chuckled. Basically, Azula nodded. So you don't find me handsome? Why am I teasing the Arkham case? But as my mind questioned why I was doing this, I found myself unable to stop. I do, Azula nodding, stepping closer. 
her face inches away from mine, in the corner of the restaurant room I had rented. Good, I smiled, her face was at this point so close to mine that I could smell the sweet fragrance of her perfume invading my senses, with her emotions showing a light tint of hope. Hope that I wasn't going to reject her. Why was she feeling this? She barely knew me, and lost in this feeling of the unknown. The next thing I know, is that her tongue was in my mouth. Her kiss was so instantaneous, so urgent that it overpowered all my senses, as it sought some unreachable yet tangible feeling. I knew now why I hadn't outright rejected her. It wasn't because I pitied her or because of not fucking the plan. If that was the case, I would have kneeled the first time I met her, avoiding all of this. No. The real reason I hadn't rejected her was because I was like her, we were both broken on different levels. And stopping any resistance. Not that there was one to begin with. I let myself immerse on this feeling, as my lips mashed against hers trying to flatten and destroy her mouth in a wild desire of contact. She hungrily pushed back, her mouth open, tongue exploring the moist space within my mouth, with my tongue doing the same. With Azala gripping my head firmly, showing even though she wanted control, holding my head as if to keep me from escaping. How broken was I? How broken was she? And how sad was it that I felt comfort in this kiss? As the POV maybe time stopped when his lips met mine, but the flutter inside of me only intensified. My heart pounded inside my chest as my knees got weaker. I was feeling weak, and for some reason I was okay with it. I could only focus on how soft Akira felt against my mouth, how aggressive and delicate his touch was, how addictively he invaded all my senses. A part of me was afraid, afraid this was a dream. A part of me wasn't clear if I had dreamed this moment to life, like many times before with different things. But another part of me grounded me to reality, showing me this was as real as anything else. Behind this kiss there was raw and pure emotion, showing even here a battle for control. In the way his fingers held my head in place, as I did the same, in the way Akira kept his eyes half open, sneaking a peek every time he came back for air, just to make sure that like me. This wasn't a product of his imagination. I still wasn't sure if nature rooted for this moment, or if my mind tricked me into this wonderful moment. But every breath I took, I smelled the now sweet aroma of a river, and for the first time since I have known myself, I didn't feel the need to win. If anything, the warm feeling of his breath on my face, although destabilizing, was inviting, making me for a brief moment consider losing against him once again, this time on purpose. But I wasn't going to let him win this so easily, so I held my place. He didn't fear me, and surprisingly I was okay with that. It felt good whatever he was feeling for me right now. I Akira muttered as we broke our kiss, his eyes lost in the background. Akira POV, what in the hell was that? I almost felt out of control like if I had entered the Avatar state for a brief moment, and this was the result. Even now her lips looked inviting welcoming. I I had no words, a part of me screamed I should fight this ludicrous feeling. That I shouldn't have any feelings for the Arkham case. But unfortunately for that part of me, what I was feeling was not only overwhelming of his own, but even more intoxicating with what I was feeling from Azala. Like a drug almost. No one before her had this raw feeling of wanting me so bad. I wanted her. I didn't know why nor I cared. I wanted Azala. And I was going to have her. Akira Azala was about to say something, but this wasn't the time to talk, so I took a step forward, softly putting a hand on her face, demanding in a way another kiss as my lips were getting closer. The smell of her hypnotic beyond reason. She immediately shut up, and once again aggressively pushed back. Her lips smashing against mine, and once again I felt that particular wave of warmth that made me question everything. Like why was I feeling this when I barely knew her? I continued to kiss her, as the taste of her silenced all my thoughts. She almost felt delicate under my arms, like a porcelain figure that could break if I pressed her too hard, making my whole body tingle at the feeling, but it also felt so good, especially the feeling of her frame leaning against me as my arms wrapped around her felt nearly forbidden, yet so right? This would probably change a lot of things in my life, but I didn't care, claiming her mouth was intoxicating, with the feeling being hungry and intense. The feeling her knees giving in was truly magnificent. It was as if time had stopped right there for me to appreciate the moment as we stood propped against the wall of the restaurant glued to one another. As if no one else existed around us. Well, I have no words. I chuckled, breaking the kiss. You still owe me two questions, Azla stated, her eyes sinking into my core. As I answered her questions, I started to question my motives. I knew this was wrong. I knew all the cons and problems of this. But it felt so right, she felt so small in my arms, so mine. The worst part is even under all her defenses she had allowed herself to feel something for me. I could feel her raw desire for love, screaming at me not to reject her. The funny thing is I knew I couldn't reject her not anymore. That ship sailed a long time ago, for I felt something for her too.
entirely POV at first I was nervous, Azala was going on her first date she was so smart and powerful with everything else. But so socially awkward when it came to boys. But this boy was different, he didn't fear her. Not a single bit. I knew that. I could see it on his aura. That like hers was broken even more than hers. So I made my personal mission to put those two together, giving Azala all my knowledge about boys. Like laughing if they say something. Though she took this too seriously laughing even when there was no need. I also told her to be the one to initiate the kiss, boys love that. But if I had to be honest, I expected a little kiss, a peck on the lips, not the full out makeout session they were having, it was beyond my shipping expectations. The way they kissed was hypnotizing. I had never seen kisses like that, so powerful yet so delicate. Azala had a boyfriend I smiled, there was no doubt of that. For how long? My boringly added, if the Fire Lord doesn't like him that's the end of them. I have a feeling he doesn't care about what the Fire Lord thinks I replied, for some reason Akira seemed like the type of man that didn't care what others said. His aura said that much. But that was just the underline. I have seen the aura of Ozai. I know with detail how much of a monster he is. And yet, beside Akira, his aura feels like a kitten throwing a fit. After my first date with Azala ended I went back to my house, with a single thought in mind, that there was no doubt I had feelings for her. And that the worst part was that I knew it was stupid for me to do so, or rather impossible. I had after all known her for maybe a day or so. And yet even though I knew her to be crazy as funny, I just couldn't find a reason good enough to motivate me to cut her off from my life. Every time I tried to think about one, my mind would wander to the very moment our lips met, how soft her lips felt, and how aggressively hot it was. Needless to say, Azala already had a feeling of possessiveness for me that emanated above her other emotions, like an animal claiming its territory. I could feel it and if somehow made me happy, to feel that to feel her every emotion. I could still remember perfectly what she felt during her first kiss. At first she was scared of rejection, terrified that I would turn her down. Then surprised I had reciprocated the kiss, and now she was elated with how things had resulted. It was weird to feel every emotion coursing through her, like water in a river. But I couldn't deny it felt good feeling her lips touch mine comma. It was almost as if the world vanished around me, erasing any other emotion that wasn't her, intoxicating my feelings. Well, I suppose things could be worse. I muttered, jumping into my bed. She seems like a nice girl, Josiah commented, maybe a tad violent. But who am I to judge human mating rituals? I rolled my eyes at the cat. I just didn't expect to develop any feelings it was better when I didn't have girl problems. I chuckled. Problems? Aren't you two a thing now? Cheshire asked confused. I I suppose we are? I wasn't entirely sure. But considering how possessive the princess felt about me at the end of our date, it was safe to assume she saw me as hers now. Then what is the problem? Cheshire asked again. I I don't know. I sighed with a low groan. It's just that I I didn't expect this to happen in my mind. I had a vision, an idea of her and a single kiss. Shattered that a single kiss shattered my barriers. Like I was a fucking sandcastle. I chuckled, taking a deep breath, and the worst part is that I am not mad, just scared of what? I have no clue, I then turned to look at the cat. I know I make no sense, but what I feel makes no sense. I suppose I understand, Josiah purred. You do? I chuckled. I have known you for quite a bit to have a general idea of how you think, the cat nodded. No matter how powerful you are or how immortal you become, you are still a living being subject to confusion, fear, or the unknown and more, fear of the unknown. I inquired. You expected things to go a certain way, and now you have no idea where you stand, and that scares you a bit sometimes the things that scare us are not the things that can hurt physically us, Josiah chuckled. Sometimes it's what we can't understand what scares us, and you can't understand this. Not completely, I suppose. I sighed, wondering what if he was right? Was I scared I didn't anticipate any of this? Or was I scared I wanted things to continue this way? That I wanted more of the blue fire princess? Thanks Josiah. It's a pleasure, Josiah smiled at me, with a warm tone. As a POV I had a boyfriend, a man that didn't fear me, nor my father. And he was all mine. I would make sure of that, maybe I could bring him with me to my mission on the Earth Kingdom. Ensuring no other suicidal girl tried to conquer what I had conquered. I can't believe you have a boyfriend. Ty Lee giggled jumping upside down. You can't. I eyed her. There was no doubt I was going to win his heart and make it mine. I declared. There was no doubt. Of course it was. I never kissed a boy before him. Or flirted with one, they all feared me, for a good reason, they were weak, pitiful, pathetic, and more, so all the information I had about this subject came from Ty Lee, and some novels. I wasted some time with, it intrigued me what romance was, though I never believed I would care for it, it was still entertaining enough. 
but Akira changed that, his rough and somehow at the same time soft lips changed that. I felt weak on his arms, little, fragile almost, and I liked it. I just couldn't hate the feeling in the way he held me, as if I was a porcelain doll about to break being so delicate with me. But at the same time aggressive trying to dominate our kiss. I of course, didn't allow him to win so easily and fought for control. But still the feeling was intoxicating. There was no ulterior motive under him. He cared not for my status or power. He just wanted me. So now what? Maya asked. Well, now he joins our group, I stated. What about the possible invasion? Maya asked again. We still have some time before that. Right now we must go back to Ba Sing Si. I replied, with Akira in my team. No one would stand in our way. The Avatar would fall to our hands in a crushing defeat. Awesome. Tai Lee smiled. But you should date him a few more times before you ask him to travel around the globe with us. I intended to do so. I said, I will wait 48 hours before going out with him again, 48 hours after my date with Azala. I woke up to see the Fire Princess herself, Azala, in the living room of my house, talking with Sakura and my so-called grandparents. In a very un Azala manner, which almost made me panic. But a quick check to her emotions with my now very useful empath powers, showed that Azala was actually just testing the waters, to see if there was any opposition on my family side, that she would have to burn down to dust to get me. Honestly, I'm flattered. You didn't tell me you were dating the Fire Princess. My grandfather commented with a smile, feeling both proud and scared. I was planning to. I commented, with clear amusement, Josiah's words still echoing in my head. I had to accept things not always go as planned, nor here, nor in the spirit realm. I liked Azala, and I would be with her as long as that was a fact, something I had come to accept last night, after my crisis. Who can blame me? Even the best of us have some crisis. I'm sorry I ruined the surprise, Azala apologized with a smirk, but behind her words, there was an underlying insecurity. She probably thought I didn't tell them right away because I wanted to keep a kiss in the shadows. Just how much Oz I had broken her. No, it's okay. I shrugged. This just makes things easier. I winked at her as I walked down the stairs towards the living room, where all the family was sitting. Do you have any plans for today? Azala inquired with curiosity, her doubt slowly subsiding. I actually do have something to do. I nodded, and it should take me around an hour or two. Why? Did you come to take me out? I chuckled. Something like that, Azala commented rolling her eyes. But I'll wait until you are fully available for it. Very well. I nodded as I slowly walked to her kneeling to her seated level, and with a soft smile and no warning, I pressed my lips against hers, softly, delicately, and full of desire, clearing any doubt in her mind. I was hiding or ashamed of what had happened between us. And as that brief second elongated, I could feel her insecurities melt away, as I inhaled her shaky breath on my face, feeling the warmth of her skin on mine, and once we broke that short but meaningful kiss, I could still taste her lipstick lingering on my mouth as a gift, a gift just for me. Azala was pleased with the kiss, while everyone else present was stunned. Where can I find you after you finish whatever you have to do? The Fire Princess inquired. I'll be back here as soon as I finish. I answered, leaving a stunned audience behind. When I left Azala in my house with the excuse that I had to do something, it was because I actually had to do something, not just walk around. I had to meditate, mostly because I wanted to talk with Vatu about a few things. I wanted to clarify some thoughts I had. For one, I wanted to ask him about what he thought about chaos and harmony. Chaos and harmony, Vatu said, somewhat uncertain of my question and how to answer it. Yes, I mean you are the spirit of chaos. But what is harmony to you? I sighed, without harmony there can't be no chaos, for chaos without harmony becomes the natural order of things. Therefore becoming harmony, starting a paradox, I chuckled, for something to exist an opposite must exist, otherwise its purpose becomes meaningless. I stated, hot without cold is just a word. How do we know what hot really is, if we have nothing to compare hot against? Why are you suddenly asking this? Vatu said after a few seconds of silence. Well, I have some doubts about what to do from now on. These last few days I had more than enough time to see things in another perspective. I chuckled, are we agents of destruction? Or agents of change? After meeting Azala I came to the conclusion we humans are the result of our personal experiences. The events in our life mold us. I was pushed to do a deal with you. Just because I wanted to feel safe from the primordials I never admitted that. But that was the underlining of my deal. So you want to change the world? Vatu scoffed, realizing where I was going with the conversation. Most of the changes in human history are thanks to you, and your chaos. I shot back, surprising the chaotic spirit, chaos brings change. Harmony brings stagnation, but chaos also brings destruction and death, Vatu added with a smile. Yes, I nodded, but a short life of change is better than a long one of nothing. So answer my question, what is harmony to you outside Rava? A meaningless concept that even with Rava ruling humans, 
can't achieve Vatu answered with a tired tone. What are you planning this time? Well for starters I was planning on changing the world. By stirring up the events as I know them. By getting rid of a few players. I smoked at the spirit. Your original plan coming here was to kill the Fire Lord and then go back to training. But that's not all anymore is it? Vatu said with clear amusement. Killing Ozai at this point it's more of a personal thing he isn't much of a goal or a challenge anymore. I inwardly shrugged. What I really want like I said before is to drastically change the world I live in. My goal? To make it more interesting. Chaos and harmony I see now why you asked. You just wanted to clarify and realize you just don't give a fuck anymore ha 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 very well. I will support this endeavor Akira start an era of chaos in your own way. This helps me either way rather won't stay quiet if we interfere too much with moral affairs. So be sure to interfere a lot, and kick her ass every time she tries to get in our way. Well that sounds like a plan. I chuckled. After my talk with Vatu, I went back to the house to see what Azula wanted to do. She apparently had the idea of introducing me to her father, so that we could go on a mission together. That, of course, wasn't the case. She didn't need to introduce me to anyone for me to go with her, but she wanted to. In her own crazy way she was trying to set a public claim on me so that other girls would stay away from me, if her fame didn't push them away beforehand. Seeing this was my chance to personally measure Ozai on a scale of how weak he was compared to me. I accepted, it would be fun to see the one responsible for the world as it is. This, of course, was a double-edged weapon kind of thing for me, as I was right now. I wasn't going to kneel or show any submission to him. I didn't want to, and even if I did, Vatu would go crazy inside of me flipping a metaphorical table inside my head. And this was all thanks to Azula after that fucking kiss the falsehoods I had been feeding me about playing the long game were broken the moment everything felt down like a house of cards. The moment I allowed myself to feel something so real, now I didn't care anymore for the plan. But, I did care for Azula. My feeling for her or how strong they were didn't make sense. I knew this was going to bring me more problems than anything else I had done in my life before, but I just didn't care. The worst part was, I knew I didn't love her. I liked her, but love was such a strong word. What I was feeling was more animalistic than anything, like a sense of possession. The moment I kissed her or rather she kissed me, I just felt she was mine. Was I going to fall in love with her? Well, a few years ago I would have said no and laugh, but after all the shit I've been through in the span of almost a decade, I can say for certain, I have no fucking clue what the future has in store for me. Then again, I have never loved anyone in the romantic sense before, so perhaps this was love. But regardless of the exact definition of my feelings for Azula, I had to thread carefully with the Fire Lord. One word from him and Azula would turn on me, like a hellhound. I needed to sink my fangs deeper into her core, for one day she would have to betray her father for me. The palace is right ahead, Azula commented pointing to the palace, with a sense of pride so strong it surprised me a bit. This should be fun, I commented. Azula looked at me, and with a smile said, It should, but please don't insult my father. I have my reasons to forgive our first encounter, father, on the other hand, does not. So try to avoid getting him mad. I finally have a boyfriend, and I would like to keep him alive if possible, adorable. I chuckled, don't worry, I'll behave quote or kill him. If he tries to mess with me, either way, works for me. Good Azula sighed, her emotions flaring with relief. I knew this was important for her. I could feel it. The area immediately surrounding the royal palace was very dull, fully covered in rocks, and completely devoid of any form of plant life. For someone this would show a lack of concern for decoration in the royal, but this was actually a very smart move on their part. For this terrain made stealthy infiltration nearly impossible, for any guard would be able to see you. Miles before you entered the palace, as the carriage took us inside the castle, I took in detail the wall encircling the estate that separated the palace from the rest of the city, with guards in every single corner, a few hundred by what I could feel, and I knew there were more, but unfortunately my water and seismic sense were not enough to get an exact number, for the terrain was too vast for me to cover, but it did give me a general idea of what to expect for when I kill Ozai. Now, after all this, I expected a very impressive palace, after all, the Fire Nation architecture has always surprised me, compared to the other cultures around, but in the end, it didn't. After all that built up, the palace itself is was a single and very dull structure, that had some charm to it, but not enough to be worthy of being a palace. The place was literally a freaking tower with three distinct wings in it, being considerably smaller than the Earth Kingdom Palace. Taking a deep breath, after the very underwhelming feeling of what this building was, I focused my senses on the larger wing of the tower, yes, I refuse to call this a palace. When even the water tribe has something better, anyway, after focusing a bit, I noticed a very dark kai emanating from the palace, which surprised me a lot. Not because something dark was in whatever that wing was, but because, before Toddle like right now, 
I had never felt someone's emotions. Or in this case Kai before. Perhaps I was going crazy. It's always a possibility. You are not the only reason you felt whoever it was in that room was because his feelings were dark enough to warrant you to feel them. Vita chuckled. This is getting delightfully interesting. Well, if what I felt was someone's feelings, and they are this dark they can only come from someone, as I, I inwardly sighed at the thought, if I could feel his feelings from here, in close person, that guy would put me in a mood. Oh, so that's your future-in-law, Vatu laughed. I can't wait to see this perhaps you will call him dad. Vatu, if I have to kiss Ung to shut you up I will. You wouldn't dare and just like I had originally deduced the one that was emanating such a corrupted, repulsive, vomit, provoking array of emotions was Ozai, his mere presence had me at edge. It was like poison to me it hurt both physically and emotionally to be near such a disgusting excuse for a human being. Ironically like fire he was burning me from the inside out. But this agonizing meeting had proven something I was mentally stronger than I thought. Here I was sitting beside Azala, with a unyielding urge to rip him apart to end my pain. And yet he was still alive, wasting oxygen in my presence, like a worm crawling in a pile of shit. You are the one courting my daughter. Ozai asked, his feelings flaring with a strong sense of superiority, looking down on me as if I was a bug. Yes, I am, I nodded, trying to be as polite as I could physically be. Right now I couldn't focus too much on my manners. It was taking all my concentration to keep myself from jumping at him like a lion on its prey. I don't think he should even talk to the princess, a man I had completely failed to notice commented, and who can blame me, right now with this struggle for control, it was the perfect time to try and attack me, after all, my focus was solely on Ozai right now, fortunately for me, your opinion doesn't matter Azala shot back, he was born and raised outside the glory of our nation, our princess is basically dating a commoner my lord, the man kneeled in front of Ozai, I bet he doesn't even has a decent education or training, I could always rip you apart, that way you can personally see how good of a bender am I. I growled. If this idiot wanted to be my lighting rod in more than one way, I would be more than happy to oblige. In fact, I was fucking elated. Are you challenging him? Alzai inquired, his emotions showing he was delighted. Let them fight farther. It would be a show to behold, Azala smirked. Happy with how things were going right now, and a Naikai to prove himself worthy of courting me. If I have to kill an idiot to prove this decision it's remarkably wrong then so be it, the soon-to-be coal man stated. I will enjoy breaking your bravado, I said with a cold tone. I am one of the generals of this powerful nation, the only thing you will do is waste my time. The piece of coal commented, feeling confident behind his words. So be it as I stated, excited at the idea of seeing bloodshed, you two will fight for your honor in an hour. It's so sad really, as an aside, to think we will have to replace a general in times of war. Her words filled with excitement. But oh well, you win some you lose some, as you wish, my lord, the corpse bowed ignoring Azala, as he turned around trying to shove past me. But I stood my ground, and in turn, it was the idiot who fell into the ground. The only one that can push me in all heaven and earth it's me. I stated with a cold tone, bowing to the trash named Ozai, before leaving the room. Immediately after leaving the throne room, I waited for Azala outside, where she congratulated me with a very passionate kiss. Father doesn't hate you. And now all you have to do to win his approval, is squash that insolent bug who tried to separate us. And considering you defeated me well, this will be easy. I chuckled, it will, now. Let's get you ready for this little show Azala chuckled. Oh and be a dear and make him scream. After Azala gave me some traditional clothes that were normally used for the noble and I case. That she for some reason had on my size. Which reminded me that I had to talk to her about that later like how the fuck did she know I was going to fight an Anaikai. And more importantly how in the extra fuck did she know my exact measurements to the letter. I didn't know my measurements. Anyway, after Azala gave me the clothes I needed to wipe the floor with the general. I waited at the designated location. Until the fire lord and some nobles came. Let's do it. I sighed, shedding the traditional shoulder garment as I turned around to face the general. Very well. Though to be frankly I thought you'd run away. The general said, thinking to destabilize me with weak ass trash talk as if a few sharp words would do anything to me. Perhaps I should make an example of your family after this, he said, smiling. Well, I had to give the man a prize. He had touched my buttons there by threatening Sakura, meaning the desired effect was reached. I had been destabilized by his words. But there's one thing you don't do. You don't fuck with someone crazy enough to date someone on the royal fire family. As soon as the words left his rotten mouth, my thoughts turned to Sakura, 
and immediately my anger surged, filling me with energy that soon bursted into wild flames around me. Good, commented Azula with a grin, pleased with the development. Surrounded by flames that could rival the sun itself, I blasted at the idiot, and shaking with anger I stopped just in front of him, observing his eyes, seeing them shaking with unadulterated fear, hinting he was starting to regret his decision, and not only that, but I could feel he wanted to surrender with my empathic sense. But as he tried to muster the strength to do so, I simply glared at the terrified general and slowly pulled back my left fist preparing to attack, begging, bringing my fist forth. I blasted off the man from hip to head incinerating his upper body, before he even had the chance to fully reconsider his life choices. I win I said walking off the stage, leaving a very frightened audience, a very intrigued Fire Lord, and a very very happy Azala. With my victory came the approval of Ozai, which meant for now I was allowed to court Azala. Which meant now I had to focus on breaking her attachments to him, for as long as Ozai remained on her life. I would not be able to kill him, without breaking her in a way. So I had to be careful, for now at least. Considering how weak their relationship was, it would be easy to break their outstandingly toxic relationship. And when that day came, Ozai would fall to my feet. It wasn't anymore because killing him would save the people you cared about. At this point I just wanted to kill him for the sole fact his presence was like a knife on my stomach, his emotions were poison to me. It was incredible the amount of pain his mere presence was able to put on me. Being until now the worst thing I had felt in both lives, it was as if my body was breaking apart over and over again. And not killing him made it only worse. So, will you come with me to the Earth Kingdom? Azula inquired, showing difficulty with the fact she was asking, instead of ordering me. It was cute seeing her trying to be polite, when she was hardwired to be bossy. Sure, I don't mind, I nodded taking a deep breath. Very well, Azula smiled, together we will capture the Avatar, and end this once and for all. The Fire Princess declared with total confidence in her words. We will, no we won't, at least I won't help with that. With a sigh, I started to silently meditate on our way back to the city, as I let the sound of the wheels crashing with the rocks of the road calm my mind, letting everything around me fade. I don't care if you like the girl you have to kill that man. Barta demanded as soon as I entered my inner world. I thought you said and I quote, This will be fun, so why the sudden change? I inquired. We are one you simpleton. The pain you felt I felt it. I do not want to experience such pain just for the possibility of you getting some action. Barta shouted in anger. Too bad I'm the one that takes the decisions here. I replied with a chuckle, but don't worry he will die soon, in a month or so. If everything goes according to plan, Vata sighed, as if weighing his options, what is your plan then? Well I plan to make Azala see there are things that are more important than power and control, I answered. Vati groaned at that, please don't say love, as corny as it sounds. Yes Azala craves that Ozai sees her as a tool. Her mother saw her as a monster, and so did the rest of her family. I knew it was corny. But it was true, if I showed Azala some love she might get better. Very well but be warned Akira if your plan doesn't work. I will kill Ozai. I might not be able to control your body for more than a few seconds. But rest assured all I need is a few seconds to end his pitiful existence Vatu said in a dangerously low tone. Shocking me, since when he was able to control my body. That shit was new. Are we clear? Crystal. I sighed as one new problem added itself to the mix. Now the chaotic spirit of darkness had the power to control me. Granted it was just for a few seconds, but still, the thought of that occurring was very terrifying. Back at the mansion, I went to Sakura and started to tell her about my plans. Well not all of them, but the ones she had to know, like the fact I was going to the Earth Kingdom with Azula to capture the Avatar. At first Sakura was not sure it was a good idea to do so, but after analyzing the political points this would win me, she went from saying it was a bad idea to encouraging me to do it. Her logic was pretty sound, showing her good grasp of war politics, after all, the more time I used on helping the Fire Nation with their military endeavors, the more supporters I would get, which in the end would put me on the throne. What Sakura didn't know was that I didn't care about that shit anymore. And while I wanted to share that with her, it would have to wait. For now I didn't want any more ruining my plan, and while I knew Sakura was my friend, I also knew she had priorities, and Azula wasn't one of them. So are you really going to capture the Avatar? Sakura inquired. No, I chuckled, I will probably kick his ass again though. Which reminds me I need a mask to cover my face. The last thing I want, if them revealing something they should not, a good idea we can't let anyone know of the full extent of your powers yet. Sakura nodded, though capturing the Avatar and then showing your powers, might win you some if not all the political approval you need. But that's a long shot, not only that shit was a long shot, I didn't want to kill Arn, yes he was annoying as fuck with his pacifist mindset on a world filled with war, but that didn't warrant a desire for his demise. At much I wanted to kick his ass, 
But that was it. Talk for yourself, Vardu commented inside my head. All right, there was a part of me that wanted him to die. But to be fair, Vardu wanted everyone to die. So he didn't count on my decision. I will try winning the political favor in another way. I chuckled. Fair enough, Sakura nod. When are you leaving? I have no idea I wasn't paying attention to Azula on the way back. Can't anyone blame me. I knew Ozai's emotions basically kicked my metaphorical ass. I'm sure she will come later to remind you Sakura chuckled. It took us two weeks to get to Ba Sing Si from our seats. I could hear the Fire Nation Tundra tanks rumbling across the rugged terrain toward the outer wall of Ba Sing Si. And with this I knew where I was canonically speaking. If the, the enormous Fire Nation drill Azula had commissioned was anything to go by, and I had to admit the drill was a masterpiece, that I doubted many benders could stop. The massive drill was a statement of the Fire Nation power, leaving a trail of despair as it released steam from its pipes, and metal spikes lodge into the surrounding land, inside the Fire Nation drill's control room, where my, Tai Lee, Azula and myself, were currently seated around what Azula calls the commanding table, we were discussing about the plan to take the city as soon as possible, alongside one of the war ministers of the Fire Nation, as the conversation kept on stretching, I started to question my life choices. Being part of the military was boring as heck, then again least I wasn't suffering like the poor Fire Nation soldiers operating the machine, their job was beyond my numbing. With how boring everything was I couldn't help but let my mind wander to the deepest and most stupid corners of my consciousness where I wondered if the mask I had bought would suffice to hide my identity from the gun. It wasn't as flashy as the one Zuko used when he played the role of the Blue Spirit, but it should suffice. I kinda took inspiration from the Anbu masks in Naruto when I ordered the mask, so in theory it should work. Though, considering how stupid the gun is I doubt I will have any problems whatsoever. This drill will bring Ba Sing Si to its knees. Nothing can't stop it. War Minister Kim boasted once again for the millionth time about the drill's magnificent power and its capability of breaching the walls of Ba Sing Si. If the guy knew how close I was to make him mute, he would shut the fuck up about the drill. Will the Earthbenders be able to stop the drill or slow us down? Tai Lee questioned, her emotions flaring with boredom, like me. To which Kin simply replied by stating that the drill's metal shell was impervious to any Earthbending attack, once again boasting about the fucking drill. Not that I don't love hearing you talk about the drill, but if you keep on jacking the drill, I swear to God I will do something that I will not regret. And who do you think you are? The war minister inquired angrily. But before I had the chance to answer his stupid question, Azala beat me to the point and said, someone with enough authority to burn you alive without any repercussions. I looked at Azala and chuckled, you heard the princess, minister. Now I'll get to the point the minister visibly blanked, and with a terrified expression said, well in summary, it's strong enough to resist any attack. From the outside that is. Well, it's time to get ready, Azala said, with a wickedly delicious smile. Akira and I will lead this invasion, as for the rest don't disappoint us. Finally something to do. Mai said, the one emotion girl as I inwardly called her. Bored? She was never mad or anything just bored. Yee. Tai Lee giggled. I always wanted to fight against the famous terror team of Ba Sing Si. Can I do it Azala can I? Can I? Please. Azala sighed. Fine, just don't lose, I don't have losers on my team. Dear Azala, you lost to me therefore you are a loser in a way. While I followed Azala, I kept tabs on everyone around me, especially my team. Tylee, for one, had immediately rushed to fight the terror team, and by the looks of it they were pretty weak, she took care of them in the span of a few minutes. My, well she was doing the bare minimum, nothing more nothing less, fighting the earthbenders only if they directly attacked her. Things as of now were pretty dull, but soon they would get interesting. Thanks to my heightened bending senses I felt Team Un approaching the drill, meaning I would soon get to fight Un again. But then again considering how weak he was as of now, that wasn't much of a challenge or something fun, more like beating a child with a bat, said child being quadriplegic. But perhaps seeing Azala fight him would sure be entertaining enough. If the Avatar comes I will let you fight him, I informed Azala. Why? Azala inquired with curiosity. Well, I want to see my girlfriend kicking his ass. That wasn't a lie, more like a half true. I didn't want to fight Un for two reasons, one if I did fight him, it would end with me capturing his ass, and two well, like I said a quadriplegic kid. I see, Azala chuckled, then it will be my pleasure, if anyone else interferes I will take care of it, I added. There is no need, Azala shook her head with a smile, you want to see me defeat them and destroy their hope, then I will do it alone to show you just how strong I am. Blue hot swelling fire lighted on her hand for dramatic purposes. Very well, I chuckled at the adorable display, by the way. I still don't understand why you want to use a mask, Azala inquired. I hummed at that trying to formulate a valid answer, style preferences. Hum. Fair enough, Azala nodded, accepting my answer. Meanwhile I could feel Team Un getting ready to clash with us. 
and while the image I was getting from them was at best blurry, it was more enough to know what they were planning. Unfortunately for them their plan was destined to fail. As the drill imminently approached the walls of Ba Sing Si, I patiently waited for Team Un to arrive, deciding to see things from a different perspective I left Azala alone. As I walked around the surface of the drill, my destination being where Un was, I just couldn't wait another half an hour. Running towards his location, I sighed finding Un who was wasting his time on a futile attempt to weaken the metal surface of the drill. With his astoundingly weak water bending, while this was possible his strength with the element was mediocre at best, and would never cut such a thick layer of metal, at least not before the drill had fulfilled its purpose. What I'd give to be a metalbender. Arn sighed as I rolled my eyes if he wanted to be a mentalbender all he had to do was train. But considering he is so clueless that he had yet to notice a masked man standing right behind him. I say he won't ever achieve that, not that it matters. As I studied Arn and his movement wondering when would he notice I was behind him, I decided to give him a little shock. But that would have to wait, Azala was coming and announcing her presence. Momo suddenly shrieked in fear, causing Arn to turn to turn around and catch me, in the sight of a blue fire blast coming toward him. Yo, I waved at him, jumping out of the way. I literally spent five minutes behind him. That is remarkably sad, Azala commented, getting into her battle stance. Now, stay back and enjoy the show, she added with a smile. Arn, during this exchange sent Momo away to avoid the poor critter getting caught in the crossfire. Taking a deep breath, Arn go into position preparing to duel Azala and me, adorable. As of now, he will barely make her sweat, and he thinks he can take two at the same time. She will be your opponent. I have no interest in fighting you. I stated as I walked behind Azala, burn him good, I whispered to her ear. Delighted, Azala smirked, jumping at him, with a smile. I sat back as I got ready to enjoy the show. Quick on her feet, Azala started to shoot several blue fireballs at him, leaving him no chance to counter-attack, all of which Ahn managed to avoid showing his immense prowess. When it comes to dodging, if only Gohan from TFT learned that. Ahn, however, is not letting Azala completely dominate him, and with a quick swing blasts a gust of air her way, which Azala dodges by jumping over it, continuing her fireball assault but Un uses switches his bending using water whips to deter Azala's blasts. This while flashy is a waste of time. I know for a fact Azala can end this, but she's purposely delaying his defeat. Your water bending sure is bad. I chuckled, making Azala smile. It sure is, but oh well. This just makes things easier for me. Azala winked at me, kicking Arn to the wall. While sending two fire blasts at him Arn in shock, attempted to deflect the blast, conjuring a water shield. However, the idiot seemed to forget water evaporates. And it's not a good element to block fire if you don't have large amounts of it. So as a result he is sent back to the wall, crashing against it once again. This is highly entertaining, Vati commented, and I could feel he was happy, or less angry, which is technically the same for him. As their battle continues, several boulders are hurdled downward getting in the way of their fight, and frankly that can't do. So with a smile, I decided to make things more interesting. For me, of course, considering the battle would end in about a minute or so, with the factors being mud behind the wall, and the soldiers that had infiltrated the drill, I wanted to spice things up a bit, making their duel a bit more risque. So with that in my head, I secretly started to earthbend them with my mind to make things more interesting. By slightly changing their trajectory to force Arn out of the wall, I wanted to force Arn into the offensive, so I pushed him with the boulders off the wall, forcing him to create an earth wall to avoid Azala's upcoming blast. Taking the wall as a cover, Arn started to repeatedly attack her with all the elements but fire, pushing Azala back as she struggled to dodge the boulders and his attacks coming her way. Taking a deep breath, I changed my focus to the boulders, now changing their trajectory off Azala's path, as to not give the avatar any more help. This gives Azala the opening she was looking for, and with a powerful fire blast, destroys his defense as she proceeds to charge a lighting attack at him. But before she finishes doing so, a small part of the Alls of Ba Sing Si collapse, and Arn is swept off the drill by a tsunami of mud. Jumping out of my position, I grabbed Azala by the waist, stopping her from having the same destiny Arn had suffered. That was incredible. But it seems luck was on his side. Not good enough, Azala sighed. I didn't manage to kill him. Let's be honest, you played with him like a cat with a mouse. That much was true, Azala had much more to offer in a fight. But she enjoyed toying with her opponents, which by the way, I approved to be expected of my boyfriend. To see behind me so easily, Azala chuckled. I do enjoy a good mouse chase. You can ask Zuko or Mai, or Tai Lee, or everyone in your school I suppose. Alright now what? The drill is toasted. I asked Azala as I ran with her in my arms. Any ideas? For now. Azala chuckled, for now let them enjoy this empty victory. After the drill incident, we regrouped in a Fire Nation base nearby Ba Sing Si, and while Azala talked with the local soldiers, giving them orders about what to do now, I was figuring what to do about my relationship with Azala, and how to make it progress. 
I had at most one month to change the way she saw me. I knew she liked me. But realistically it wasn't love, it was her infatuation at the moment, so I had to change that. Because I knew for a fact next time I saw Ozai I would kill him. So I had to act fast, maybe have more dates with her, or more flirting. I really didn't know what to do. There wasn't anything I could do to make someone fall in love with me in less than a month, so I just had two to try. Azulea Tylee waved at her as she approached us. As she approached us, I noticed she was specifically walking directly towards me, and before I could ask her what she wanted, I felt a surge of pure desire coming from Azula, and the next thing I know my lips were locked in a sensual kiss, fueled with something almost primal, she kissed me like she wanted to steal my lips away forever. Like nothing else mattered, the kiss was soft and moist, but also hot and breathy. This time she wasn't trying to win anything, but seeking union and closeness and the sharing of one breath, one sensation, one timeless and passionate moment. That swallowed my very soul for a brief yet infinite moment. I could feel her every emotion coursing through her body, and I couldn't help but marvel at her beautifully flustered expression as the heat of the moment colored her face, tinting her cheeks of an innocent yet lustful pink as her tongue touched the deepest corners of my mouth, making our connection quick, electric and delicious. With the movements of her tongue becoming firmer and more determined, that was so hot Tylee giggled. I can care, I chuckled as Azula she broke the kiss. I can get used to this, Azula smirked, sitting on my lap. Unable to restrain myself at the side of her body atop mine, I pushed myself against her. As if to avoid her escape, and began to kiss her softly, tasting her lips, savoring her lipstick and little by little the intensity of the kiss grew. It became more rough, more needy, more savage. Get a room, my muttered, feeling angry and jealous. Well that was new, Miss Borden was angry. You can't blame her for Zuko. Ty Lee whispered to her friend, and now it was clear why she was angry. Seeing us like this made her feel angry with the world. Well, fuck her. I don't care if the other fire princess is not here to kiss her. I will enjoy my time with Azula. Because should I fail in winning her heart things will end. For the remaining of the week I trained with Azula. With most of the training being me copying her movements and adapting them to fit my own style. Little by little I could feel my fire becoming sharper, more lethal and stronger. As I uncovered the secret behind her blue fire. Blue fire sacrifices quantity over quality. By compressing the largest amount of flames possible on a single focal point. Maximizing the power output of the flames by several folds. This I had noticed after studying her very closely. And thanks to that I had managed to master the secret behind the strongest flames of all. But I didn't stop at that. Having blue flames was just step one, so I kept on training. If I could only train one of my elements I would at least master said fucking element. So immediately after mastering the art behind the incredibly deadly blue flames, I turned my entire focus on training my lightning bending. I wanted to be able to use it without having to do the fucking fusion dance. This of course was harder than it sounded, because this technique was 90% dependent of how well the user was able to bend and manipulate their kai. But this wasn't the hard part. The hard part was training with it. See, lightning bending it's very taxing. A single lighting takes a lot of Kai now using multiple lightings tires the fuck out of everyone. Now for me this was not entirely the case, thanks to Vata my Kai reserves were massive. But even then, after 12 hours of non-stop lightning bending, I would find myself on the ground at the verge of passing out. I don't know why are you tiring yourself this much, Azula commented, as she helped my tired body back to the camp. Perfection takes time. I winked at her. Azula rolled her eyes. I suppose, on POV for some reason I still had to understand. I couldn't shake my mind off the masked men that watched me and Azula fight, feeling a chilling sense of deja vu, as if I had seen him before, but the part I didn't understand, was that my body my entire being cried in fear, I wanted to run away the moment I saw him, and he didn't do anything to warrant such a reaction from me, he barely talked to me during the fight, alright, so now we are 3 against 4, Toph commented, I think I can take 2 at the same time, Toph it's now 4 against 4, Sokka stated with a frown. Oh yeah, you Toph chuckled. For the love of, I can still fight. Sokka shouted. Meh, Toph rolled her eyes. Whoever that man was, we have to be careful. Katara sighed. As we know, Azula is surrounded of dangerous people. So if short he must be skilled at something for him to be on that group. Well, he did seem agile. I commented. For days I trained at the Fire Nation base, focusing solely on my lightning bending, and little by little, I was cutting down the time I needed to control and form my kai to generate lightning. If I kept progressing like I was, in less than a month I would be able to snap my fingers and electrocute people. Needless to say I was delighted with this development, showing that apparently fire was the element I had the strongest connection. Let's try this again. I sighed as I slowly generated a lightning bolt on my right now, Chidori ripoff. 
I was training and that name was a joke, so don't judge me. You certainly want to be the best lightning bender, Azala commented, as she entered the training ground. So how is the training going? Well, I no longer have to dance, so that's an improvement, but I still have to do some moves to get the desired result. I replied, while demonstrating what I meant, creating another lightning bolt and shooting at a rock nearby that exploded upon impact. Impressive, Azala muttered in surprise. Perhaps I should train too, she added. Sure, I chuckled, but for now I'm going back to my tent. I really need to rest very well. I shall accompany you, Azala stated. Sure, I nodded, we can totally hang out. As we walked inside the tent, I took my shirt off and jumped to the bed, Azala blushed, but soon recovered, sitting on my bed. So, what do you like to do when you are not training? Azala inquired, putting her hand on my leg. I, well, to be honest, I'm all training. So I guess I don't have hobbies, I replied. I suppose we are the same, Azala chuckled. I don't have any hobbies, just goals. Goals I always achieve one way or another. I suppose you are right. I nodded, grabbing her hand and pulling her in for a kiss. But if I have to be honest, I enjoy my time with you more than anything right now. Azala chuckled. Are you calling me a hobby? No, I chuckled, kissing her once again. Azala POV I didn't plan on this happening. And for me that was very weird. Everything in my life had been according to a plan. My plan to achieve my ideal of perfection and jet. Tonight I went off the plan, and what started as a friendly talk with my boyfriend with a few playfully kisses, ended with me on his bed, naked, smelling like him and him smelling like me. I wasn't mad, I was happy, excited, somehow fulfilled. I had taken Ty Lee's advice about being more sure of myself when it came to my boyfriend, and now here I was. I had broken so many rules. I had thrown ability customs, alongside my plans out of the window, and everything was for him, and I had enjoyed it. And now, I just couldn't get enough of him, we were both tired on the bed. That much was clear and I was certainly sore after it, but I didn't care. I didn't want to sleep, not now, not after what we had done, and the best part was he didn't want to sleep either. He wanted me, only me. Seeing his eyes only looking at me, like I was the only thing in the world, made me feel powerful craving something only he could provide, a feeling I could feel with him. Our connection had always been primal, and tonight was no different. Seeing him fueled with desire, made me crave his touch, and push the boundaries expected of us. And I had enjoyed every second of this rule-breaking activity. The feeling of his weight on top of me, the way we both claimed each other like beasts on heat, was like nothing I had expected or read about. Before today, sex was nothing but a tool a means to and end to keep the bloodline alive. Something I would have to do, but not enjoy. But now it was something beautiful. I didn't expect to hold something so vanal, so dear. I wanted to kiss him, bite him, taste his pleasure. I wanted to watch his face while he claimed me. I wanted his sweat to drop onto me. I wanted to drop mine on him. I knew he was stronger than me. He had proved that the day we met, but on the bed when I wanted to take control. He didn't fight it. He just accepted me, and in a way no one ever before had done. He submitted to my will not out fear, but out love, and with carnal desires that were never there before I remember how I got on top of him. I'd never done anything like that before, I was untouched, a maiden, and even then, there I was on top of him. I couldn't really believe what I was doing, but it felt right, it felt empowering. It was so intoxicating so I held him and guided him inside me. It was marvelous how I could feel his groans of pleasure. I'll never forget such an experience. In the end, I was in charge and he liked it. He liked how I held his hands down. He liked pretending he was trying to break free and failing. Or the feeling when I let my bare breast touch his face. And almost immediately he went mad, bucking in and out like an animal in heat making me feel he was about to split me in two. All of those experiences engraved in my mind as the night I claimed him and the night he claimed me. Akira POV I don't know how, but I had sex with Azula. One moment I was kissing her, and the next thing I know we were both naked, lusting like a pair of animals. And I enjoyed every second of it. My empathic powers went haywire the moment we started to go beyond kisses, numbing my mind in a deep state of ecstasy, that I knew I couldn't get out. And now, that she was in my arms I felt guilty. Not that I had slept with her, but that I was hiding so much from her. So that was human coitus disgusting, Varti commented. I hope you already have a cub on the coming. I do not want to see that again. After a couple of nights where all we did was train, and lets us submerge into the pleasure of carnal desires, I was more conflicted than ever. I had taken Azala to bed, knowing full well she might reject me when she discovers who I truly am. So I found myself with two options. For one, I could tell her everything and rip that band-aid off. Or I could just go with the flow, and let the canon events play out and try to avoid confrontation. But even then, she would eventually know, and the longer I waited to tell her the truth, the more painful and lasting the damage would be to our relationship. So with that in mind, 
I had devised a plan to tell Azala who I was, and what my goal in the Fire Kingdom was. So with my canon knowledge at hand, I knew when was the perfect time to do so, the day Azala, Mike, Tylee, and Zuko went to the beach. By that point, Azala had already betrayed her father, meaning it was the perfect time to tell her about me, hoping for the best. You seem tense, and considering the amount of physical tension you have been releasing, that should not be possible, Vati commented with clear disgust on his voice. You do realize that even if she accepts you, she will die, right? It's my first relationship since I reincarnated you old prude. I inwardly shot back. I knew Azala was going to die one day. But in the meantime, I wanted to enjoy what we had, was that so bad? As I see it, you have more than two options. You can keep the old lie you can tell her the truth. Or you can create a new lie. One that suits your purposes, Vita said with a low chuckle. A new lie. The thing about lies is that they always come out one way or another. I sighed. Yes FF. Then you are a very bad liar. Vita grunted with irritation. I suppose I only have to wait and see. I chuckled. My question is, what will you do if she rejects you? Are you emotionally invested in her? Or is this a momentary attraction? Vatu inquired, and to be honest, I had no idea how to answer that. I barely knew Azala, so I knew what I felt for her wasn't love. But not all relationships are formed with love, so far mine with Azala was like something instinctual, animal-like, our bodies were perfectly made for each other. But I also couldn't deny, I enjoyed her company. But not to the point of saying I would die without her. That much was so far clear. I don't know, I'll probably be sad for a while if that happens. But, besides I don't know, as you said, she will die and I will go on. I knew about my age's predicament before I decided to continue our relationship. So, maybe a part of me has always been ready to part with her when the time comes. I sighed, that's the same reason I know our time to part is not supposed to be soon. Very well. I would hate to deal with a moody roommate for all of eternity, Vadu sighed. Well? I suppose I will leave you to enjoy this fragile relationship. I chuckled as I felt Azala and the girls approaching. With my seismic sense, I was able to notice they were dressed a little different. So with curiosity taking the best of me, I turned around to see Azala and the girls dressed as Kashi warriors. I will take a wild guess and say you fought the Kashi warriors. I asked, eyeing Azala. The Kashi uniform on her was quite the treat for me. So much for warriors, Azala chuckled. We defeated them faster than I had anticipated, and now we have the perfect cover to infiltrate. Oh, so that's where we were on the cannon. Intriguing. So what's my role? You could dress up, like one of us. Tai Li offered with an almost diabolical smile. No. Both me and Vada shouted, though the only voice the girls heard was mine. Tai Li, don't be ridiculous. What kind of girl has such broad shoulders? They will discover who we are, Azala scolded, though for some reason I could feel her emotions flaring with curiosity. She wanted to see me on that uniform, as I studied her emotions she turned her gaze at me. You will have to infiltrate the city, and hide I'll take care of the rest infiltrate Bar Sing Si. Easy, that city sucks when it comes to security. The only reason they are nearly untouchable is that they have a big ass wall protecting them. Sure, I'll be as stealthy as a cat, awesome. Mike commented, giving me the thumbs up. Haha <laughs> being nice and not sarcastic. Wait a minute, was that sarcasm? I don't know if that was a compliment or a very good insult. So I will take us both. Thank you and fuck you. I chuckled. Smart move, Mai smiled. Without waiting any longer. I followed the girls from behind using the shadows in the forest like my cover. While my team advanced towards Ba Sing Si. And I couldn't help but smile. Soon everything would fall into place. I was but a few steps to tell Azala the truth. After all, if my canon knowledge was accurate, I was currently at the end of book 2. Meaning Zuko would soon go back to the Fire Nation, and Azala would soon lie to Ozai about what happened to Aung. My plan was not only to wait for Azala to lie to Ozai, but for Zuko to redeem himself in the moronic path of justice. Why? Well, it was quite simple, Azala wasn't meant to rule the Fire Nation. God knows I like her more than I like any other human in this world, except for maybe Sakura and you. But regardless of my liking to her, she wasn't meant to rule, and as for me. Heck, no. I will not fuck my life by taking a forever role on the Fire Nation. I wanted to enjoy life after the war, and enjoying life has is about things like traveling, having fun, drinking and etc. Things that I wanted to do with Azala, and with us running a country that would never come to pass. So, I would use Zuko as my sacrificial pawn, he wanted that shit anyways, so he can have it. The Fire Nation Kashi warriors as I call them now, arrived before the Earth King after 8 hours of travel, with me trailing them close behind, observing them very closely, and like in the show, the idiot of a king the city had welcomed them, without even trying to confirm if it was them. After a short welcome, they were soon led to the castle, and from there I had to use my seismic sense to feel what they were doing. Frankly this power alongside side my water sense, were the best skills I had, though I hated that I couldn't hear people with them. 
though I could make out some of what they were talking about by the vibrations in the water and the earth, and the movements of their lips. But even then my information was never 100% accurate, maybe it would be in the future when I develop the other elemental senses. With a sigh, I punched the ground creating a hole, from which I would dig my way into the palace, where I would beat the crap out of a soldier, and steal his uniform that way I would be able to stay close to the action, ready to intervene if things got interesting. Well, I might as well make this interesting. I chuckled as I earth bent my way to the castle, starting to sing hi ho, it felt fitting, I was digging after all. As I continued to dig, I started to feel vibrations around me, that hinted that something was beneath me, and by the large amount of movement I was feeling, it was more than clear it was humans, lots of them. This is odd, I am very deep underground, and yet I feel people around. Stomping my feet on the ground to get a better image, trying to verify my early assessment, I was shocked to feel there was a city under Ba Sing Si, how in the fuck didn't I feel this earlier? Taking a second to recover, I scanned the area one more time, not only there was a city under Ba Sing Si, but it was a mining city, with around two or three hundred people working on it. If I had to give a number, huh, well this changes nothing. I sighed, I had wasted enough time as it is by contemplating the city under the city, the undercity. Not gonna lie, cool name, and I hope they call it that. Ignoring the city I had recently discovered, I continued to dig my way to the castle. Once I was directly under the castle, under an empty room, I opened a hole and jumped out of it. Sealing the hole immediately, a quick scan around showed Azala and the girls were a few hundred meters away from me. So now all I had to do, was find my victim, well, who is the poor. I stopped mid-sentence noticing that there was no need to beat any guards for a uniform, for I was in a room full of uniforms. Not gonna lie, this is very convenient. Now, all I have to do is find which of these uniforms is used by the non-benders. Maybe I would have to put a little more effort into this infiltration. Oh well, worst case scenario, I burn half a bar sing C. Shaking that very Azala-like thought out of my head, I started to scan the area, trying to find those within the army that weren't benders, to copy their looks which was harder than I had anticipated. Fuck it, I will take one of each, and look around. I sighed taking around 12 uniforms, before earth bending another hole. Five hours later it took me five motherfuckering hours to find out which uniform the non-benders of the Earth Kingdom used. And let's just say I was about to kill the Earth King myself. After I found out they used the same uniform, with the only difference being the non-bender carrier weapon, usually a spear. But, I suppose it's better to be safe than sorry. Anyway, during this waste of time, I put myself into, Azala had somehow managed to spread her influence to the point that Dai Li was slowly falling to her. I had to admit, politically speaking Azala was terrifying. In five hours she had established herself as the bigger political player of the city. It's an honor to meet a Kaishi warrior in person. I bowed as I approached Azala with my new clothes. Now that she was finally alone with the girls, Azala smirks, and with a wave of amusement that emanated from her like the flames of a torch, she said, What is your name, soldier? Bo Red, I answered keeping a stoic face. Bored. Mai started to giggle on the back. That was funny. So you infiltrated too? Tai Lee giggled as she hugged me. As expected of my boyfriend, Azala said, as she pushed Tai Lee off me. Not only he infiltrated, but he probably gathered intelligence about the place regarding their weak spots, manpower, and more, am I right? Absolutely. I winked, but deep down I knew this was a lie. I spent five hours gathering a single piece of useless intel, which was what uniforms use each soldier. But in times like this, my canon knowledge comes to the rescue. The Earth King advisor is planning to betray the king, meaning you have a chance to manipulate him. The advisor that is, aside, he is the one that controls the Dai Li. That much I gathered, Azala nodded thoughtfully. I have talked with some of the members of the Dai Li, and while they didn't outright say so, it was clear who was calling the shots. Oh, and your uncle is here. I commented as I remembered Iroh had a tea shop here, or something like that. So that fatso is here. Well, I'll deal with him later, Azala chuckled. In the meantime, keep your eyes open for more information, will do. I nodded. Oh, I almost forgot be careful with the advisor he is famous for brainwashing people, so he might have a few surprises under his sleeve, nothing that warrants a worry. But enough to be careful, I added, brainwashing. Azala chuckled. Well, perhaps this will be interesting after all. It was the evening of my third day in Ba Sing Si after the infiltration. And while Azala focused on putting the city under her control, I kept an eye on Team Avatar and Iroh every time I could. From what I could gather, Team Avatar was collaborating with the Earth King. After the betrayal of his trusted advisor, who Azala was manipulating to start a coup, something Team Avatar was no aware of. But the ever-innocent king trusted Azala, believing her to be part of the Kashi warriors, meaning they had to tread carefully because one wrong move, and the Earth King would die, after all, my. 
Tai Li and Azala were always beside him, keeping the edge over all the other's parties, including the advisor. As for the advisor, he no longer had control of the Earth Kingdom's special army. Azala had made sure of that, ensuring her supreme control over them with fear. Something that did wonder to the Dai Li. You alright there, old friend? A deep and familiar voice said, snapping me out of my long reverie. With a sigh, I look up to see Iro, the Jasmine Dragon's owner, standing across the counter from me carefully picking the right herbs to make his tea. You looked like you had a lot of baggage. Sometimes talking can be the key to self-healing. I studied the old general for a second before sighing. I couldn't really tell why was I here in his tea shop. What did I want to accomplish? If I wanted information I could have just kept tabs on him with my seismic sense from afar. Perhaps I came here to find some answers about my situation with Azala. The old general smiled and pulled a teapot from the heat, pouring me a drink into my cup. I know that face. I have seen it many times. He chuckled, you are hiding something from someone, and the weight of that secret is bringing you down. I chuckled, no wonder he was considered the most spiritually enlightened character in this world. He managed to read me like an open book with a simple glance. With a smile I raised my cup to him, trying to put words to my troubled thoughts. How could I explain what I was going through without revealing my identity? Well, I suppose I could talk, I sighed, with a faint smile on my face. I am currently dating a girl. But she doesn't know what I do for a living, and I suppose I am afraid of her reaction, once she discovers the real me. I said, trying to be as vague as possible. The troubles of the heart are never easy to heal or deal with, for there is no right or wrong answers, just paths that lead us to places of no return. Iro hummed his answer, but if you want my advice, I would recommend you to be honest with her. A relationship formed with lies is as weak as a wet paper. I want to, I answered, but telling her right now could potentially damage something I've been working on. I need to be sure she will side by me when push comes to shove. I chuckled, let's just say her dad is a very bad man, one that I have been tasked to end. Oh, I see, Iroh chuckled, love and duty, the hardships of a young man, and an old one. He smiled, refilling my tea as he added, but... Now I know you already have your answer, love is tricky and sometimes can be misinterpreted, but if you truly loved her your duty would not stop you, nor the consequences of abandoning it, if only he knew, if I side with her family nothing will stop them. I know, Ira smiled, but siding with Ozai is not your destiny is it? He whispered the last part, startling the fuck out of me, don't panic young Akira. I am not your enemy, you are very perceptive for an old man, Iro. I complimented, it was weird to see someone getting the upper hand on me. I know you don't want to hurt Azula more than a family has already hurt her. I know that Iro smiled, patting my shoulder. But that's not love, it's pity sometimes you have to hurt the ones you love to wake them up. Only then their true path will reveal itself, was he true? Did I pity Azula? I certainly enjoyed our kisses and having sex. But did we have any connection outside that? Pity. That's a strong word, he is right kid, as much as I hate that fat idiot he is right, you don't love her. I wish you did with someone as unstable as her by her side, the world would be in utter chaos. But alas, you are not ready to throw everything away from her if you loved her, you would do it without hesitating. That how irrational humans are a sight to behold, Vata growled, adding salt to what Iro said, before going back to sleep. Was that Vatu? Iro chuckled. You heard him. I asked in shock. No, dear no, Iro shook his head, but I felt your energy fluctuate differently for a second. It was both beautiful and very scary. He sighed. Oh, I see. I chuckled. Let's say I manage to do what I want to do. What do you think it will happen? I asked. You won't succeed in gaining her heart. She might love you now. But the moment your truth comes out, she will never forgive you, Iro sighed. The more love she gives, the bigger the hate she will unleash on you. But perhaps I am wrong. Perhaps you will change her before you reveal your true self. If not, don't beat yourself up for it. She is the result of our family's mistakes, including mine's. I had always known that was a possibility, Azula hating me, so much for being a fucking empath. I can read everyone's emotions, and yet I can't seem to properly understand mine. What a joke, I chuckled bitterly. It's easier to help and understand others, Iroh smiled sadly. Our demons are always the ones that elude us, for it easier to see the shadows in others than in ourselves. Thanks. I smiled as I added in a whisper, this city will fall within this week leave, if you want to fight another day, or stay and be captured, consider that a tip for the wonderful tea. You are always welcome to come and drink tea with me. Iroh smiled and waved at me as I left his store, and even now, I could never get a proper red on that guy. The days passed, with me doing nothing but training my hand-to-hand -hand combat with Tai Li every now and then, while deep underground, Azala alongside Feng, planned the coup, with Feng having no idea that Dai Li was under Azala's control. As for Azala she was moving more than one piece at the time, 
So while she controlled the coup to her liking, she had also invited Iro and Zuko to Earth King's palace, under the guise of an esteemed invitation to serve the King Tea. And, I had to be honest, I had hoped Iro was long gone after what I told him. I had after all, warned him about his niece. But even then he didn't flee, even after knowing Azala was controlling everything around him, he decided to come to the castle, and as soon as he entered he was immediately surrounded by the Dai Li, with a smirking Azala walking towards them, clapping her hands very slowly. I warned him why in the hell he stayed. I muttered as I watched the Dai Li circling the duo-like predators. Zuko in response took a defensive stance. It will take more than a few earthbenders to defeat us, he said trying to sound confident, but his emotions betrayed his act. Prince please. I chuckled. Have you ever win against her? And who are you? Zuko said glaring at me with anger. He's my boyfriend Zuzu, Azala answered before I had the chance. As if, Zuko chuckled bitterly. I doubt there is someone crazy enough to date you. Uff, that's the closest thing to damage you'll deliver on this fight. I chuckled. Zuko growled and took a step forward, ready to fight me. In the meantime, Iro took a different approach, winking at me. He calmly asked the audience if we ever heard why he earned the nickname, Dragon of the West. And while I knew the answer, I decided to see how things would play out. At this Azala rolled her eyes in annoyance waving him off as she said, I have no time for lengthy and useless anecdotes. Iroh chuckled at her predictable response, before taking a deep breath followed by a torrent of fire coming out of his mouth as he exhaled. With this, he managed to break the Daili circling formation surrounding him and Zuko. After that he ran urging Zuko to follow him, but Princess Honor decided to do otherwise, challenging Azala to a duel. Iroh sighed looking at his nephew with disappointment, before he started to run once again. Not so fast, General. I said with a smile jumping to the action, running past the Dai Li and Zuko. This was my chance to fight Iro and see what the guy is made of. I followed Iro as he ran out of the castle, waiting for him to get as far away as possible, so that we could fight without interruptions. I didn't want to capture him, just see how good was Iro as he was now. He was out of his prime that much was obvious. But even now I could feel he held a formidable amount of strength. And I wanted to see how much would that power push me. You are not going to stop following me. Iro chuckled as I ran behind him. No, I shook my head off. This was, after all, a golden ticket to see the old general in action. Why would I throw that up? My chase eventually led us to a very secluded place. Where the closest human was a few miles away. Even now this man was able to read me. He didn't run here to escape. He could have gone any other place. But he knew I wanted to fight him. We are alone Iro side. Now I would like to ask that if possible I would rather avoid violence. But I know that request will fall into death is today. Am I right? I don't plan on capturing you. I clarified. So consider this a training match. Ah, uh, I see. Iro chuckled very well. If it is for educational purposes. I can't say no. It will be my honor to fight you. I smiled, the strongest firebender in the world. One that could have stopped all this madness if he wanted. You flatter me, Iroh smiled with a sad look on his face, Avatar Akira. Can I ask you a question? I wanted to know why someone like him, had allowed the world to fall into despair at the hands of his kingdom. The one he was meant to originally rule. Of course, go ahead, Iroh nodded. Why? Aside, why did you let your brother take your place? Why did you allow him to bring the world you preach to love so much to this state and why? Why did you let him hurt Azala and Zuko? I had to know what was the reason behind him doing nothing. A complicated question, Iroh said, his emotions going from happy to sad in the blink of an eye. At first, it was the pain of losing my son without him. I had no reason to fight anymore. And by the moment I was able to think without the loss of my son affecting me. I already knew that ruling the country wasn't my destiny, and Azala and Zuko. I asked. For that I have no excuse, Iroh admitted with tears in his eyes. I was a coward for letting my little brother hurt them so bad. Clearing the tears away he looked at me. You know it haunts me every night I can hear the screams of Zuko. As the fire of his own father burns his face, scurrying him beyond repair every night I have that awful dream. As the reminder I could have stopped Ozai. I had more than enough time to stop the Anaikai and defend my nephew. But instead I looked away. And that is something I will never forgive myself. I see, I sighed. Not knowing what to think of his answer. But at least one thing was clear. He was sincere about his regret. Well let's get started. I added getting into position. Knowing this fight was nothing more than a visual aid for my firebending training. I decided to fight him mostly using my sword. With a little bit of fire on the side. So with that in mind. I started the duel or training match. Extending my left arm at him in a quick and fast motion. As my hand opened towards my opponent. Followed by several bursts of blue fireballs which Iroh stopped head on with little to no effort. What Iroh didn't seem to notice was that I hadn't intended to attack him, at least not fully, because more than a few fireballs crashed into the earth, creating a wall of dust. With a smile, 
I rushed at him taking advantage of the rising dust. I positioned myself behind him, and with the blunt end of my sword, I swung at him with all my strength. But to my surprise Iroh avoided the attack by jumping over it. You are strong very strong, but that has made you weak young Akira, Iroh commented. And all I could think about was what the fuck was he trying to say was this what Zuko always felt. How being strong is making me weak. I'll be honest with you you are making less sense than a mute's joke without arms, I replied. A mute without that is just cruel. Iroh shook his head. What I meant to say is your overwhelming power has made you predictable, predictable. Me was that true? It couldn't be, I was always innovating, looking for ways to improve my skills, being predictable would infer I had a pattern when fighting one that was painfully easy to counter, should someone with enough experience fight me. Let's see how predictable is this. I shot back swinging my sword downwards, creating a powerful fire slash that Iroh once again managed to dodge. I have no doubts you can beat me, Iroh chuckled, but the fact is you are easy to read young Akira. Your own power has blinded you the old you was terrifying Paku told me so innovating beyond the norm at a terrifying rate. But now, you lack the creativity you once had, so you are saying I ran out of ideas. I chuckled. When was the last time you invented something new? Iroh asks. Um, I can't believe it. The old man was right. When was the time I had a new innovative idea? Since when did I care about forms? I became a formidable waterbender by innovating the star to fit my needs. And here I am emulating Azula and others. Even now, I can see your current style is heavily influenced by Azula. If you want my advice, I would recommend you to go back to your roots. Your style was having no style or formless form, was what made you a force to be reckoned with dot copying. And imitating others is helpful. But if you let the information you learn to define who you are at will with time weaken you, Iroh added with a smile. Very well. I chuckled, let's see if I still can rock a formless style. Dropping my sword to the ground, I decided to think out of the box. What could I do? That wasn't an imitation of what I had learned. What could I do that was an improvement over something old? And then it hit me, an idea worth trying. With a smile that startled Iroh I pointed at him with my index finger as I gathered a large amount of flames on it. Before launching a narrow beam of fire he barely managed to dodge. The beam pierced a metal bar behind Iroh, showing it was strong enough to pierce or melt its way metal. Not that I don't appreciate someone actually taking my advice. But go easy on this old man, Iroh sighed. That was a very deadly technique I remember you using something similar against Zhao, but with water instead of fire, water bullets. I nodded, little but powerful. Unfortunately I can't do that with fire, fire needs someone pouring power into the flames. Unlike water so, instead of a bullet you get a beam. I shrugged. I see, Iroh smiled. But maybe if I create big balls of fire, I can make something similar to my water bullets with an explosive touch, I said in deep thought. Have you learned this move? Iroh said with a smirk creating a lightning before shooting said lightning at me, and by how slow his motions were it was clear he wanted me to dodge, so that he could introduce me to his lightning redirection technique, unfortunately for him, it was time to show him I wasn't as predictable as he had originally assumed, with a smile. I slapped the lighting with the back of my hand to an abandoned house behind me, showing him I was able to redirect lightning without using his method, all thanks to my enormous skill controlling my Kai. I have, I smiled. Impressive, Iroh chuckled. That is way more effective and practical than my technique to redirect them truly impressive. But it is clear a fire bender can't do that, nor a water bender. Meaning you use Kai or energy bending to slap the lighting away. I did, I nodded. Well, I give up, Iroh chuckled throwing his hands into the air as a sign of him accepting his defeat willingly. Very well. I sighed, I wanted to keep fighting you you seem to inspire my creativity. But I respect your choice, until next time, young Akira. Iroh smiled, walking away. Well... It wasn't like I had expected this to go, but I had learned a lot like the fact I had forgotten how I used to learn stuff. I never followed any rules. I made them, and Iroh had made me see that. I will bring cookies to our tea next time, I shouted. That would be lovely, Iroh shouted back. I chuckled at his response as I walked back to the castle with a few things clear in my mind. For one I was going to follow Iroh's advice, and two I was absolutely, most definitely sure Iroh was stronger than Ozai, even now that he was fat and out of his prime, he could crush his brother. Not sure if the fight would be one-sided, but Iroh would win regardless. A fight between them would be legendary, too bad I will never see it though. A few hours after my training match with Iroh, I was left with questions that no matter how hard I tried I had no answers, and frankly, I didn't care for them right now. Was I evading the clear problems of my life? Maybe. But those problems are for future me to solve, right now. Right now I want to fight Ung again, this time without having to enter the Avatar state to defeat him. And considering he was rushing through the mines under the city to help Katara, I knew what had to do intercept the little monk, and have a little chat with him, of course. 
I wasn't an evil bastard, I was going to help Katara survive as long as possible. By providing her with more than enough water to fight Azula and Zuko one on one. Here we go. I chuckled, breaking the earth underneath me. Creating a tunnel to intercept Arn on his way to defend Katara. What in the? Arn said, almost shouting in surprise. Hello little monk. I smiled under my mask, waving at him. If you want to pass you need to defeat me. Or at least entertain me. I don't have time for this. Arn said in a stern tone, trying to run past me. Naive little monk. With a sight, I opened up the start of the fight with a powerful palm slam to Arn's chest. A gurgle escaped the stunned monk's mouth as the air of his lungs left him. Taking advantage of his stunned state, I moved my hand to his throat and lifted Arn off the ground. And with something that could be described as a growl I said, You will fight me. Arn, there is no other path you either give your all and show your progress. Or you will regret putting Katara on this situation. Arn stared at me. As he scrambled for balance midair before his body was slammed into the tunnel wall behind him. The concussive force of the impact rattled the tunnel. In response, Arn shouted a battle cry and tried to push me off him with air bending attack. At this I let out a soft chuckle, almost as if whispering it. And with a smile, after having acquired the response I desired I let him go. Dropping the monk mid air, letting his body be prey to the universal law of gravity. And as his body slowly fell prey this law, I turned around and kicked him away with all the strength I could muster before he managed to touch the ground, all while dodging his pitifully predictable air-bending attack. But that wasn't all. Taking a deep breath I rushed at him propelling my movement with fire, catching him midway to where my kick would have dropped him, and delivered second brutal attack, a punch to his head, putting Arn in a state of shock as the earth beneath him shattered ever so slightly. The strength behind my punch was strong enough to create a very small crater under Arn, where his body now rested. Oops, I think I overdid it. I said to myself, as a smile played at the edge of my mouth. Surprisingly enough, Arn stood up, bleeding from his head with an enraged expression on his face, very different to what I would expect from the so-called pacifist monk, but it was undeniable. This was what I wanted. I don't like violence. I never will it brings nothing but destruction. But, you are blocking my path to defend Katara, and if I have to defeat you to do so I will. Are you saying you are willing to kill me to save her? I whistled at that, if so, I have to admit you have earned my respect. But let me make one thing clear for you you will never, ever defeat me. But I can't say I don't appreciate the effort as banal as it is it makes me feel special. I swore to the monks, I would never take a life but unsaid, hesitation surging through his emotions like a river in the desert. But if I have to put you down to save Katara, I will. I clapped at that as I laughed bravo, bravo, the resolve the will. The intelligence to know when life must be destroyed is important, though I feel even if you could defeat me you wouldn't go through with it. But thinking about it is the first step, so bravo, Arn shouted once again, as he tried to capture me with earth bending, left, right, left, left, up, up, down. I hummed, dodging his attacks, and Iroh says I am predictable. Fighting you is like one of those dancing games on easy mode, spice things up, Arn, Katara needs you. A part of me wondered, why was I being so unnecessarily cruel with him? Did I really want to fight his avatar state so much? Or was Vardu dictating my emotions? No. So many questions. Who are you? Arn questioned shocked at the fact I was toying with him. Who knows? I shrugged, and before Arn had the chance to ask again something snapped inside of him. Knocking him out of the game is something more powerful took over. This ends now. Arn shouted his voice changing from his original to a mix of his and a female voice, one that I faintly recognized as Rava. Well hello, Rava. I chuckled. It's so unlike you to hijack the body of your host boy. Do I feel special tonight? Arn is ill-suited for this. Rava snarled, creating a ball which was made up of multiple elements. But I will put an end to this. Begin. For the light never loses. I blinked in realization as the fact. That I might have not thought about this plan too much was sinking into my brains. With a sigh I woke up Vatu. As I inspected the width of the tunnel. And considering the width of the incoming attack. It was more than clear I had no chance of dodging this. Oh well time to die or defuse this shit. And I consider myself a defuser. Using my energy bending. I focused all my power on my palms with Vatu helping me to control the energy. And with a quick move of my I broke the attack into nothing, doing something similar to what I had done with Iroh and his lightning. You know if you want my personal opinion, the light never loses. Is a pretty sad choice of last words. But to be fair, at this I let Vata take control for a bit. He, after all, had to say hi to his beloved sister. It's far from the worst decision you've made today. Dear sister, Vatu, Vata POV rather growled as Akira allowed me to control him. With an angry cry escaping her mouth she lunged forward, quickly sprinting towards me bending all the elements at her disposal. Well at least those her body current body could, creating a big elemental lance, in a pitiful attempt to pierce through me. 
but reflex kicked in, and I ducked forward, slamming her head against the ground. Oof, that had to hurt, Akira commented with a chuckle. Your body is better suited for battle, Rava on the other hand, has little to work with. I inwardly chuckled. Is that all you have, sister? Aya asked with a wicked smile painted on my face. I was going to enjoy this, thoroughly. I will end this Vatu, Rava hissed. All you do, all you bring is pain and suffering. I will not let the world succumb into pure chaos. Then by all means, try to stop me. I cackled as I propelled myself to her at a blinding speed, with a blue fire blade on my right hand. Rava startled at my speed, noticed an upcoming deadly attack at the last second, and only got away with a small, bleeding slice on her torso. At this Akira barked at me, reminding me not to kill the retarded monk, not yet anyway. Fine I'll play nice, as nice as I could. Rava touched her torso, her hand coating in red, and with a glare sprinted at me again, her body glowing white. At this I smiled. She knew deep down, she was not going to win a bending match against this body. And when it came to hand-to-hand -to -hand combat, Akira heavily outclassed on. Which means I had the upper hand in both parts. So she only had one choice, energy bending. The reason she had won so many times before in the era before human, it pained me to admit it. But her energy bending was flawless. Normally, I would try to avoid her energy bending attacks. They are dangerous and very lethal. If you don't manage to defuse them. But this time I was confident not only in my own prowess, but in the prowess of the partner I had chosen, so with open arms and a smile, our energies clashed together, creating a rumbling echo through the underground tunnel. The weight of my energy was dragging her down, bringing the ever-confident Rava to her knees. But she soon recovered and pushed back hard. We stayed like that for a few seconds, before she realized I was toying with her. You have grown weak Rava, I said as I pushed my energy beyond what she could currently counter, sending her a few miles back in the tunnel. I say it will take her an hour or so to come back. I whistled as I sat down on a rock nearby to wait for her. I give her a few minutes, Akira chuckled. Rava, however, broke our expectations and recovered in less than 10 seconds, and took this opportunity to impale my stomach with earth-bending attack from afar. So this is physical pain, remarkable. I commented as I touched the wound with curiosity before healing in the blink of an eye. How durable are you? How durable am I? Questions for later. Akira said, clearly surprised I had regenerated a few organs Rava crushed with her attack in the span of a second. What have you done? Rava said as she approached me, her body broken and unable to fight anymore. Is that human even human anymore? She was angry. How very predictable of her. Have you corrupted this human that much? Have you no shame? Oh dear sister. I didn't corrupt him. Though I am not going to lie. I have been trying very hard to do so. I laughed as I heard Akira chuckled in my head. But all you see right now is the result of his own training. All I'm doing is using his skills. And, of course, is only natural I can use his powers better. I smiled pointing to where she had impaled me earlier. He is a very capable healer, using water healing and blood bending to heal his own wounds. I chuckled, those two make it easy to regenerate human organs even limbs. And all you need to do so is a lot of power. And well, knowledge about those two arts and Voila super regeneration. This, of course, is impossible for normal human beings. But he isn't normal he never was, he was remade into a body with massive amounts of spiritual energy. He then was blessed by the primordial, and to add a cherry on the top, he then fused with me, adding even more power to that very dangerous mix. The primordials rather muttered. So when you ask if Akira is even human, then I suppose the answer is no at this point. He is closer to being something that has transcended that puny category, but not entirely by my own hands. I chuckled as I slowly approached her, so don't be sad you can't win sister. It's only natural you are fighting not only a spirit born for war, chaos and destruction but the best human humanity has to offer. When you compare that to the anorexic boy you are controlling well, you come up short. I will not lose Vatu, no matter how superior you claim your host to be. Rava snarled. I have to admit it. Sister, you are indeed strong. At this point, our faces were a few inches from each other. That's if you're not counting me. You know you can't defeat me, don't you Rava? You might have won this time, but when the Avatar reincarnates I will come back for you. Rava said looking down, admitting her defeat, right now ending her life was within my grasp and power. Even if Akira was against the idea, even if he wanted to stop me, I would have more than enough time to kill her before he takes control. But I won't do it, I promise him I would not. A stupid sentiment, but one I shall honor today. Well, this was fun, but you better hurry up and help the monk's girl. I patted her head. I had my fun, be sure to make things more interesting next time. You are letting on live. Rava asked in shock. I promised my host I would avoid killing you before some events played out. I shrugged, and while the past has proven otherwise, I am a spirit of my word to those I respect. You don't respect anyone. Rava scoffed. That was true. I nodded with a smile. Now go or stay to be honest. I don't really care for the girl. 
or you respect me, after the duel between Vato and Rava. Things followed the canon pretty much to the letter comma, with Azula manipulating Zuko into betraying Katara and Iroh, and with Iroh being captured. Things were back to the normal track of events. The Avatar had escaped, and Zuko was on his way to realize he was wrong, and that there were other ways to restore his honor, besides sucking on Ozai. In our way back to the Fire Nation I had more than enough time to realize something. Zuko didn't like me at all. His emotions would flare every time I tried to engage in conversation with him. And while it bothered me, it was pointless to give the little prince any time of my day. He questioned deep down how could I associate with Azula, and without answer immediately had me in the same corner he had her as a psychopath. We should go to the beach, Tai Lee offered with a smile. We finally ended our mission, we deserve to be pampered, the beach episodes. So the time to tell Azula the truth was coming. That would be nice, I said. Very well, Azula nodded. But first Zuko and I need to do some paperwork about this mission, she added with her signature evil smile. While you two do that I will have some quality time with my family, everything just to avoid Ozai. If I saw him now, I would end up killing him without hesitation, his presence was painful, and I wanted to end him. It's not like you have anything to do in the castle, Zuko growled. I do. I chuckled. Do I need to remind you? There are only two royals in here right now, Zuko challenged. I eyed the angry prince with amusement. It's that supposed to scare me. I chuckled. No, Zuko shook his head, lighting his hands on fire. But this should. I looked at him in disbelief and laughed, you are adorable. As soon as I said that Zuko charged at me, trying to prove I don't really know. Maybe he was trying to hurt Azula. Or kill himself. Zuko stop. Mai shouted, getting in the middle of the clearly retarded prince. You can't win, Zuko was shocked and with a hurt expression growled. Are you saying he's stronger than me Azula at this? Started to laugh uncontrollably. Oh Zuzu, he's stronger than me. Did you really think I would date anything but the strongest man? She pointed at me, with pride. But be my guest go ahead and die. Let him, I said with faint smile on my face. If he wants to end his life who are we to deny him of that noble wish? Guys our auras are getting very dark. Maybe it's time to change the subject. Tai Lee offered with a weak smile, trying to defuse the situation. Overconfidence is unbecoming of a warrior, Zuko stated. No, overconfidence is the privilege of the mighty. At this point I had started to walk towards him. And if you don't back down, you will soon see how mighty I am, prince of nothing, Zuko please. Mai muttered, fear being the most prominent emotion she was feeling right now. Let this go, you should count yourself lucky, Zuko said, walking away, next time, it won't be like this. Threaten me with a good time. I chuckled, alright prince, you won my respect you didn't back down out of fear, so as a gift, when the time comes for us to fight, I will not kill you but I will make you face symmetrical. Now that would be a sight to see, Azula giggled. You are diabolically cute. I rolled my eyes at her. Oh god it's over, Tai Lee muttered looking like a frightened cat. No one Daiji, Zuko POV. I hated Akira the way he walked. The way he talked everything was like he thought himself to be above others, above the me, above my family, above the royals. He saw himself as untouchable just because he was dating Azula, and soon he would learn by my hands that was not the case, as if I was going to believe he was stronger than Azula. If that was the case, he would not be here, breathing. I know my sister, she's incapable of love and of letting others surpass her. If Akira was stronger than her, he would be in a morgue by now. Zuko Mai said as she entered my room, on the ever-moving ship taking us to the Fire Nation. Please let Akira be, I beg you. She was afraid, but why if that bastard did something to her, I will kill him. Did he do something to you? No, he's a good friend, no more like a good acquaintance. But I have seen him fight, he doesn't fight to win, he fights to kill. Mai said shaking at the end. I saw him kill one of the generals in the Fire Nation with a single fire punch. He blasted his upper half with a single attack. He's a criminal. I asked. It was an Anaikai, Mike clarified. Maybe he's strong, but I won't let him walk over me. Or you I stated, maybe he did know how to fight. But killing a general was not a feat to boast about. Azala could easily defeat all of them. And so could I that feat merely told me he was a competent fighter. Nothing more. If this is what you want then go. Mai shouted. I won't stand and watch you die. Just because you have to prove you are the most macho or something. With that she slapped me and stormed off my room. I will show you my. I muttered. I will everyone how strong I have become. Was that really worth it Zuzu? Azala chuckled as she entered my room. Not that I don't enjoy the show. But really. Why must you make it so easy to crush your ambitions start small brother? Fight a blind kid. And you might have a fighting chance. I know your game Azala. I growled, you are probably tired of him, and you want me to do your dirty job, so be glad I'm happy to do it. Impressive, Azala clapped her hands in amusement, you know, I never expect anything from you, and yet you managed to disappoint me. Oh well, she shrugged, do whatever you want Suzu, 
I will enjoy the imminent result of you idiotic thoughts regardless. Aunt POV I remembered that fight clearly on the Earth Kingdom tunnels very clear, even after I was knocked into the back seat where no sound reached me. I could still see what was going on. That man the firebender that stood in my way to save Katana was no firebender. For he had the power to control the elements like me. Earth, water, fire and possibly air. There was another avatar. One that stood against the peace I was trying to achieve. One that followed Ozai and his reign of terror. One that was stronger, more experienced, and had no qualms about killing. I can't do this. I muttered in tears as Katara entered the tent with Toph and Sokka. One thing was fighting Ozai but another avatar. I don't think he's that evil, Toph commented, and immediately Katara was glaring at her. What? If the guy was evil as you say he is he would have killed you, instead of letting you go all I'm saying. Is that the guy sounds like someone looking for a challenge? How dare you? Katara hissed, he beat onto a pulp, and then pushed him to fight Azula and Zuko, and subsequently lost because he had no strength to fight back, and not only that he works for the Fire Nation, he is bad. Katara Toph has point, Sokka pointed out. The guy is obviously stronger than Arn. And yet he didn't kill him. He almost did Katara growled. But he didn't Sokka sighed. Look in times of war, mercy brings nothing but destruction. Why let on the one person that could eventually possibly match him live? Maybe he wants a tougher challenge. I offered, thinking perhaps Toph was right. Perhaps, Sokka nodded with a faint smile. But, I think he simply didn't want to end you for personal reasons. The way I see it the guy is not totally loyal to the Fire Nation. If he was well, no offense on, but you wouldn't be here right now. None taken, Sokka was right. If the guy was as evil as I wanted him to be, I would have more than a few bruises around my body. That doesn't change the fact he nearly killed Arn, Katara said, clenching her fists. No, but maybe we could gain a new ally, Sokka added, with an overly serious tone for him. Look, the guy is not loyal to the Fire Nation, and if we play our cards right, we might have a secret weapon to end this war once and for all, an ally. Katara almost shouted, after what he did never. Katara this is war, and you don't win wars with the power of the heart soccer side. Look, I'm not saying we have to befriend the guy. He obviously has no moral compass. But we also don't have to make an enemy out of him. We simply have to exchange something for something. His help for a help, Sokka is right, Toph stated, sometimes political alliances are necessary to win wars. This is not the time to get sentimental, and what can we offer him? I asked, wondering what we could do to have him on our side. Are you considering this after what he did to you? Katara asked, in shock. Katara, I wish I could win this war alone, but you weren't there the gap between us could take decades for me to reach. I can't fight him, and Ozai, I was weaker than him. That much was clear, Ozai, Zuko, Azula, and him, all of this is too much for me, and Katara sighed. If this is what you want I will support you, but I won't like it, alright Sokka smiled. Well, um to answer your question, we have something he hasn't by the information you shared with us, he only showed three out of four elements. You mean yeah, you will teach him airbending in exchange for his help against Ozai? Sokka nodded. Wouldn't that make him more dangerous? Toph inquired, I'm all for allying with the guy I was the one to say he wasn't all bad. But, I'm not so sure about giving the guy that swept the floor with twinkle toes on his super twinkle state. I'm with Toph on that one, Katara nodded. Me too, I nodded. Arn, um, everyone you guys are not seeing the bigger picture, Sokka chuckled. Arn, um, tell me what did the monks teach you about their bending? Well, the monks taught us it was one of the many ways to become one with the universe. That by letting go of our anger, and other earthly desires. We would be enlightened escaping what made other humans prone to the seductive ways of evil. I answered and then it clicked. I see that you get it now. Sokka smiled. I want you to change him. While you teach him like the monks did for generations. That's that sounds like a terrible idea. Toph sighed. But oh well, don't come to crying if the guy becomes even more godlike. I don't know. But perhaps it is worth giving it a shot Katara said, somewhat uncertain. Maybe Sokka is right maybe I'm not meant to defeat him. But to guide him into a better path. I said with resolution, at least it's worth a shot, if this backfires I will kick your asses in the spirit realm, Toph smiled. So, are we in? Sokka asked us with a smile, and we all nodded, though some of us more eager than others. Iro POV I was so close so close to reaching him I saw it in his eyes, he wanted to help the girl he wanted to fight for the good of others. But it wasn't enough, he was still blind to the truth path ahead of him. Iro, that voice, Akira. What a pleasant surprise, I said, forcing a smile. How could I smile? My nephew the one person besides my beautiful Lu Ten that I loved like a son, had failed to see the good inside of him, and was now in a path where only suffering awaited him, and to top that I didn't have any tea. 
put that frown upside down I brought tea and cookies. Akira chuckled, and don't worry I give your dear nephew a month at much before he goes out to help the avatar the other one. I blinked in mild shock, you think? I asked with hope. He is killing himself on the inside now, and by how he feels he's about to break at any point now don't worry. Akira chuckled. I smiled at him, tears flowing from my eyes like a river with a broken dam. You made this old man very happy I was afraid he has lost his path. But perhaps this is what he needed. It is, Akira nodded, as he served me some delicious tea and cookies. While I wondered where were the guards, and don't worry about the guards I took care of them oh, so he did, what an interesting young man. Light shone from the fireplace inside the house I had rented near beach for myself. After all, soon after a mission and arrival to the Fire Nation, Azela had taken us here to enjoy. After she had finished the required paperwork after our trip, this was her way of treating us, and mentally abused Zuko. And while most of the group was in fact enjoying this little getaway, I was not, I couldn't, not at all. Not with knowing the fact that soon my relationship with Azula would change permanently for the better or for the worse. What can I do I muttered, sitting on the bed, taking in the air in the room that smelled of ash and dust showing whoever owned the apartment hand cleaned. But it was okay, it was giving me the privacy I wanted to try and formulate my thoughts. Maybe, I just had to do it the more I delayed this, the more likely things were going to work against me. I had waited long enough, besides she is coming to me right now, right now it was the best time to do so. Knock knock I gripped the end of my bed, before reluctantly standing up and opening the door, Azela, I welcomed as she smiled walking inside the house. I still don't understand why would you rent a place like this is so, plebeian, Azela chuckled. Azela we need to talk, as soon as those words left my mouth, fear, anger and anxiety fled within her, and I panicked. I wasn't ready to talk about this not yet. I was wondering what activities did you have planned for tomorrow. This was for the best. I told myself over and over again inside my head as if those words were a chant meant to make me feel better. I just needed more time to find a way to avoid destroying damaging her. More than she already is. I wasn't that bad of a person I was just looking out for her excuses. But they were the ones that kept me from ending it all. Well, I wanted to try volleyball. Azala said, relief being the most prominent emotion within her right now. That would be lovely. I smiled as I motioned her to follow me out of the house. Let's go and see the others very well, Azala nodded, taking my hand. As we walked through the hot sand of the beach, I could feel my doubts shaking and my moral compasses going haywire within me. But I silenced them with pure sheer will. The walk itself was uneventful, nothing worthy of attention, not that I had much of it right now anyway, Azulea, Akira over here. Tylee waved at us as we approached, snapping me out of my long reverie. As always the duo of full lovers glared at me, with my being more of a pleading glare, and with Zuko being more of a challenging glare. Let's just fight Prince. I am getting tired of your constant glares, so let's just do it. I sighed, I won't kill you, so don't worry. Guys we are on vacation, can we try to get a quote Ty Lee oddly enough was once again trying to be the voice of reason. But Zuko cut her off. I accept this challenge, Zuko nodded, feeling overly confident in his skills. I could tell, it was quite obnoxious feeling his emotions dot, very well. I yawned and for some reason this made him angry. The rules are simple first one to make to surrender, die or knock out losers. I thought you didn't want to resort to killing during this fight. Zuko inquired, and I shook my head in answer, or perhaps you think you stand a chance against me. If you go with the intent to kill, I yawned as I chuckled in amusement. No, that rule about the killing or not killing is for you, so that you make this more interesting. It will still be sad and pathetic, but at least you will feel a small sense of accomplishment from going all out. Like a moth flying to the sun, it feels happy a few seconds before dying. Our duel started with Zuko shooting a wild barrage of fireballs at me, and instead of dodging the upcoming attack, I rolled my eyes at him, and with a board and a single hand, I blew the candles he was throwing at me. You will need to go a bit higher Prince Zuko I smiled, making a gesture to tell him it was time for him to go all out. Zuko at this crowd and sprinted at me ready to kill me. I could see it in his eyes, dashing towards me trying to bring the fight to my location, but all he did once he managed to close the distance gap between us was throw fire into the nothingness. For none of his attacks were even close to hit me. Alright, this is getting boring. I chuckled as I continued to dodge each of his futile attempts to attack me, little by little enraging him. Kick to your left side. I announced, kicking him with my right leg to the ground. I even told you where to look, I pouted. You think a single kick will take me down? Zuko snarled, jumping to his feet angry. Don't feel proud of knocking me down once. It would be embarrassing if you did seeing as your defeat is unavoidable. I laughed at that. Oh, Prince I have to admit, I am proud you. Not of your strength, that's sad, but of disillusion. It takes a big man to do what you are doing. Sticking to your bravado to the bitter end, even when the gap in our skill is massively big, you still believe you have a chance. 
and that is something to be proud of. I sighed. All this this unhinged pride you feel. I will soon rectify this you have tainted and insulted my honor. Long enough I will Zuko said. But before he continued with his monologue, I stopped him. All right stop your monologue. I chuckled. Let's just end this. All right. I understand you want to brag and in a way old way show your girl how much to a man are. Uh, but time is of essence. And while there's absolutely nothing I'd rather do than stand here and listen to you bluster at me until the end of times. I actually have some shit to do later. Volleyball perhaps. I smiled. So here's the deal go all out against me. Bring forth the strongest fire you can muster, if you insist. Zuko growled, firing his strongest attack at me, and needless to say it was quite the disappointment, with little to no effort. I effortlessly disarmed his attack with a single hand, bringing down the big fireball into nothingness, leaving the little prince, Zuko, in shock, as Azala pleased. And my entirely worried. A minute passed after that, and Zuko has yet to say something he was simply staring at me. You know if I had a watch. I'd be looking at my wrist really condescendingly right now, I chuckled. Who am I kidding, I'm enjoying this too much. I will not be humiliated. Zuko said snapping out of his comatose state, trying to change his approach from a bending match to hand-to-hand -hand combat, a very big mistake for as soon as he got within my range. I rendered him unconscious, with a quick lightning fast jab to his jaw. Prince, you have no need to have someone humiliating you, you are exceptional at doing so. And the days went by in our vacation with the guilt eating away at me from the inside out. The feeling of loathing I had for myself, for not telling her was burning me, making me feel bad about myself. I was crossing a line I should have never crossed. And that is why, no matter how horrible her reaction was, I had to tell her, I had to come clean. And for that sole reason, I had invited her to an isolated place, where, if she lost control, she would not burn the whole island. Akira, Azala greeted me with a smile, walking towards me. Azala, I have to tell you something. I said as hundreds of voices whispered to me not to do it, to keep things as they were, that I wouldn't hurt her if I did that, that lying was the answer, or that I wasn't lying just keeping information from her, but all of that was nothing but a pat in the back for my stupid behavior, Azala. I'm not who you think I am, Azala stared at me, and with concern asked, what do you mean? I could feel her worry, under her steel cold face. The only thing about me that is not a lie is that my name is Akira, and that I like you. I said almost as a whisper. Explain, Azala said, almost snarling the words out. I come from the Water Tribe. Since the monk is one of the two avatars, he represents the light and I represent the darkness. But don't pay too much attention to that it's an abstract concept. I said with a faint smile. Is this a joke? Azala laughed out loud, faking her laugh. Should I be laughing at this? Seeing that the best thing now was to prove to her that if I was telling her the truth, I used water control to pour the drinks as I replied. It's not a joke. Are you lied to me? You slept with me. You waited until now. You used me to tell me you are like everyone else. At the end of that, Azala was throwing a lightning bolt at me, which I stopped with my index finger, redirecting the attack to a nearby rock. I didn't use you. I shot back. I still want to be with you. The only thing that changed were my origins. Nothing more. I'm still the same Akira you fell for. Ha 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 ha. Azala laughed. Love. You were a tool for me. A toy for pleasure and war. Don't flatter yourself so much. She screamed as she continued to attack me. Had I known you were from that filthy tribe, I would have killed you in your sleep, Azala please. This doesn't have to go this way. I said, trying to reach out to her. I wonder what face your mother will make when I burn her alive. Will she cry in pain? Or in hatred for you? Azala said with a delirious laugh. Or your lovely family. I can't wait to skin them alive. Sakura and her family would now be in danger. All because I couldn't keep in my pants. I'm sorry. I'm sorry I hurt you. And I'm sorry I have to hurt you to protect those you are threatening. Dodging her attacks. I positioned myself in front of her, immobilizing her in a rock prison, where she tried to bite me, fueled with pain and regret for what I was about to do. I put one thumb her forehead and the other one on her chest as I stared at her. And taking a deep breath I proceeded to take away her ability to bend fire. After a few seconds of dark lights related to the delicate balance of energy bending of this technique, I released Azala, who immediately tried to attack me. But her attacks were empty of her normal blue fire. Arg, Azala screamed, throwing punches in the air, all while aiming at me with no result. What did you do? I took away your favorite weapon. I answered, if you want your fire back, you will stay out of this war when this is over. I will look for you, and I will give you back your power. But if you intervene, you will stay like this forever, I answered. You think this is going to stop me, Azala laughed, the only thing you got out of this. Was that now I'll have to do what I wanted to do to your family with my own hands. Normally I wouldn't give a fuck and I don't. But she needs a new start so. If you truly want to help her. You might have to ask the mother of faces to grant her a new face without memory. 
No amount of love will fix what years of damage did to her head. Vatu offered. No, I guess not. I said in a low tone, really taking in Vatu's advice. I guess it's time for you to see your mother again. Are you going to kill me? Azala laughed in a delirious way. No, I said, knocking her out with a quick chop to the neck. I'm going to kill the damage everyone did to you. Including the one I did. Call the fat cat here Vatu growled. Time is of the essence I chuckled at that. How bitter everything was now. But at least, I would give her a way out and escape from her nightmare. I am mad as a hatter. I shouted. Did someone call the all adorable? Cheshire said, appearing out of nowhere. Oh what happened to the little psycho? He pointed to Azala. It's a long story I said, avoiding the subject. Let's go to the forgetful valley okay? Josiah said with little concern, changing his form. Soon she would be fine in a better place, with her mother at her side. With a life without unreasonable expectations, without so much pain, without so many betrayals, without Ozai. This was for the best. I knew that, or at least, I wanted to believe that. I flew with Azala out cold to the forgetful valley, without stopping. This time it took me less than a few hours to get there, and at one of the spiritual pools. I called for the Mother of Faces, using Vatu as the connection between my and the Primordial. Once a year, the Mother of the Faces said in anger, appearing in front of the month, once a year is my limit my rule. The most I can possibly deal with you human beings, and you come and disrupt my slumber. The air around the valley seemed to cool with an ominous edge. I didn't mean to, but she needs you, I said with reverence. The Mother of the Faces stared at me, and as she looked at Azala, her hostility subsided. I know her, I know her mother. It seems they both have suffered a lot, what do you want? I want you to give her what she never had a family. I know her mother is close, and I know you can alter memories. So can you perhaps alter their memories to make Azala as a new person part of them? I wanted to offer her the chance to have what I couldn't offer her a chance to have a lovely mother and a normal father. The mother of faces looked at me for a long second, a noble and yet cowardly decision, but I will grant you this request she has suffered more than most, perhaps a new beginning is what she needs, thank you, I said with a faint smile, but this was far from over, as payment for this request, you will in turn forget this valley and everything about it, and never come back, the mother of the faces said in a cold and cruel tone, do you accept? I do. I nodded. Then it shall be done, the mother of faces stated, and the radiance of a thousand suns. I felt my body being forcibly displaced, and in the blink of an eye, I appeared in a distant desert along with Cheshire. Where, where was I? I muttered. I remembered taking Azala somewhere. But where? Great. We got men in black, Vatu muttered. Don't worry your crazy ex is fine, but thanks to you. I don't remember shit about why, and how is she okay which I really don't care, but the fact I can't remember annoys me. I also get the feeling she's okay, and I have the feeling is best not to question it. I sighed. Good, I do not want to have any more blank spaces in my memory. Vada sighed. Not to bother anyone, but can anyone tell me why are we in the desert? Cheshire inquired. I doubt anyone needs such a big body. God, I wonder who cleans it with a sigh. I ordered Shasaya to take me back to the Fire Nation. I had to take Sakura and her family out of there before I killed Ozai. I had nothing holding me back from ending his life, but even so, I would not rush it. I would plan the grand finale like a maestro of the orchestra. The world deserved that much. Finally, we can start talking about something I actually like. Vata said, unusually happy. I have a list of things we can try with him. So bear with me for a second I mean you will listen to me human. Alright with that out of the way. Here are my ideas, for option 1. How about, if we use ropes to tie and lower Ozai above a pyramid-shaped sea seed of torture, with the point inserted into the ass? Though we can make him a hole for that. I am open to suggestions, anyway. Little by little, we would add weights would leading to death by impalement. Jesus fucking Christ, where are you getting those ideas? The humans of your world are delightful chaotic. Now shut up I have more ideas, Vatu said, with a giddy tone of excitement. I also have this one I want to try, and I find it quite ironic, the brazen bull. But instead of fire and smoke, extreme colds, and oxygen deprivation, you need to stop see that shit in my head which I don't remember watching, to begin with. I chuckled, it was weird seeing him so excited. The human mind saves everything your eyes have ever seen, even if it was for a second. Your brain saves it normally this information is discarded if you don't think is essential. But, thanks to my powers recovering such delicious memories is a breeze, Vadu stated. I also have this one original idea. In where you bend each and every single blood cell in his body to heat up slowly. But surely killing him. Or we could stop the flow of oxygen on his blood. But for those two you need to master bloodbending so Vatu had a thing for torture great. We'll see how we end him once we get to that point. For now try to decide between those three options. Three. I have like 80 more I wanted to share with you. But I suppose it's fair to narrow it down. Vatu sighed. I will have my decision by then. Well, it seems I have a new thing to deal with now. 
Bartu's new interest in the ancient art of torture. I wonder if in the end is me who is corrupting him instead of the other way around. Oh well, you corrupting me. PSFFFF, you are barely showing me there are other ways to enjoy the chaotic rule of the cosmos. A mere human corrupting corruption itself. Talk about hubris, Vardu laughed. I know you watch and I'm in my head, and now you enjoy medieval torture so. I think I'm right, I snorted. I do not watch and I'm. I find it disgusting, Vada growled. Mother of Faces POV Akira. The broken piece had come back with an even more broken soul in a different one, one that had been complete, but shattered by its environment, one that cried for help from the inside out soon. You will have the family you always wanted, the love you always desired, forgetting all about the world outside this valley. I said in a soothing tone as I weaved her a new face, a new destiny. Why did you erase his memory? My loyal spirit wolf asked. I know for a fact you were happy to help him with her. So why? It's for the best, I answered. And why did you take away his feelings for her? My wolf asked. To change his fate for the better not all loves lead to a happy ending. Some led to destruction. I smiled patting my loyal servant in the head. In time, he will be grateful for what I did. But until that time comes... He must forget ever loving her. He still has a role to play. After suffering the destiny every human that had the bad luck of seeing aliens in the Men in Black universe had suffered, I decided to go directly to the Fire Nation, mostly to evacuate Sakura and her family. But primarily Sakura, the rest, was not of my concern. Then I would kill Ozai. But right now I didn't feel like fighting an army. In fact, I didn't feel anything at all. Right now everything was odd. I felt like I was operating under a fog, with everything feeling a little unreal like I was walking underwater. Vatu said that was normal that it would go away. But still, it felt awful. Shisaya, remember to wake me up a few minutes before our objective. I said as I got comfortable on his back. You got it boss, Shisaya purred. Tai Li POV Azala and Akira were missing one moment they were here. And the next, they were gone, and by the looks of where they had their last aid, it seemed they had a fight. It seems they broke up and more, Mai said with a grim tone, maybe they killed each other. But isn't Akira like stronger than Azala? If they did have a fight Akira would have won. But he wasn't here which either meant he escaped after killing Azala. Or they eloped I hope it is the last one. Whatever happened here is no longer important they have been missing for two weeks, Zuko sighed. We have to go back and report them missing he added. And I could see his aura flickering he was indecisive about something. But what? Yeah, I just hope they are okay. I sighed, this really put my aura in a blue sad tone. I liked Akira he made Azala less scary. Very well, Mai nodded. So we leave tomorrow then? I sighed. Yes, Zuko and Mai nodded. Sokka POV the mask man if we managed to get him on our side. We would win this war two avatars fighting together. Would bring this tyranny to a well-deserved end. But first, we had to locate him, and considering he is with Azala's group, it was safe to assume he lives in the Fire Nation capital, and considering we were heading that way, it was nothing but optimal to try and find him, with Toph on our side. It should be easy. So what is our plan? Aang inquired with a smile. We infiltrate you learn the bases of fire bending. While Toph and I look for him, she has sensed the guy before, and is the only one with a vast field of view foot view. I stated. Yes. Blind girl for the win. Toph cheered. As for you Katara you will keep an eye on Arn making sure he doesn't draw any attention to him. I told Katara. You got it. Katara nodded with determination. I have one question what happens if the guy says no and tries to capture us. I mean I am awesome. But I don't think I can bring an entire army alone. Toph said with a concerned expression. First I don't think he would do that. And second you would have me by your side. So you would not be alone. I answered. That's what I said. Alone. Toph nodded. Toph you would have me. I smiled. All right Toph and a half. Toph chuckled. For the last time I can still fight. I screamed digging my hands into the table. Matt. Toph chuckled. At this point she is doing it just to annoy you soccer. And you make it easy for her, Katara sighed. Bossy is right, Toph nodded. Who are you calling Bossy? Katara inquired with an angry smile. Oh, geez, I don't know, Toph chuckled. Oh yeah, you, okay, we are getting out of track. I coughed before they started to fight last time I ended with a concussion as collateral damage. I do not want to repeat that. Sokka is right, Ung nodded. Let's get back to the planning part of this meeting. Akira POV I was woken up by my alarm clock going off in vibrating mode. Aka Chisaya purring like a machine gun. We have arrived or destination is on the right, Chisaya chuckled. Jesus you purr very loud and strong. I chuckled realizing I felt better. Still as if I was under a fog. But this time it felt the fog cleared itself a bit. Now how do we proceed do I let Ursok know? So that he can start burning this place down. Chisaya said, changing the colors of his fur to look like a recon uniform. He was really into the rescue mission. I don't think we are fugitives, just yet. 
So let's go with a less complicated approach, I chuckled. Which is, Shasaya asked changing his fur back to normal. Just going in grabbing Sakura and piecing out, I answered. That was my plan so far. And if obstacles presented themselves, I would just burn them away or waterbend them away. I was beyond the point I cared to hide my powers. Alright, Shasaya purred. Can I scratch the head made on the way out? Why? I asked. She said cats are ugly and stupid, and as I cat I must defend my honor, Shasaya hissed. How dare she say I am ugly, I am a cat, we can't be ugly. Sure, just don't scar her. I chuckled. Okay, Shasaya pouted as we descended into the house, taking advantage of the dark night to mask our presence. Once inside the house, I walked to Sakura's room and woke her up by throwing her a pillow. What in the? Akira, why did you do that for? Sakura said, waking up. We have to leave, I technically killed the fire princess. So we have at most a day or two before they find out, I whispered. Close to her ear, as to avoid any prying ears in the house from hearing it. Even though I felt the room was empty with my elemental senses, it was best to avoid. Oh, fuck. After convincing Sakura and her family to leave, I went to the prison where they had Iro to find that he had already escaped. Which meant that Zuko was about to betray his father. I am never going to understand why didn't Zuko kill him during the eclipse he had the chance. His reason not to do so was stupid beyond comprehension. If you have a shot at Hitler you take it. You can't walk away saying. It's not my destiny then again. I am also letting him live. But at least I am sure I will kill him. It has never been a matter of if. But of when. Shasaya. I said, looking to the Fire Nation from above the skies with a dry look. Take them to the Northern Water Tribe. With that said I jumped out of Shasaya's back in a surge of impulsiveness. Did I have a plan? No. Did I want to do something specifically? No. But something told me. I had to go alone in this part of my journey. No. My rival. Ursok screamed as he saw me descend to the ground full speed. I chuckled at that and focused on slowing my landing with water bending. I'll be fine. I shouted back. Once I found myself on the ground I decided once again on an impulse to go to the castle. I wanted to leave Ozai with a friendly warning. That arm was not the one who was going to kill him. It was me, I was going to rip him apart, tearing him out of my sight forever. But not today. If I did it today, I would put the country on a political mess. No I had to wait for Zuko to realize dear old Dada was bad, which considering Iroh escaped, it must be anytime soon. I chuckled at my thoughts and shook my head off in amusement before I blasted off to the castle, knocking every soldier in my way. Not because they were trying to stop me, but because I could, and it would set a nice tone to the threat I was making myself to be to Ozai. Ozai. I shouted, kicking the doors to the throne room open with earth bending in an explosion of dust and dirt. Sorry for interrupting your meeting, but I really don't care. Ozai glared at me, anger being his most prominent emotion. So much it was almost leaking out of his body, creating an almost red looking glow around him. Wait, I am not seeing things, Ozai is actually glowing red. It doesn't matter, i will figure that out later. You will kneel and accept your execution with honor, Ozai shouted. And I laugh like I haven't done in months. You dare to laugh at the fire lord. One of the men inside the throne room growled, his emotions depicted clearly he wanted to fight. And I had no time waste with him. I gathered the water around him, and with a single move of my hand, I pushed the water I had gathered inside him, filling him up through every crack, every cut, and every hole on his body, without letting the water get out. I held this for a few seconds before he exploded in a blossoming explosion of gore. That's a new one. I chuckled, name pending. Fear, fear took control of everybody in the room except Ozai, who simply looked at me with curiosity and anger. You are the avatar. Ozai hissed, finally vocalizing something. I guess you are technically correct. I hummed, but I am not the one you've been hunting though believe me. Unlike Un, I would have come here to kill you. So congratulations, you choose the right avatar to follow. 10 out of 10. I winked. There are two avatars. Lies. Ozai growled. One is a bald prepubescent kid. I don't know what else to tell you. I shrugged. If he didn't want to believe, it was his deal. It doesn't matter anyway. One or ten they will all kneel before me before losing their heads, Ozai said as he stood up from his seat, walking towards me, trying to intimidate me. Ozai, I didn't come here to fight you. I chuckled. No, you came here to die, Ozai growled, throwing a powerful stream of fire at me, strong enough that I no saw the difference between Zuko and him, and it was massive. But I remained unfazed, unmoving, meeting his attack head on. After the smoke cleared up, I asked while cleaning my clothes with water bending, are you done throwing a tantrum? You will learn to respect me before you die. Ozai barked, I think it most likely to expect I'm killing someone, than to expect respect from me, especially to you. I sighed, rolling my eyes at him. I came here to let you know you have till the comet to plan how to defeat me. I will come for you. And I will kill you. 
Not because I want to save the world, fuck that. Not because I want revenge. And certainly not because you are a threat to me. No, I do it because I will enjoy the crap out of it. I heard Vata shout, I'm sorry, we will enjoy it. You think, you can defeat me. Ozai screamed in rage, but before he was able to attack once again, I kicked the ground and forced the columns and any other vital structure in the throne room to collapse. Maybe I should have just karate chop him in the neck oh well. He survived that I sighed, feeling his heart beat with my seismic sense. He was the only one though. The irony is there, but I am too lazy to point it out. I have the perfect way to kill him. Let's burn him alive like humans did to witches in your world. But before you do that take his bending away. His death would most ironic. Huh, someone sure was excited to kill Ozai, damn. Vata witches aren't real though, but they did burn innocent humans for stupid reasons. I chuckled. So humans just burned other humans even better. After leaving Ozai crushed under the debris of his throne room, I decided to leave the kingdom, with no destination in mind. But I knew it wasn't here, for now I needed a purpose greater than just killing Ozai for the sake of it. Iroh was right, it would change nothing. A new Fire Lord would take the throne and repeat the cycle over and over again, trapping me in an endless loop of stupidity. No, for this war to truly end, a cause had to end it. In the series it was Arn and his beliefs that ended the war. And, yes, defeating Ozai had sealed the deal. But defeating Ozai wasn't the entire deal. He promised other nations without words, and sometimes with words, he would free them from the oppression the fire had made them endure. This gave the people hope, and for that, they fought for his cause. Well, I had other plans, plans that included me killing Ozai. This world was weak, without purpose, without guts, without conviction. Three nations, one of which thanks to their collective weakness of the world, did not longer exist. We're all against the corner all by one nation, and the worst part was, that during the time that Arn was lost in time, they did nothing, nothing worthy of remembering. They just waited like sheep patiently sitting for the avatar to return. This type of almost slave-like compliancy was disgusting. They shouldn't depend on Arn or me for every major problem. This war shouldn't have lasted 100 years. The Fire Nation was strong, but easily beatable under an alliance. So this situation they were dealing with was their fault, which is why I knew what I had to do. I knew now what my goal was now, to make the armies of the revolution the armies of the people of this world end this conflict once and for all, with no avatars involved except for the part of me killing Ozai. But that was more of a commission for pushing them in the right direction. Otherwise, I was sure that if I didn't push them to win this on their own arm, and depending on the mood myself, would have to forever hold their hands in an endless cycle. And that wasn't what I wanted, not at all. I wanted to be free, not a slave of their weakness. You want to emancipate the world, Rava will be pissed she has a thing for control very well. I will help you just despite Rava, I inwardly chuckled as if Vatu had an option, adorable. You are getting way too cocky, perhaps I am actually rubbing off on your Vata chuckled, reading my thoughts. It was bound to happen, pal. I laughed, what did he expect? I can't help but hang out with him, but I don't think I learned to be cocky from him. I was cocky before him. Taking a deep breath, I put my options in front of me to study. On one hand, I could use the Order of the White Lotus, manipulating them into changing their plans. But considering they were all extremely wise, they would see through my plans quite easily if I go to them, which made my endeavor all the more difficult. But on the other hand, I could create my own organization, something with a more chaotic tone. I think I know my decision. I chuckled, the Chaos Order, you'll as a POV. I couldn't understand why something felt so wrong within. Here I was with my family, my mother who loved me with all her might, my father who adored me over all things, and my little sister who looked up to me, and yet all this felt like a dream. I felt something was missing. Yalaza, can you please take your sister to the park tomorrow? Mother asked with a tired smile. I have to work all day tomorrow, and I forgot I promised her that, she sighed. Don't worry mom, I'll take care of it. I smiled at her, putting my bags on the counter. I'm off tomorrow anyway. Thanks, sweetie, mom smiled with relief. Did you bought the honey dip cream I love? Dad asked with a smile. Like you would let me forget, I scoffed, handing him the honey dip. Ha ha ha. Dad laughed, what can I say? I love this stuff. Next morning Yolaza POV the bright morning sun shone high in a cloudless sky, meaning today was perfect to have some cis time. Right now, busily scurrying through the kitchen of a simple yet comfy home in the town, mom and I were serving breakfast. Babies, mom called out, breakfast is ready. Is she even up? Mom asked. And I chuckled, what a silly question. What do you think? I smiled, placing my little sister's food on the table. Before mom could reply, the tapping sound of footsteps came hurtling down the stairs from the second floor. And I turned to mother with a grin. Yeah, like she would miss a day in the park, mom sighed. Morning, my little sister said, tackling me into a hug. Did you manage to sleep last night? I did, I chuckled, eyeing her with curiosity. Why? 
You kept on sleep talking. Something about Akira is he. I couldn't hear what she said next, because as soon as I heard that name, my head started hurt leaving a buzzing sound, and all I could wonder was who was Akira, and why was I crying about his name. Akira POV to make my organization, I would have to study the possibility of merging spirits with people to boost their natural prowess. A water spirit for a water bender, a fire one for a fire bender, but this was at best a maybe idea, for I would not force any spirit to merge. But that didn't mean I could not convince some to do so. This ought to be a fun endeavor. Or, at the very least, very chaotic. After talking to Vado about my idea, he helped me to improve certain aspects of it. My original idea was to use spirits to help those I selected to fight for my cause. But as I had stated before, I had certain problems with forcing a spirit or a human to do so. But Vato refined this idea with the following. He gave me the ingenious idea of using people that no one would miss, people who under no moral compass, would be considered human beings. Monsters so evil, that death was too good for them, people whom I would have no problem using and eliminating. But alas, the idea did not end there. Vatu had designed a punishment for these creatures that we were going to use. The monsters would only donate their body. Since in the version of Vatu, the spirits would control everything, locking the monsters in a prison without exit, without escape. It was quite poetic if you ask me, prisoner of their own mind. So, now my new mission was to look for people like Ozai or worse, and, of course, finding spirits that would be willing to collaborate with me on this endeavor, perhaps Ursok and Cheshire, would be the first knights of my chaotic order. Although, it was not very clear for me if it would work with Cheshire, since he did not have an element to command. His powers were out of any category, being along the lines of magic than to elemental power. But even without an element, if he could manifest his powers in human form, they would make him an enemy difficult to defeat and entertaining to fight. So, in the case Ursok and Cheshire are accepted, it would mean I had yet to find three other spirits for this. One for air, one for water, and one for earth. I wanted my order to be small when it came to my knights, five were more than enough. So, I had yet to find three spirits and five disposable humans. Prisons would make a great farming spot. The Fire Nation has many of them, if I recall you saying I hummed. That seems like a good place to start, I nodded. So, how will the selection process go? Vato inquired. Well, I will pick those whose emotions are the worst among the worst. I answered only then I would be able to pick the right disposable humans. Not all criminal were monsters deserving of this treatment, and not all monsters were criminals. Simple as that, though sometimes both lines crossed. Very well. Now remember for this to work we both must subdue the spirit of the person we want to trap in the darkest corner of their mind for all eternity with our energy. Otherwise, the merging won't work as we intend oh. Yeah, I almost forgot about that little detail. Which reminded me I would leave Ursok and Chisaya for last, just to make sure the process was safe for them before using it. The process of merging was both simple and complex. I had to imprison the human spirit, while Vatu would be doing the body spirit part, switching the roles of control, making it a very delicate process. A mistake according to Vatu, could kill the human or the spirit depending on who made the mistake, therefore we could not afford any mistakes. Okay, let's do this, with the plan in hand. I began my journey my destination, the most secure prison on the planet. Yolaza POV I woke up in my bed to find my sister sleeping next to me, holding me tight, all while briefly remembering what had happened hours ago. A simple name had knocked me down, but why? There was no reason behind such a thing. Why would a name would hurt me so much? It didn't make any sense. But still that name brought a sense of nostalgia, which confused me even more. Who was the bearer of that name? And what did he or she mean to me? A part of me begged me to let it go, that it would only bring me pain. But another part demanded that I look for answers. It was as if I was torn between two sides. It was a complicated feeling. Are you feeling better big sis? Ki said with a worried expression. I am. I smiled patting her head. I just need some rest and I'll be dandy. Was it my fault? Ki asked once again this time hiding her head under the sheets of the bed in shame. No, 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 I was simply tired. You know how much I work it's nothing for perfection for me and my clients. I said with a warm smile kissing her on the forehead, you will never hurt me, ever, I swear pinky swear. Kii smiled a bit, double pinky swear. I smiled upping her offer. I double that. Kii giggled. I looked at her and with a giggle of my own I asked, how? With the pinkies of my feet. Kii smiled. Well, I had to hand it to her, she beat me in my own game. Well played little sis, well played. Akira POV the closest prison to me was days away, and the one I wanted to go was months away, meaning I needed Chisire on my side, but considering he was taking Sakura's family to the north, well it meant I would have to cover some distance in the pedestrian way, at least until I was sure I could summon him. I think we can tame one of those bisons the anorexic bodysuit Rava uses has Vatu said, trying to help. Huh. 
that actually could work in Korra. Those things were everywhere, but I have no idea where to look. I hummed, what about you Vatu? I don't know one of the air temples. Vatu answered, sounding unsure. So, the four corners of the known world, I deadpanned. Hey, I am trying to help not my fault those hippies had no concept of hospitality who in the fuck would want to visit them when you basically have to walk across the globe to see them all Vardu stated. And he was right he came with the great idea of having the temples so far away from each other. Traveling without Cheshire was a time-consuming nuisance, but for the moment, I had no other choice, which is why I found myself on a boat, one that I had stolen from the trading port near the capital. Inside the boat, I found myself with another problem, which was that I didn't know how to operate it. I didn't have the slightest idea how to do it, so I had to force people who knew what to do to help me. Thanks to that, I was getting close to my destination faster, and instead of being months away from the destination, I was now a couple of weeks away from the Fire Nation's maximum security prison. And since I would be confined to the ship for the foreseeable future, I decided to take advantage of the time and start looking for the spirits that I would recruit for this mission. It's time, I declared with a clear and decisive tone. Perfect, now start meditating. Once you're inside, I'll protect the body in the physical world, Vata declared with confidence. Without further ado, I allowed myself to be deeply immersed in my meditation, and little by little, I felt my body become not only lighter but calmer. I continued this process, until I felt a spring breeze gently touching my face, which considering I was on a boat in a windowless room was well, impossible. So with that little bit of information I knew I was already in the spiritual world. Carefully opening my eyes, I scanned the area as I reminded myself that without my physical body, I had no powers, and that I should act tactfully so as not to anger anyone, as I would have no way to defend myself if that happened while I was in this state. The place where I found myself was strange and new, a place I had never been to in any of my visits to the spiritual world. Green plains like a soccer field, with trees of strange and impossible colors. But the most striking or important thing was the feeling of absolute peace. That the place gave me to the point that I knew that this feeling of calmness was not natural. I shook my head from those thoughts for the time being, and stood from where I was, looking around, wondering where to start. The spiritual world was vast, infinitely more vast than the physical world, which could make my mission extraordinarily long or short, depending on my luck. With a sigh and a soft chuckle, I started walking in a random direction, as I wondered why my trips to the spirit world were so unpredictable, Un always got where he had to go, whereas in my case, Everything was random, maybe it was because our symbolic purposes were different, he was order, and I was chaos, and chaos was generally unpredictable. I kept walking for hours in my search for companions, until my walk was interrupted by a fox with wings that landed abruptly in front of me. For a couple of seconds, the fox just stared at me, his eyes shining with curiosity and fascination, mixed with caution and something else that I could not quite grasp. A human, what are you doing here? The fox asked with evident curiosity, and I could tell from his tone and the way he looked at me that he had never seen a human before, or it had been quite a while since he had seen one. I have come for business-related reasons. I casually informed the fox with a smile. What kind of business? Asked the fox, cautiously glancing at me every now and then. I am looking to recruit three spirits to work for me. I replied, deciding to be honest from the beginning. It would save me some troubles later on. The fox sighed, his emotions shifting from simple curiosity to anger. Not many of us can leave. Not since the avatar locked us here, he said. This was unexpected and interesting. The anger he was emanating was not directed at me at all, which is a norm for me, but rather this hostile feeling was directed towards Ang. Or to be more on the dot to the first avatar. I noticed some hostility towards the avatar. Why is that? I asked carefully. I didn't want him to take this question as me defending Ayn. I just wanted to see him elaborate his point more in depth. Yes, the fox snarled, wings fluttering angrily. The spiritual world and the physical world used to be one, but he decided for us. Trapping most of us here against our will, not all of us wanted to be here for all eternity. And not all of us have the power to go out and see the world at will. And even when we do, it hurts if we stay out too long. And do you hate any other human besides that avatar? I asked him with curiosity, although I already knew the answer, considering that I only felt negative feelings on his part towards Arn. No, before the Avatar, the world was one, we lived amongst the humans, many of us protected the humans, and they protected us, the fox answered, many of us loved the humans, and had no way to go back to protect them to save our mates. Well, let me tell you a story. I said with a smile, ignoring for a moment the clear hint to spirit to human relationships. I started where most stories begin, the beginning well, not the beginning beginning, but the one he had to hear, giving an insight about the world's current situation. For starters, I told him there were two avatars now, which was something he took with a grain of salt. But as I continued with my explanation about my plan and my goals, 
I could see on his eyes, he grew more and more interested about it. But nothing was more fun than the expression he made when I told him. I was the second avatar, the nice and chaotic one. So, you say you and Vatu have a way to give spirits physical bodies? The winged fox inquired. Yes, which is why I need to find some spirits willing to join my organization. I already have one for fire, I nodded. With my mind going to my cat, and whatever Chisaya is, I chuckled. Chaotic, he is chaotic not like Vatu. But you get it, the fox smiled. So you need air, water, and earth, right? Yes, that's the goal. I nodded. Good, the fox smiled, and with a sudden movement of his paws that was almost too fast to follow, he destroyed half of the forest behind him with a mighty torrent of wind. That crushed everything on his path. I hope that fills any requisites for the air slot. I am in I have some problems to work out with the avatar. I had to admit, I was surprised this little fox packed such a punch. Thank fucking god I did not make an enemy out of him. Like what? Killing him. The fox replied without missing a bit, his small and almost cute white form. Suddenly morphing into a massive black and red fox with six legs and three pairs of wings. I lost too much because of him, and he will pay me back. At this point his eyes were glowing red, and his body towered over me emanating raw power. We will talk about the details of your contract later on I chuckled. After Axis the demonic fox joined my group, he told me that he would help me get the other required spirits. With his sole reason for helping being more than clear. The fact he hated the first avatar with all his might. Axis asked with curiosity, can you use all the elements now? No, I can't use airbending yet there have been several difficulties so far with that element, I replied with a sigh. And how have you been dealing with those difficulties? Axis asked, staring at me. What have you done to master the air? What have I done to try to connect with the air? What a hard question. Well, I read about the monks and there I stopped talking when I saw that Axis was laughing at me. I'm not surprised you haven't learned anything yet, Axis said seriously. The monks took over the real concept of airbending, and changed it to fit their lifestyle. But air is not about peace and tranquility, as they wanted everyone to think. No, the air is more than that, it's the freedom of life and death, the freedom in the destruction of everything, and in the creation, the real form of air is absolute freedom. He explained, so nothing they teach works. I exclaimed with a laugh. Yes and no, Axis replied. The monks try to teach through altruism, which I personally consider stupid. But I can't deny that it works for some, altruism. I guess it makes sense, though I wonder, if the monks don't use the original source of their element. What is the original source, was it just freedom? And the original source is what? Freedom. The fox smiled broadly, yes. Freedom can be good or bad, just like all the elements their original sources, everything lies in the middle. Which is the reason why many humans over time, decided to change the concepts to feel good about themselves. Fire is passion, earth is will, water is creativity, and air is freedom. The original sources of each element are both good and bad. Water was creativity. Who would have thought? Haha. Ha. I guess it makes sense now why I mastered it so quickly. Well, you know a lot about this. I've been alive for over 20,000 years. Kit, the fox said winking at me. You learn a thing or two when you live that long. It makes a whole lot of sense, I said, laughing. By the way, I wanted to ask you, Axis said his voice getting colder and colder as his body started to change to his real self. Why do I feel like you won't let me kill on? He inquired, high eyes were burning red in something akin to anger. I could taste the bloodlust crawling up my spine at this point. Well, this fox is creepy. I like him, well, um, while unbearable, hasn't really done anything to you. The first avatar was the one who fucked up the world literally. So I don't want you to kill on, just because he's stupid. But I do want you to kill the guy who did this. So you can kill all the avatars before him, I said with a wide smile. Elaborate Axis said, relaxing. The spirits of the past avatars are stuck inside him. With energy bending you can kill them, one by one, until you get to the number one jerk. I said, clarifying my point. Oh, I see Axis said with a smile. That's acceptable. As long as he dies I'm happy. What strong hate. I wonder who he lost thanks to the avatar to get to this point. I'm glad, after hours of walking, Axis ended up bringing me to a place where I met a stag our simple stag, which despite having nothing special on the outside, made me feel that I should be on guard in front of him, Faunus this boy has an offer for you. Axis shouted at the stag, getting his attention. A human in the forgotten forest of the ancients. What a rarity Faunus said with a tone that indicated bewilderment as he looked at me, an offer you say, Axis. Yes, Axis replied, he can take us to the human world, in exchange for us working for him. And what kind of work would we have to do? Faunus asked as I wondered. Why was I being ignored? We would be his agents of chaos or nights. I don't really know. 
but I what I know is that there would be carnage and things like that, Axis replied with a smile. I see, Fauna smiled slightly. You know, if I had a watch, I'd be looking at my wrist really condescendingly right now. I said, tired of being ignored. My apologies, young fellow, Fauna said with a smile. I didn't intend to neglect you. It's alright? I said as I looked at him with curiosity, wondering what element was under his control. Question what element do you control? I, my dear sir, control no, I dance. With the earth, Faunus said proudly, and to avoid long talks about trivial manners. Count me in, just like that. Without asking me for something like Axis. Something doesn't add up. Don't you want anything in return for your servitude? I had to ask. No, Fauna smiled. Then why? I asked him. Why does anyone do anything? Sheer, absolute boredom. Besides, the idea of being able to dance in the blood of my opponents once again it excites me. The stag I had seen a couple of seconds ago was no longer the same. His body had changed just like Axis when he got angry. He was taller, even more massive than Axis. Where his face was, there was now a skull covered his face with his eyes glowing underneath the bone. His coat dripped a black substance that looked like blood, but what most baffled me was his emotions. Total and absolute madness it was like looking directly into the abyss of insanity. Awesome. I smiled, wondering if bringing this two to the physical world was a good idea. Faunus and Axis, my two newly acquired diabolical companions, they both had an aura that had me on an edge, mostly because right now I was powerless. But still, it was enough to have me ready to jump back to my real body. Their powers were so massive, I doubted I could win against them in their own element. Which made this all the more fun. I could barely wait to fight them and learn from them. Now, all we need is fire. And water, Faunus said with a wide smile. I know just the fire spirit we can add to our little group. I already have a fire spirit. I reminded the demonic deer who pouted in response. I'm not saying you should kick the bear out. Goodness no. But the spirit I have in mind is a master of his art, Faunus replied, you of course already have the best of the best for air and earth. But why stop there? Just have two fire spirits and be done with it, Axis sighed. Well, if these two were a point to go by, I could already imagine the next spirit being another demonic monstrosity leagues above Ursok and Chesire in the power scale. Though to be fair Chesire was a hard cat to measure with his powers being so weird. Fine, I shrugged. A most wise choice, boss, Faunus smirked. With that said and done, Faunus took us to quite the hell-like place, where flames roamed free and the scorching heat was ever-present. The place was almost identical to my personal idea of hell. Anai, Faunus shouted, and out of nowhere a blast of fire landed close to him, growling. I told you if I ever saw you here again, that I would kill you Faunus. The massive flames growled in a tone that promised pain. Lots of it. And I wasn't gonna lie it was quite the impressive display. The fire was so hot it melted the very ground around the focal point of the fire at an alarming rate, turning the ground around it into lava basically. I don't think he's your friend, Axis chuckled, creating an air bubble around us to protect me from the heat. Oh, nonsense, we are like brothers that occasionally want to kill each other, Faunus laughed. I am nothing but your executioner, the flames shouted. Oh, you and your humor, Faunus said, purposely annoying the fire spirit, while I would normally love to humor you. I came here for business-related reasons. You see this little human here is looking for the best of the best. To work under him, and I know what you're thinking what can this respectable human offer. Well, allow me to answer the simple question. He can offer us our freedom. Well limited freedom, as long as we follow some minor conditions. Is that true? Anai asked. I can offer you a human body. So yeah, I answered. Then, the furious flames started to become smaller and smaller to the point where there was no fire around, and where the massive inferno of flames at one point stood melting the ground on its wake, now stood a small and adorable weasel, that basically teleported in front of me, extending his little paw, giving me a firm handshake, then the name is a knight. Boss, short for Agnatron, long for Ag. I kinda expected you to say no I mean, you seem to hate one of my associates, I said pointing to Faunus. Oh him? I already forgot why I hated him in the first place, and I shrugged, climbing into my shoulders where he stood high, and shouted to the wind onwards to victory. Do you also have a big form you would like to show? I asked with a chuckle. Oh yeah, and I chuckled Faunus has one of those. I forgot, well, mine is what you saw pure fire. Neat, I chuckled. Neat indeed, and I chuckled. Well, as we can see, I contributed to the team. Now all we need is a water spirit, Faunus said with his ever-present smile. He was starting to creep me out, unlike Chesire. Faunus had no emotion behind the smile he showed. I know one, she is one hell of a hell of a, Anai said, scratching his head in a way that denoted he was trying to remember. Oh yeah, she's one hell of a sea serpent, she will want to join. Oh, her axis chuckled, Leona is definitely a good pick, she is without doubt unmatched in the water where she reigns supreme, but she will not come with us that easily. Nah, don't worry, 
I'll take care of recruiting her, and I said, still on my shoulders. It was both annoying and oddly comforting to have a small weasel there. Oh, this will be very entertaining, Faunus laughed. And I couldn't help but wonder, was I missing something? Am I missing something? I asked, getting tired of the bit of everyone here having fluent conversations while I stayed out of the loop. Oh, yeah, well you see Leona has but one rule. If you want her help, you have to beat her, so... And I he'll have to fight her, Axis chuckled. Oh, well, then Faunus was right, this was going to be very entertaining. Vardu POV being a human for long periods of time was confusing. It was utterly disgusting how human bodies worked especially the bathroom part. I will never be the same chaotic spirit after that mess, and the problems didn't end there oh no. They just kept growing. Like eating. It was such a bother having to eat three or more times a day. It was messy, disgusting, and it would inevitably send me back to problem one the bathroom. Everything about being a human was disgusting. I just couldn't wait for Akira to come back, so that I could go back to binge watch human tragedies on his head. I miss not having to eat, comma, not having to walk, and no having to use the bathroom. My ever-growing hate for humanity has grown even more after this. I growled as I once again made my way to my new nemesis, the bathroom. The bathrooms all over the world sure rue the day they messed with me. Chaos personified. It was second on my list after destroying Rava. And I guided us to the Sea of Lost Souls. Where he for some reason started to break dance until again for some reason Leona appeared. I had so many questions, and frankly, I wanted no answers. Leona, looking good. And I winked at the massive water spirit dot. Why have you come Anai, Leona said or demanded it was hard to know for certain with her size and lack of facial expressions. If you don't have a good reason I will stop the flow of blood in your body. Ah, she's so kinky, isn't she? Anai smiled, slumping his head and back against me. Honey, you know I'm all about for some fun, but now is not the time. That was a one-time thing. Leona shouted, and the water started to violently shake around her. But I guess if you really want we can spice things up with the human. Wait what hell no. First of all no. Second no. And third, how did this I said pointing between the massive water serpent and the little weasel. Work sexually speaking. I am a selfless lover, and I replied. Honey, the human said no. I tried, but what can you do about it? Why have you come here and I, Leona breathed out in annoyance. Come. I have yet to, we'll get there in a while, as to why I am here. Well, this human is my boss, my brother, the father I never had, and the kid I never wanted, and he can offer us an escape from this place, and I replied. I what? I muttered. Oh, this is fun, Faunus chuckled. I agree, Axis nodded, wiping tears off his furry face. Is that true? Leona asked and I nodded, very well what are the conditions? Well like these three you would work for me following my orders, besides not much, I answered. I will accept if one of you can entertain in combat, Leona said after a few seconds of silence. Well, let's give this fine lady what she wants, and I said, cracking every single bone on his body as he made his way to Leona. I will be back in a few. Kids, mommy and daddy are going to play, so stay put. Is it me, or did that sound oddly sexual? I asked my group. It was not you, Faunus laughed. Yep, Axis nodded. Good, just wanted to make sure I wasn't going crazy on the spirit realm. I sighed as I waited for the battle to break inches Yulaza POV day by day. The voices in my head would get stronger and stronger, asking me to look for answers to recover what is lost. But if I did, I felt I would lose something I had recently gained. I think you should go and find some answers, Mother said with a warm smile. Maybe go to the valley and ask the spirits to answer you. I don't think I need to, it's just a dream, I sighed. Yulaza, you will never lose us. I know you feel like you will if you start looking for answers, but know that I will forever love you, Mom said, hugging me tightly. All right, I'll give it a thought, I sighed. Akira POV the battle lasted around eight hours, and ended in a draw with both spirits being extremely tired. I had to admit, seeing them fight was a treat, like a 5D movie or something. Anai was a terrifying foe in battle, and so was Leona. They both showed immense battle sense, and an immeasurably high stamina. Anai alone could probably level the entire Fire Nation without any problems, and so could the rest of my associates. Fine I will come with you, but you will have to prove you are worthy of leading me once we are out of here. Without your bending, I would squish you like a bug, Leona chuckled. So now what? Now, we dance. Anai said back to his weasel from dancing tango around us. And I couldn't help but wonder we're all fire spirits insane. A dance maybe fall later, Faunus laughed, for now. I think is our boss turn to get us put here, he pointed out. Indeed it is. I nodded. Very well then, proceed, Axis nodded eagerly. Give me a moment, I need to contact Vatu. 
I chuckled, forcing myself into a meditation state to talk with Vardu. Die bathroom. Die. Was Vardu fighting with a toilet? You messed with the wrong entity. Now suffer the consequences for thy crimes. And burn. Vardu. I called out. Akira. Please tell you already I hate being a human. Vardu shouted. Were you fighting a toilet? I could help myself. I had to know. Yes. From now on they are my second nemesis. Vardu answered without skipping a beat. Now are you ready or not? Yes. I have them with me now what? I chuckled. They must enter your spirit, so that when you come back you have them with you Vardu stated. Now, hurry up. He says that you all have to get inside my spirit. I told the spirits around me, who simply share a look among them. And with a nod one by one entered my spiritual core. The feeling was not like the one I had experienced with Vatu. This was more along the lines of feeling some extra weight all of the sudden. Now what? I heard Axis ask from within my mind. Now, I go back. I chuckled, forcing my spirit and the extra weight my associates brought back into my body. I opened my eyes back into the physical world, and I found myself inside a utterly destroyed bathroom. I'm going to assume this was your doing, Vatu. I chuckled. I knew he had some problems with the toilet from our last conversation, but this was stupid. The toilet was melted down to a white-looking glob, and the rest was broken beyond repair. You assume correctly, Vatu stated proudly. Greeting Lord of Chaos, Fauna said in an oddly respectful tone. Hey boss within the boss. Anai chuckled. So, when do we get our bodies? This is too crowded for my linking, Axis pointed out. Soon Vatu stated with a tone of finality. Four spirits, four bodies. One would think now that I had the spirits in the entire prison under my control. Thanks to Vatu who took control of it, the rest was easy. But no, it was like shopping with a bunch of sorority girls that body won't do. And no, I don't like that one, or my personal favorite that body is past the expiration date. We've been over this guys you must pick a body I groaned as I pointed to prisoner number 96, a serial killer with a normal complexion. MM I don't know mate. I don't think he's the ride I want for the rest of my life, he seems like a sport model. But I'm 4x4 all terrain, and I stated. Not classy enough was all Fauna said. I will not be in a body that has a penis, Leona stated. No, and that was Axis. We've been at this for hours I swear to all the primordials I will kill you all. If you don't pick a fucking human. Vatu was near the point of breaking, and I could relate. Well my dear fellow, not all of us has the chance of getting the model of the century. Like you Faunus remarked with a smile. Before Vatu or I could reply, I heard Anai pulling me oh 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 that one. Anai pointed out to a small guy in a corner of one of the cells, taking the notes the guards had given me. I read about the guy, in Jesus. The guy was responsible for wiping a village out in the outskirts of the Fire Nation just for fun. Hey, I said walking to the guy, breaking him out of the cell. For a second he smiled, and then immediately he tried to kill me with a knife he pulled out of nowhere. But unfortunately for him, I had expected something like that to happen. So I kicked his hand to the side making him drop his knife, and using water bending, I froze him before he had the time to use fire bending. I was going to be polite and offer you a last meal, but fuck you. Now subdue his spirit to the point you break it, shatter his sense of self beyond repair, and let me do the rest. Vatu informed me being very eager to get rid of one of his unwanted roommates. Taking a deep breath I did as I was told and using energy bending to destroy his spirit at first it was hard. But the more I pushed the more I could feel his sense of sense disappearing was this wrong. Most absolutely. Did I care? No. There was a reason I picked the worst prison in the world. These inmates were like Ozai or worse. Done. I informed Vatu as the guy stopped struggling, his body going limp. Got it Vatu said, and seconds later I felt a chunk of energy move from me to the guy. Done well. This is comfy, and I said before he started to smort inside the prison of ice I had made for the original owner of the body, meaning he had fallen asleep. Three more to go. Vatu pressed. Mother of Faces POV the strings of fate were being moved, and one way or another destiny would be fulfilled. But at what cost? I do not think this is a wise choice. I stated, what was my primordial sister thinking? I did not ask you if you thought it was a good idea my sister stated. I am merely informing you how my plans are proceeding. Chaos and order have been separated for too long. And I intend to fix that. What will you do when the anomaly we call Akira finds out you've been pulling the strings on his life I asked. How do you think he will react when he finds out? That it was you who has made him feel empty. That it was you who made him broke with his mate. Do you really think he will follow along your plans? His compliance is not a factor, she replied. You speak of him. As if he had the power to oppose a primordial he is but a mere avatar. His power and reach are limited. So I don't understand your worry little sister. 
I might be younger, but I see what you don't we still don't know who or what created him in the first place. You are playing with something you do not fully understand I stated. Should we be afraid of a random entity who made a quite defective human? My sister inquired tilting her head to the side. It is clear we are superior. We fixed him, once again you failed to see the bigger picture. I sighed, yes, he was defective. But he was the result of something we can't accomplish alone to create a human. We would need the involvement of all of us. And yet this unknown entity yet to be discovered created him with faults and all. It is something we have not accomplished yet, Mayhips. You raise a good point. But as we have seen so far this unknown entity cares not for his creation. We have all played a role in his life for the better or for the worse. And yet the entity is yet to appear. So I'll take my chances, my sister stated with a tone of finality. It's out of my hands. I reminded her, if this plan of yours comes to bite you back I will not stand by you. As you wish, with that, my sister was gone, leaving nothing but a trail of dust. And a growing concern on my part, if Akira and Vata discovered they were being manipulated, things would go downhill. I am sorry for disturbing you my lady, but the fire girl is here to see you. My loyal companion said pointing his nose to the distance, and I could feel it Azala was there, and she was remembering how odd. But this could prove to be in my favor to stop my sister from invoking things we did not fully comprehend. I didn't want to meddle too much with Akira until I knew for certain who created him and why. Bring her in? It took me some time, but I managed to find a body for each spirit, which meant I was ready to start with the next stage of my plan, the revolution. With each spirit representing an element, it would be as if the collective support of the elemental countries worked together to bring Ozai down. When in reality it was me, shouting to the world, the Order of Chaos had been formed I'll work on that title. So, who gets to kill the Opai? Axis asked. Walking like a toddler that had just recently learned to walk, it was funny seeing him trip over and over again on his new body. This will take time to get used to, he frowned. This is remarkably hard, Faunus laughed, struggling like Axis, but taking it like everything so far, with a big and wide smile. But nonetheless I shall prevail. This can't be harder than playing the piano. There are pianos in this world, I suppose. I find it rather easy. And I commented being the only one that had taken to his new body like a fish in the water. Good for you, Leona growled, face down on the floor. I guess being the only one without legs before this really affected her. I hate this biped body. It's easy. Look, left, right, left, right, and then we switch it up, right, left. Anai chuckled as he broke into a dance around the fallen Leona. I will learn how to use my legs just to strangle you. Leona growled, annoyed at Anai's antics. Varta didn't have any problems with my body I chuckled. Well, he did have a few with the bathroom. My nemesis, the what? My new companions asked. God please tell me I don't have to teach them how to use the bathroom. I had to teach them how to use the bathroom, and I am forever scarred by the horrors I saw inside that small room. I will never be able to erase that awful memory from my head. I need another men in black situation, Vata demanded. Another? What do you mean? I chuckled. I, I don't know why did I say another. Vata muttered. I let's forget about it. I sighed, but deep down I felt like something was missing, or hiding beneath a mist of misdirection. Why do humans produce such a disgusting amount of waste? Leona was not happy with her body at all. We need to eat, and for some reason our useless bodies can process all the material we give them, which turns into a disgusting thing that comes out of us. I found it fun. And I laughed, it makes the human body thing feel real. So hell yeah. Hum, I suppose it's only natural for humans or mortals of this realm to create waste, though I had expected them to evolve past that, Fauna smiled, but is unimportant. I will master the ways of humanity as a day or two. What about you Axis? I turned to the air spirit, who simply shrugged. It's just something our bodies do. I don't have to like it, or hate it, besides I already knew about humans are their needs. So I expected as much, Axis sighed, as for them, he pointed to the other spirits. They never had much contact with humans, at least not to the point of living with them. So their knowledge is very basic at much basic for now, Faunus remarked. Wait a minute this body is full of blood, Leona smiled, and immediately stood up from the floor. I can just bend my blood to move. That works, but I don't recommend it. I chuckled, and at that she glared at me, for a second I wondered why, and then I realized she was trying to bend my blood. Any reason why you are trying to bend my blood? I asked, narrowing my eyes at her. Hum, my blood bending doesn't work on you well. It doesn't matter Leona smiled, you promised to fight for the right to lead me, so fight me. Oh right, I had forgotten all about that, sure, I nodded. Mother of faces POV Azala or rather now, Yulaza stood in front of me, asking for help, she was starting to remember, but without spiritual help. Their memories were a haze, a chain of random dreams, showing her a lot, and at the same time nothing. Oh, mother of faces, Yulaza kneeled, please help me, I can help you, but are you sure you want that? I asked her, if I help you you will lose what you have right now, 
I, I won't lose my family, Yulaza stated. I know that, perhaps. I hummed, but you would lose a lot. The help you are asking for is almost toxic for you. If you can give it to me I accept, Yulaza said with determination, determination she didn't know where it came from. I feel I need to know it's the pull is too strong. Perhaps it was time to move the pieces of the board out of the plan. A man brought you here, to offer you a life you never had the chance to enjoy I said, showing her the image of Akira dropping her on the village. At the time, you were full of hate, and jealousy. But I cleaned that away. I gave you the fresh start he asked for you. He is Akira right? Yulaza muttered seeing the image of the man dropping her past self. Did he love me? In a way. I nodded. Then why did he abandon me here, instead of staying with me? Yulaza asked, and I couldn't help but wonder, was that Asla talking or? He is strong, probably the strongest human that has ever walked on the earth, but even someone with such power can fight what he can't see. I replied, life put you two away. And you could say I finished life's work, isn't that what relationships are all about? Yulaza chuckled, crying, fighting together against what life throws your way. Oh dear ignorant child, I chuckled, not life, but life, the primordial of the living, life is in spirit older than most, and with a personal agenda at hands, one that didn't involve him loving you, so he didn't abandon me I mean not completely. Yulaza said with a little bit of hope, look at me, talking about love and the guy I don't even fully remember, what a joke, no, he didn't abandon you completely, but he had no choice. I answered, life can control many aspects of the living, and among them is the mind he resisted for long, even when his feelings for you were never certain, he resisted. But life knows how to break a mind, and Akira lost the battle, one he wasn't even aware it was happening. I knew my sister very well. I knew she fed him on his fears, about the fact he would never grow old, and she would wither down and die with time. And when that didn't work, she showed him how much of a threat was her to his friends, life was sometimes torture, his death sometimes was relief. I don't think I like life telling me how to live my life, Yulaza stated. I know how stupid that sounds. If I give you back what I took you must know, he doesn't remember you. I took away his memories of this place. But life took away your presence on his mind, for what Akira matters you don't exist, I informed her. I will make him remember. I managed to remember a bit why can't he? Yulaza stated. Very well. I nodded, wondering what my sister would do now that Azula was coming back to her chessboard. With my Order of Chaotic Knights ready name still pending, I started to move with the next stage of my plans, which entitled I had to ensure the other nations came together to destroy the Fire Nation as a union, and two, I had to avoid letting others know the Avatar or rather an Avatar had helped them, otherwise the cycle of uselessness would just go on and on. Of course this was easier said than done. While my new companions were very strong, they lacked the physical coordination to match their power, which would inevitably put them in tough situations, reason why I had ordered them well almost all of them to train their new bodies, and regroup with me on a later date. But Nai was the exception to that order, with the fact he had taken to his new body like a duck to a lake, so where are we going boss? And I inquired, to the water nation, and please do not use fire bending they will jump at you if you do. I answered, the last thing I wanted was to bring unwanted attention to my group so early on the plan. Fine, and I pouted. And I had to remind myself he was literally thousands of years older than me, and yet he acts like a six-year-old. Not all spirits are as awesome as I am, Varta declared taking the opportunity to jerk his own ego. Sure you are, I inwardly chuckled. I feel that response is not sincere, but I will take it. I could almost feel Vatu narrowing his eyes at me. So and I chuckled breaking my inner conversation. How are we going to go to the water tribe? If I recall correctly humans are not fast travelers. That is true. I nodded. But I have my own transportation medium. I smiled as I proceeded to summon Josiah. Who I assumed had already delivered Sakura and her family. Who is calling the all adorable. Josiah said popping into existence in a confetti explosion. Hi Akira and hi. The ever present smile of Cheshire disappeared. As he looked at Anai for a long moment. Before he turned to me. Akira, can I talk to you for a minute? Sure. I nodded, leaving an eye behind to wait. Do you have any idea who you brought to the human world? Cheshire asks, his voice carrying more seriousness that he should be allowed. Anai, a fire spirit with too much energy for his own good. I answered, wondering where this was going after all. I have never seen this crazy cat so serious. He is what we call in the spiritual world a demon, Cheshire stated. He is one of the four that brought the first great spiritual war. And I the Unchained he is the reason the Fire Peninsula is nothing but molten rock his fight against Faunus. The cannibal brought catastrophic changes to the spirit world oh well. Ain't this an uncomfortable moment? I see. I hummed trying to think. How to break the fact I had probably brought all of those so-called demons. While the demons of the spirit realm are far from the most powerful spirits in existence. 
like Vatu or Rava or the Primordials, they are very dangerous Josiah continued, they were all locked in a prison of sorts inside the spirit world Axis the Wrathful, Formus the Cannibal, Leona the Lustful, and are neither Fireborn or the Unchained titles vary depending on the times. Well I guess this is the moment where I tell you I brought them all. I smiled. You what? Cheshire asked, after a long second of silence. You what? Don't worry. I have everything under control. If they misbehave I will send them back to the spirit world. Vatu, and I have the keys to their freedom or destruction. I placated the enraged cat. But I'll be honest I did not expect them to have such fame I mean. They seem a bit quirky. But not all that scary except for Faunus. He gives me the creeps. With that emotionless smile he always wears fine Chisaya's side. If Vatu is with you on stopping them they can't do much. Hell yeah they can't. Vatu agreed and I couldn't help but notice he was happier than usual. And before you ask, I am happier than usual. You made me feel grateful to not have a body like yours. Humans are disgusting creatures I find their needs utterly ugh I guess that explains why he is less edgy. Vatu says he is in, as a POV it was different to be me. After not being me for a while, I felt new. But old, the same but different, at least something was clear my goals were different. I didn't want to be the Fire Lord any longer, nor I wanted to obey the idiot of a father I had. I wasn't even sure I wanted to be with Akira right now. I needed to be sure of our love. My love for him wasn't an emotional drug that I attached to, because no one before him showed me what it felt like to be loved and not feared. No, my goal was very clear now, and it was to stop life from messing with our lives, primordial or not. I wasn't going to let someone dictate my life, not any longer. Besides, the mother of faces had been very clear, primordials can't interfere as much, being the reason why life had been manipulating Akira for years without him knowing. Her control over Akira was subtle but strong, and one that I was going to shatter, showing life, that no matter how powerful you think you are, no one messes with Asla and gets out unscathed. This should be interesting. I chuckled as my eyes rested on the village far away where I had been living for the last months, wondering if I would be able to keep the promise I made to Kii. What a weakling I have become. I smiled, but I suppose some weaknesses are worth having. It took Josiah two weeks to take us to the Water Tribe, reluctantly might I add. He was unsure the spirits I had brought were going to keep their word, but in the end accepted knowing Vata would support me if they stepped out of place. Hi, you. I waved at the Water Princess who seemed to be angry at me, as she walked or rather stomped her way at me from the gates of the city to my ride, Josiah. Is there something I should know or? I was met with a slap. Oh, that got a hurt, and I chuckled, is she your mate? If so good, I also like them feisty, he added with a suggestive move of his eyebrows. What were you thinking? You hissed, you went and attacked the Fire Lord didn't kill him, and revealed your real identity with your connection to us. And to top that you told him you killed his daughter, the one you dated. Do you have any idea what my father will do to you? His what? Oz I had a daughter, and I dated her. I I remember attacking him, but I don't remember telling him from where I was and what was that about me dating his what? Don't play dumb with me. I you stopped for a second, looking at my face, her expression turning from angry to concerned. Azala, the fire princess I have no idea who you are talking about. I shrugged, was she trying to troll me me dating? I haven't dated anyone in the Avatar universe. Hum, and I approached me, narrowing his eyes at me into a thin line. I smell amnesia, or Quesadilla's one of the two. Probably Quesadilla's. Did you hit your head or something? You inquired with concern. What's that all about him hitting his head? Sakura inquired, walking towards me. He doesn't remember Azala or dating her or killing her. You answer for me Azala this Azala that. Who the fuck was Azala talk about getting over a breakup quickly? Sakura mused with a worried look. But it is worrying. We will have to deal with this in another location you sighed. Remember dad wants to arrest Akira for questioning. Sakura nodded at that. I, I think I, why can't I remember where I heard that name? Vada growled. Halt, you are under arrest. On the grounds of treason, a soldier shouted, running out of the gates of the city towards me with a squadron behind him. But I simply couldn't move that name. That kindled nothing within me. Had me on a trance feeling a sense of deja vu that made no sense. Azala I was so out of focus that I failed to notice you. Was trying to drag me away from the soldiers. Alright. It seems the boss is having a crisis. And I chuckled jumping in front of me. Now, if anyone here wants to touch boss. They will have to go through me. I said halt. A soldier shouted throwing an icicle at me. One that melted before it even arrived at its target courtesy of an eye. I think you overglorified goldfish didn't understand me if anyone moves even an inch to touch the boss I will by this point fire was raging around him in massive quantities. Kill you all, no hard feelings, but it's my job. No killing, you shouted. Sorry doll, but you ain't my boss and I chuckled, but feel free to try and stop me. 
I won't bite you, and I don't kill them. I managed to articulate wondering who the fuck was Azala to have such a strong impact in me. Azala POV the mother of faces had been very cryptic about what life had planned for Akira, except for the fact chaos and order would soon reunite. Now, going off that, I could only assume two things, based on my very recent knowledge about the fact there are two avatars in the world, and that their elemental powers come from spirits. I had but one guess. If Akira represented chaos, then unrepresented order, meaning life wanted them together somehow to restore the balance of things. The mother of faces said, she wants to bring the spiritual order back to how it was whatever that is, and An and Akira are essential for that to happen. Not on my watch, I inwardly chuckled, wondering how bad would life feel. After her plans were utterly destroyed by a human, is not often a human fucks with life, like Akira would say. But to fuck with life, I had to find Akira first, and help him remember me, which once again according to the mother of faces, would set on a chain effect freeing him of her control. Knowing Akira, he would probably go right back to the Northern Water Tribe, his reasons. Various, but unimportant, this gives a whole new meaning of life is hard. I chuckled, wondering what was next, after freeing Akira of her grasp was within her power to kill or hurt a primordial. If not then what? I suppose one problem at a time. Zuko POV Azala was dead. And I had to admit I was confused. A part of me was angry and demanded that I track Akira down to deliver justice. But another part of me couldn't help but consider Akira a very possible fat comma. What if he killed her in an act of self-defense Azala was not easy to handle when mad? It mattered not. Not now at least with Azala dead. My uncle gone and father wounded. I was unsure what to do. Stay here and fight for my father or go out. Help the Avatar and fight for my nation. Was me staying here wise choice? Was obeying my father honorable? I think I finally understand what you wanted to show me uncle I sighed. All this bloodshed, all for a throne. One that drove Azala madness. And it did with my father. I was such a fool, you generally are. My snorted, as she entered my room. So, why are you a fool, at this specific moment? I, I was unsure if telling her I was planning or thinking on leaving was the best. You are leaving my stated, with a cold expression. How did she get that so fast? With just a look. I can see it in your eyes and tell me. Did you plan on telling me? I haven't decided anything yet. I answered, I don't know if I should leave or stay. The answer is simple. I know it, but it's hard to accept it. That's usually the thing with life-changing choices. My shrugged. I lost consciousness, and I had no idea why. One moment I was talking with you, then I heard that name that had no meaning to me and, like magic I was clutching to my head, and now I was lost in my mindscape. I wonder why the inside of my mind is so white. I don't think it's magic Vatu commented, appearing inside my mindscape with a frown. Oh, hello Vatu. I sighed, not expecting the spirit to pop into my mind, literally. This is odd, very odd, and I don't like it, Vatu stated, his tone carrying more weight than usual. What? I asked with concern, the fact I lost consciousness after hearing a name that I thought had no meaning to me, or the fact that everyone else seems to remember something we don't. I added, I told you before humans don't forget things, memories last forever, and before you come and say some humans do forget things. They don't, it's simply that sometimes the memories are not as easy to access as they used to be, and they can't see them. But even then the memory is there. But that's not the case with you Vardu side. I can't find a large portion of data in your brain. Is as if something or someone had ripped a chunk of information from your brain. So Azala was really a thing. That doesn't sound good. It doesn't Vardu growled. The worst part of this is that whoever messed with your mind messed with mine. I tried to restore your memory with mine. But it was the same deal. And you spirits never forget right? I asked. I remember the day I came into existence Vatu scoffed, forgetting something is an impossibility besides, missing data should not be the case, if we didn't remember the memory at best should be a blurry. Not like this not missing, any idea how to fix it. I asked, wondering who did this to us I mean, one thing was to affect me, but to affect Vatu, that was an entirely different matter, whoever did this was strong, none at the moment, but now that I'm aware someone has been messing with our heads, they won't be able to do so again, Vata declared, burning with determination. I think we can rule humans out of the who did this I chuckled. There is no human capable of such feat anyway. That much is true, Vatu nodded, which only leaves spirits as our suspects. And considering my ranking among them, the list is not that vast, do you think? It was one of those turtles you know the ones you call the ancient ones. I asked, and Vata shook his head. 
No, they never interfere. Barter stated, the primordials on the other hand, would fuck our minds if it fit their plans. Can we do anything against them? The primordials sounded like forces we could not hope to match, which put us in a difficult situation. I mean how do you deal with the equivalent of a god in this world? Well, I know I can't alone at least, Vardis sighed, his voice almost hurting for admitting the fact he couldn't face them alone. But together we might stand a chance if we don't we can always befriend one of them, and ask them for help, depending on who fucked with us. We might have a chance to make alliances with others. So now the name of the game is finding who did this. Alright? I chuckled. Now can you wake me up? Floating inside my mind is as boring as it sounds. You are floating in my room. Which happens to be your mind and not insult my living arrangements toilet user. Varta growled, showing I had touched a nerve with that comment. Sorry. I was not sure if this deserved an apology or not. But when unsure just say sorry. And about waking you up I can't. Your mind is trying to heal itself. So you are stuck here while my room recovers. So, wanna watch some movies? Vatu offered. I sure. I nodded. You POV had I done this. One moment Akira was standing in front of me. The next he was on the ground unconscious. Had I pushed him to that state? How is the boss? A neither weird fire bender Akira had brought with him asked. He is fine, unconscious, but fine, I answered. I don't understand he never gets down I always saw him so invincible, Sakura muttered. I suppose this is proof that he is human I chuckled, begging the spirits to help him. As a POV I was but few days away from my destination, and I had to admit, I had a tingly feeling inside my bones. And it wasn't so much the fact I was meeting with Akira once again. No, it was the fact I was messing with life and her plans. Showing the world that even primordial beings can't mess with me. I wonder what will Akira do once he finds out. I giggled in anticipation, wondering who he'd declare war to life, or would he outright try to kill the embodiment of life. I suppose any option leading to life's demise is an acceptable option, and as long as I get it, participate I am good either way. I'm good as long as I get to enjoy my revenge. The first firebender to burn life itself I like that. I smirked pleased at the thought. Akira POV when Vatu offered me to watch a movie I did not expect him to pop a movie theater into existence inside my mind Arca his room. The place even had popcorn and sodas, literally a fucking complete and functional movie theater. I personally recommend the caramel popcorn, is very good on this theater Vatu said with a bag of said popcorn. And the only thing I could wonder was what did he mean by this theater. Time within the mind was a rather intricate thing, hours seemed like seconds, seconds seemed like hours and short nothing made sense. But I suppose not everything is bad. My mind apparently has arcades, movie theaters, and many bookstores. You are about to woke up, Vata commented, stopping the Matrix marathon he was forcing me to watch. Be careful. We don't know who did this to us, so we must be alert at all times. I fixed your fragile human mind, so that you don't lose consciousness every time you hear that name. Got it? I nodded. And if you want, I'm opening a new arcade next week. So hit yourself and have some fun, Vita smirked. Now Began, this is private property after all. Haha. <laughs> I laughed don't trash the place too much. I need it, as I said my goodbyes. I felt something pulling me out of my mind. Like a tug to something I couldn't point out directly. But I was sure was within me. Akira. With my eyes closed I felt the concerned tone Sakura was carrying within her voice. I'm up, I muttered. Oh thank the spirits, you breathed out, hugging the crap out of me. I blinked away the lingering haze of my sleep away. Groggily sitting up, it felt like I had slept for days. How long was I out? Three days, and I chuckled, almost like a princess. I almost kissed you twice. But these two didn't let me. He pointed to you and Sakura. Thank God you didn't let him. I chuckled. You're lost, I'm a great kisser. And I said, feigning to be hurt by words. I'm sure you are. I chuckled. So are you okay now? You inquired, a worried frown coming to life on her face. Yes, I nodded. Well, Kindervado helped me notice the problem, apparently. I have a chunk of my memory missing, and that part you're missing is your time with Azala Sakura pointed out. The question is who did this? I doubt you got this condition naturally, and considering amnesia doesn't affect a singular topic, it almost seems like an attack. It was an attack, I confirmed. Vatu and I are operating under the assumption it was one of the primordials, as they are the only ones capable of doing such thing without Vatu noticing right away. You pissed a primordial mate. And I laughed, and here I thought things were going to get boring with you. Glad to exceed your expectations. I chuckled. And can you beat them? Sakura inquired. I don't know. I said unsure. I mean they are supposed to be the strongest beings in creation. So not sure I can. But I'll figure something out. Maybe you can get Moon Girl to help you. And I offered. The primordials are indeed the strongest among us. But they are not unbeatable. If you destroy their realms or mess with them they get weaker. Let's say you threaten to kill half of humanity with something, that would highly affect life and her power. 
But it would boost Kindred on power, you get me? Anai asked. So if I couldn't beat them, I could attack their realms brilliant. I see what you mean and I like it, as a POV the Northern Water Tribe a place I would rather die than to live in. I might not be interested in the stupid war my ancestors started, but a girl has to have some standards, and snow everywhere doesn't fit mine. But then again, I suppose I could be more lenient with the place. I wasn't here for vacation purposes. I was here to retrieve the idiot of an ex I have, so that we could both kill life with fire, lots of it. Hi, honorable guard, I said as I approached a guard in the city with my most innocent face. I am looking for a friend of mine. The guard looked at me and smiled, gullible idiot. Sure, do you have his name? I said he was my friend. What kind of idiot doesn't know the name of his own friends? Akira, as I said that the guard tensed up and moved to apprehend me. Big mistake, that earned him a broken arm. I will assume that was an ill-advised attempt to knock me out. And I will also assume you know about Akira. So I'll be brief, tell me where he is. Or I will gouge your eyes with the icicles forming on the wall behind you. Your choice. It took the guard a few seconds to register my threat, before he willingly opened up about the information I required, apparently. Akira was now deemed a traitor for the fact he dated me. A bit of harsh punishment if you ask, if anything dating me proved he had superior taste when it came to women. Thanks. I smiled at the guard, knocking him out with a kick to his throat. So you are a fugitive now. I always knew I would end up dating a bad boy. What I didn't know was that I would be the one to make him a bad boy. I giggled. I wonder how Zuzu is taking my death a very stupid question. He is probably dancing on my grave. Stop right there young lady. A man demanded. He was old. Almost like my uncle. Probably more I can't never tell when they reach a certain age. While I would love to humor you. I have things to do. And none of them is wasting my time with you. I winked at the old man. Analyzing the threat in front of me. His posture. The air he gave there was no doubt he was a bender. Even now the position of his feet was supporting a defensive stand against any attack. What is your name young lady? The old man asked with a frown, showing he was not about to let me go. It's a bit rude to ask that when I don't even know who you are. I pointed out. My name is Paku. And you nameless lady, are under arrest Paku stated. That's if you manage to keep up, old man. I smirked. I stared at the old man in contemplation, if my intel was correct. He was the greatest waterbender this side of the world had, in considering where I was. I had to be careful he had the terrain. The area where we were was wide enough for the two of us to fight, but not wide enough to avoid getting some unwanted attention. If I limited myself to hand-to-hand -hand combat, I would inevitably be captured, but would have a higher chance to escape later on. On the other hand, if I went all out and somehow managed to lose, my chances of escaping would be close to none. That stance, you are a firebender are you? His face was scrunched up in anger, so much for option A. What a perceptive old man. I chuckled, keeping my eyes fixed on his legs. The best body parts to observe for giveaways to tell when a waterbender was about to attack. Very well. Haku sighed, and with a swift move of his hand, an ice pillar formed beneath me. I jumped right on time using the pillar as a platform, while taking the opportunity to throw a few short but precise attacks at him. The easiest way to win a battle against a waterbender is to disturb their flow. No flow, no dangerous attacks. Normally this would be easy. But fighting a Grand Master and disrupting their flow, can be hard or in some cases impossible, blue fire. You are Azala, Paki commented, calmly walking towards me. What can I say, I'm a girl and I like matching things. Like my name and the color of my fire. I smiled, buying time as I tried to find a plausible escape route. Fighting this old man would take too much time. And if I made even one mistake would lead to imprisonment. So the best path for me right now was to escape and continue with my mission. But knowing this man and my reputation, the chances of that happening on its own were slim so plan B. It was dodging his attacks while keeping his attention on me and that way moving the battle unknowingly to a civilian populated area. But not any civilian area, one with a lot of stakes. Looking for an escape, Paku said, narrowing his eyes at me. In your file it says you are not one to run from a challenge. He was trying to weaponize my pride. Clever. But even back then it wouldn't have worked. Oh well, you know how trendy we girls are. I rolled my eyes at him, dodging his attacks one after the other. One day I like this. The other I like that. Who knows maybe I will not find you annoying in a week. Cross your fingers. Your attempt at humor is depressing. Paki stated, creating a water whip on his right hand. I will end this sad show now, he added. Bringing his arm down with thunderous strength. Adorable. I mocked burning his attack away into a steamy explosion, but inefficient, you can't win by simply dodging, Haku stated. I know, normally that would be the case, but considering how old you are, I think there is a chance you will die while I dodge one of your attacks. I smirked pointing to my watch, the clock is ticking, I have what you lack time, hilarious, Haku said, no humor behind his tone, but you will not escape, nor outlive me on this battle.
It seems old age helps in certain aspects. But no matter how wise and strong an old man is, it's still an old man. I laugh pointing to my right. Does this place look familiar? What are you? Packer's eyes went wide, and I smiled. Ah, is this the moment you find out you are senile? I smirked, now allow me to present you with the options you have at hand, you can one let me go or two, see how every little kid in the school district burns. While we fight you could probably stop my fire, but how good are you at stopping lightnings? Now all he had to do was take the bait, and let me go, you are as crazy as they say. Paku snarled, leave, and never come back. I knew we would see eye to eye, I winked at him, bye, and with that I ran away, disappearing inside the busy streets behind the school district, leaving a very angry and disturbed old man behind. Now back to my real mission, finding Akira, helping him recover his memories and then killing life. No, that doesn't sound right. Oh well, one step at a time, one step at a time. Paku POV hesitation was something Azula didn't have, at least according to Iro. His description of her was that of a monster, ruthless, uncaring, unforgiving a product of her father. And yet I saw her hesitate I saw emotion behind her eyes. And it wasn't what I expected. When she threatened to kill the kids in the school district just to escape. I felt her words had no real weight behind them, she was simply baiting me, and I happily took the bait, betting on the fact Iroh had been wrong, I decided to let her go, maybe she was on her own path of redemption, one that was already changing her, from a remorseless killer to a human. I was unsure what would have happened if I didn't allow her to escape, but a part of me was sure she would have find another way to get a way out, not involving civilians. I wonder if Akira has something to do with her being so different, I wondered out loud, I suppose time will tell. How much Akira and her had changed, and if my assessment was correct or not, she was right though. I chuckled, I am getting too old for this. If only Akira had stayed, he would have made the perfect replacement for my role in the tribe. God knows I need to retire. After my troubling loss of consciousness, and Vata helping me out, I decided to take a walk. I felt like I needed to clear my head, shit was getting complicated, and frankly, I just needed to breathe, out of the overprotective reach of my two friends. As I walked through the unforgiving ice-cold tundra, I tried to figure out who and why would one of the primordials target me. It seemed a bit out of the norm, why would an immortal being bother to manipulate me? The only reason I could think of was that whoever was pulling the strings to erase my memory, wanted something only I could provide. Now the question was what? What did I have to offer that would push one of them to manipulate me this brought another question. While I didn't like the primordials, at least the majority of them, I wouldn't have been against helping them, if the help in question wasn't something like killing myself. Which means whatever the primordial wanted me to do, he knew I would be against it but even then, why erase an ex-girlfriend from my head? With some much knowledge inside my head why specifically he or she decided to erase Azula, was it perhaps that Azula would have been the sole reason for me to not help them it seemed unlikely. But so far I didn't find any other logical conclusion, and while this minor discovery of my condition was a big step, it solved nothing it simply brought upon me more questions. Why would an immortal being be interested in my dating life? I couldn't think of a single logical plausible reason for that to happen. You haven't changed a bit. I heard someone giggle. Her voice coming from a small cave a few meters away from where I was currently sitting. Her melodic voice sounding familiar yet unknown. I am having a rough day week month I'm having a rough month. Now please be kind and fuck off. I sighed. I really didn't want to fight whoever the Northern Water Tribe had sent for me right now I wanted answers. Welcome to the club. The yet to be identified girl snorted. Let me guess, you woke up to find out some memories were missing. And now here you are asking yourself why. Why you? If she didn't have my attention before, she had it now. I jumped to my feet and growled. Get out of the cave, or I will bring the cave down on you. Always so rough, the girl giggled. Slowly walking out of the cave, hello. Once she was completely outside, I studied her for a second, giving her a long scrutinizing look. My name is Azula, your ex pleased to me you. She chuckled. The headache returned like a bullet drilling into my skull. And once again the world around me started to fade as I struggled to keep myself awake. Deep within I could hear Vati yelling at me. But I couldn't make out what he was saying. Only that he sounded alarmed. The girl that had proclaimed herself as Azala ran to me. If I knew this was going to happen, I would have let you know who I was slowly I hate spirits. Azala my ex who I didn't remember said. Her face showing something akin to worry and anger at the same time. Do you need medical attention? She inquired, and I chuckled. Maybe I struggled to respond. Right now my body was once again fighting a full shutdown. I could feel the pain pulsating inside my skull. With no real idea what to do, I felt the girl drag me to the cave she was before I made her come out. Once inside she started to keep me warm with her fire bending. I'm not used to move like this, Azala chuckled humorlessly. I always have a plan, but this, all of this, I have been improvising each and every step, and look where it got me. 
an almost catatonic Akira, and a bunch of Water Nation soldiers chasing me being good is not easy, so care to fill the voids for me. I chuckled, my head on her lap, unable to move beyond really minimal movement. I will assume you are asking how we started dating. Azala smiled, her eyes brows rising up in amusement as I nodded. Yeah, maybe that will help. I chuckled, pain reminding me why I shouldn't laugh. I mean at least I know I have a good standard. I had to admit she was very pretty. Well, I suppose it all started with you bumping into me. Azala started. That little incident lead to us having a duel. Where for the first time in my life, I learned how it felt to be overpowered. How did me bumping into you lead to us fighting? I asked, a small smile forming in my face. Well, I asked you to kneel and kiss my feet, and you didn't oblige, Azala sighed, and I chuckled. Too kinky for our first meeting, don't you think? I snorted. Ha ha, maybe Azala nodded. After my defeat, I developed a crush, no. I think the term in an obsession with you, and much to my pleasant surprise, you accepted my feelings. I see, I wondered what lead to a breakup. Everything was going great, but you were keeping a secret from me, and the day you decided to tell me, I reacted less than good. And that made you take me to a place where they deleted my sense of self, giving me a chance to have my mother and a normal father, Azala said, her voice carrying more weight now. At first I thought it was you who decided to destroy everything I was, but that weird spirit enlightened me otherwise. What? I asked. You were being manipulated to destroy me, Azala muttered. By who? I asked once again. By life, Azala answered with a grim look. I don't know how many hours I spent talking with Azala, my ex-girlfriend who was thanks to outside forces virtually a stranger to me, and yet I didn't feel she was lying. In fact, it was somewhat fun to hear her talk about our time together, however brief that was. Little by little as her stories grew deeper in meaning I started to notice my headache was slowly going away, and what once crippled me was not at much an annoyance. For what is worth sorry for erasing your memories, I apologized. I needed that reset. Thanks to that I was able to see things from another perspective I was able to understand things that once were foreign to me Azala smiled. I learned what it meant to love a sibling, and what it was to be loved by my parents. The old me would laugh at that sentiment, but I'm not the old me anymore am I? She laughed. I wouldn't know, so far I only know this version of you. I chuckled. Funny, Azala rolled her eyes at me. Now from what the mother of faces told me, life will act as soon as she notices I made contact with you, which it could be at any moment really. I sighed, I really don't know what to tell you. I have no idea if I can fight a primordial, I admitted. Sounds about right, Azala replied. I didn't expect you to defeat the metaphysical manifestation of life, so what was your idea? I inquired. Political games could be our answer, Azala smiled. We could convince another primordial to help us. They are bound to be equally matched. That's an idea. But how would we do that? An idea that will not work, a powerful voice commanded. The force it carried was similar to that of the Mother of Faces. I have worked too hard to restore the natural balance of things for you to ruin it. I turned around to see Crowley, my raven, the one that came and went, standing in front of us, chaos and order must reunite. Crowley said no that wasn't Crowley that was life. Our ultimate enemy is a raven, Azala commented, great, a very unique animal, life chuckled, out of all the primordials or any spirit for that matter. I was the first one to feel you. I felt when you were dropped into this world. I didn't manage to feel who made you, but I felt you. And without noticing I grew ever curious. So I studied you your mind was filled with knowledge. Most of it protected by who created you. But the little I managed to extract for your mind was marvelous. From your mind I learned about what I assume were fictional creatures. Lions, tigers, ravens creatures so different to ours. But so systematically similar. I couldn't help but create them life chuckled. Still looking like Crowley. That sounds I couldn't finish what I was trying to say I was so far extremely creeped out. But that curiosity soon turned into realization the day we fixed you. I learned so much more a future was dark, the world would never be how it was supposed to be life laughed, so I acted I pushed you to act it wasn't easy. Your will was like an impenetrable wall, but all walls eventually fall down. You manipulated me since then I asked, anger building up. As someone that is officially crazy I tell you you need some help, Azala smirked. But like me, she was keeping her distance. I suppose, life admitted with a chuckle, and yes, I pulled the strings of your story so far it wasn't easy, I had to wait like a predator for you to lower your absurdly good metal defenses, but no matter how good you were you still were human, and you see humans are at the most vulnerable when in pain, so as you took the tests that my fellow primordials gave you, I stepped aside letting Kindred deal with you, while I whispered into your head go to Vatu, until eventually you thought it was your idea to go to him, this bitch, Vatu growled, startling me for a second, I hadn't had the pleasure of hearing his rants for hours, 
Since I met Remet Azala, what is your end goal? I asked tired of her long monologue. I am getting there, life stated. Aren't you wondering why did I want you to become the Dark Avatar? She asked, and she was right I wanted to know. Yes, I nodded. Well, because you would weaken Vatu, life stated, you were chaotic but also in control bringing Vatu to a more manageable level. You see if I were to reunite Vatu and Rava at that point chaos would simply rule for all eternity. But if I even the odds things would go back to their natural state. And that's why you created Crowley to observe my progress. I narrowed my eyes at her. Yes, but fear not your animal friend does indeed exist when I don't use his body. He is free life replied. I don't understand Ezela hissed. If all you wanted was to weaken the spirit of chaos. Then why did you force him to forget me? Why did you manipulate him to make me forget? Oh that well, you were in my way. Life answered, you see there is nothing more chaotic than love. You can't find love in order, you only find it through chaos. That feeling that drives most insane, to do things they would never do for a complete stranger is pure and absolute chaos. And the more time he spent with you, the stronger Vada became. So I forced the events of your breakup to avoid failure. Did, did this bitch call me Cupid Vada growled? I think she called you a succubus. Or the male equivalent calls apparently you eat love. I inwardly replied, enraging the chaotic spirit even more. Alas none of that worked now life sighed. I can feel your memories building themselves back up. With each headache your mind is truly a masterpiece. Whoever made it was very thorough. If I had to say in a week or two, you will recover what I took from you, and what my sister took, so will you leave us be? I asked. No I will kill you and complete what I started, life chuckled. That's it, I'm burning the bird, Ezra stated, throwing a massive torrent of fire at Crowley, one that I stopped with earth bending. What are you doing? She is controlling my in and out pet, and I refuse to burn him to death. And even if you killed this unique bird it wouldn't have changed anything, life stated, calm like a river, I am everywhere, I cannot be killed, don't mind if we try, I shot back. If you want any semblance of a chance you must fight her in the spirit world and hear her realm she's unstoppable. But in the spirit realm she is just another spirit var to inform me, I am not. Going back with Rava, I have grown accustomed to my life inside your head, and I will kill this agomaniacal bitch if I have to. Vata was right, if I wanted to have a chance to win. I had to fight life out of her realm of control. So without waiting for her to take the initiative, I called Chesaya to create a portal to the spiritual world, and grabbed Azala jumping into the portal. The sudden jump into the spiritual world and my immediate action surprised Azala. At this, she simply stared at me for a long second before asking, Do you have any plan? She asked. I didn't know what to say. At the moment, my plan was to improvise until I figured out how to kill the metaphysical manifestation of life. It's not a plan. It's more of an idea. I muttered, looking down. So we are just gonna winged. Her mouth curved into a smile. I suppose we are, I smirked. How different things I, Ezela added, a frown forming on her face. I have never been without a plan this long. Well in sure we will figure something out. I sighed, not really sure if I believed that myself, but one of us had to believe. A wise move coming to the realm where ironically I am on my weakest, a voice behind us commented, life had finally arrived. So we fight how ironic. I added with a tight lip smile. Fight how barbaric of you. Life remarked, amused for some unknown reason. I said I was going to kill you. But not that I was going to fight you. There is a big difference in two. I somehow feel insulted, Azala spoke, her eyes narrowing at the spirit in front of us. So, how exactly do you plan on killing us? I asked, maybe I could use her own overconfidence against her. I control life, and while it's not my realm, I have good enough control to decide who gets to have my blessing. Life smiled, meaning the moment I decide you two are unworthy of my blessing. Your lives end, I am having an awesome day, Azala muttered. So, it was good while it lasted life sang. God, I hated the bitch, now die. I closed my eyes for a second and nothing happened. I waited a few more seconds and nothing. Inferring with a realm. It's not something we will approve of, a disembodied husky voice growled. A growl I was all too familiar with, we will not. Tolerate this Gaia, added a honeyed sweet melodic voice. There was no mistaking, Kindred was here. Kindred, life spoke, her lips pressed together in annoyance. Is there a reason you are interfering with my work? She inquired, eyes narrowing her gaze going behind us. You are taking our prey from the shadows. The wolf appeared, baring his teeth in anger. We do not decide who was born, but we get to decide who dies. The lamb followed close behind the wolf, her voice calm like a river. Always so righteous, never breaking any rules you realize that if you don't allow me to end their life with my realm, they will die in combat, right? 
Life inquired with an exasperated sigh. That is up to you and him, but interfering with our domain to get what you want. Lamb leaned forward, her furry hands going to her quiver, will result in our wrath. The wolf growled, shaking the very earth beneath us. I will take a wild guess and say, these two are the personifications of death, right? Azala inquired with a soft whisper. Yep, I nodded with a half smile. They killed me hundreds of times. Do I want to know? Azala asked, tilting her in confusion. No, I replied. So be it. If I have to dirty my hands with blood to see my goal be fulfilled, then I shall gladly do it. Life stated, is that good enough for you, kindred? It is, Lamp replied, turning her gaze over me. You are not destined to die today. Don't make us start a hunt today. And with that, both the lamb and the wolf disappeared. All right then, Life sneered, lifting her hand up. Her palm aimed at us. Let's end this charade, shall we? Energy, like I had never felt before, started to gather on her palm, creating a sphere of spiritual energy, and doubts began to surge within me. Could I really beat her? If so, how? What I felt coming from her was leagues above my avatar state. Isn't this a bit unfair? A bunny appeared in front of life, startling her. I think it's quite unfair to kill him without giving him a shot Gaia. That bunny I recognized him. He was the only primordial that didn't mind fuck me that time. So, your interference is getting on my nerves, life stated. Her fists shaking in anger. He is also a primordial, Azala asked. And I nodded, of what? Carrots. Of the energy within the spirits, Sol chuckled. But I do like carrots. So I guess of that too. I snorted at that. So now what? I asked. Now he leaves. Life fumed clenching her jaw. No, I don't, Sol snorted. I won't let you use my realm to fight them. I'm not using your realm. Life replied. Her lips pressed into a thin line. Oh. Then what was that you were about to use to kill them? Sol inquired, his voice flat and emotionless. I, this is ridiculous. Life frowned, narrowing her eyes at Sol in anger. Ridiculous or not, it's my realm and I get too decided who uses it and who doesn't, Sol stated, crossing his arms. So every one of you will now interfere with what's right. Life barked, why? Because you are not being fair, Sol snapped as primordials. We have to be impartial. We can't interfere with human nor other spirits. We can merely guide them, but that's it. You have completely disregarded what we stand for, and now you are using your powers to fight a human. That by no means will have a chance against your power, even with Vato inside of him. I won't stop, life stated. Then let's make this a fair fight, shall we? Soul hissed, his form changing, and I couldn't help but wonder why was he so mad with life? Why was he so eager to protect me? Soul grew in size, his form taking a more malevolent tone, his eyes glowing red like a motorist beast, ready to rip his prey apart limp by limp. So would you rather fight me? Or fight them in a fair fight? Soul asked, baring his teeth at her. Very well. Life replied, her lips closely pressed together in annoyance. I will give them a fair chance at this. Very well. Soul nodded with a fake smile. I will see. So the challenge is fair. For the moment, they are free to go, right? He asked her, not really expecting her answer or approval. So much for a human, you barely know. Life added exasperated, much to Soul's amusement. You are free to go. Sol turned to look at us, ignoring the glare he was getting from his sister. I will be contacting when the time to fight her comes. She took his memory, Azala spoke, crossing her arms in a defensive stance. He deserves to remember, a small request, I can easily fulfill. Sol smiled, eyes shining in amusement at how little Azala feared them, or rather how well she hid her fear. Now go, and be sure to have your new friends with you. The spirit winked at us, and soon we found ourselves outside the spiritual world. I stood up from the ground, not really sure what would await me later on. What? What did Soul meant by your new friends? Did he mean Azala and the spirits? Were they going to help me win against life? Do you remember? Azala asked, her eyes narrowing in something akin to hope. I blinked suddenly, realizing I now knew who she was. I mean, for real. I remembered her naked. Her tears while we fought I remembered it all. Yes, yes I do. I smiled. Good, Azala smiled and smacked me in the face with a powerful slap. That's for lying, and for resetting my brain, she hummed. Ouch, but in all honesty I expected more. I chuckled. Well, that was just your part life. On the other hand, she will burn for what she did, Azala roared, flames bursting around her, melting the snow into a steamy explosion. Fair enough, I nodded, life deserved to die alas. We couldn't kill her, but that did. He seemed too eager to help you. And if I have learned anything these last few weeks was not to trust them, Azala stated. Her eyes closing and her mouth opening into a big yawn. I really need to sleep being kinda paranoic with life being our enemy. So I have only been sleeping two hours a day. And not all at once for the last week. I smiled, you can sleep back at the camp. I'll be on guard I offered. Sounds like a plan then, Azala nodded beaming with happiness. So, about us? Where do we stand? I'm not sure. I smiled. I think part of our attraction was the fact we were both kinder broken, and we simply fit together. 
So I'm not sure where we stand, I sighed. That sounds about right, Azala giggled. But in the meantime, I suppose we can be friends. She winked at me, pulling me into an unexpected hug. You did more than anyone has ever done for me. You gave a chance to live without madness, albeit the method was questionable. I will always thank you for showing me there are more things than power. So how do you feel about your father? I asked. Nuran is a great man, a very loving husband and a very caring father, Azala answered, a smile slowly forming on her face. I miss them, but someone had to save you. I meant Ozai, I coughed, and Azala punched me playfully. That man barely gave me any time of his day, and when he did, there was no love behind his actions, Azala hissed. I want in in your plan to take him down. I want to see the look on his face when everything he ever worked for is burning to the ground with my flames. Huh, very well welcomed aboard. I laughed, it sure will be poetic to see him wonder why you betray him, Azala chuckled, mischievous amusement sparkling in her eyes. If he asks, I will tell him. Father, if only you had given me the dollhouse I wanted with the accessories I wanted. I wouldn't have fallen into the dark side, my descent is your fault. I laughed, oh god please do. I would pay to see that, very well. Azala rolled her eyes at me, her lips forming a cheeky smile. Where is your camp anyways? She asked. A few miles to the east, I pointed. It should take us half an hour if we ride the snow. Then let's go, Azala commanded, redeemed or not, she was still bossy. Life slash Gaia POV kindred, soul and the truth had interfered in my plans. Even that face giving treacherous spirit I have for a sister betrayed me, and now they wanted me to offer the human a fair chance. Why couldn't they understand the world needed to be back in order? Rava and Vatu were not meant to be separated. They were meant to fight each other for eternity. Vatu eating imaginary food, and Rava always sleeping the world needed them to fulfill their purposes. Duties they had neglected for thousands of years. And yet why was I the only one that saw forcing them to be together was the only way to restore what once was lost. I think we have two options. Sol smiled as he hadn't threatened me a few minutes ago. One, we can have the human complete a challenge or two. If you are so insisting on fighting him, one of us can momentarily merge with him to give him the tools to fight you. A challenge or a duel, there wasn't much of an option. If I selected a challenge, they would pick something he could easily complete. But in a duel no matter if one of my siblings is inside of him, I have eons of experience. Something he lacks, after all, power is meaningless without skill. I pick a duel, it has been decided, a challenge it is where they ignoring me. I said a duel. If he wins you will leave him and the human world alone for 100,000 years. If he loses, you are free to pursue your ideals. The truth stated, and so the last game started, one that apparently I had no choice in. With life quite literally on my ass about how she wanted to restore the balance of things in my memory fully restored, I decided it was time to move forward with my plans of eliminating Ozai once and for all. At least while I waited for life and the other spirits to state the terms of her challenge. In other terms I had to act fast, because I had no idea how quickly the primordials were going to decide what challenge was fair under their peculiar perspective of things for me to take on. And considering my luck so far, it wasn't going to be something easy for me, probably life-threatening, if not downright suicidal. So with that in mind I started to move the pieces I had laid on the board so far. With the power I had amassed taking down Oz I was going to be super easy, barely an inconvenience. Also I thought hours after returning to the camp, and introducing Azala to you, and I, and Sakura the spirit laid their terms. The terms of the challenge were, simple yet, they put me at a great disadvantage. So much for them making it fair then again. Their challenge was considerably better than facing life, a primordial that would stomp me to another universe. So in a way, they had helped me. As for the challenge well, they would take away the bending elements I had mastered, and to add more difficulty as it was needed. They also took away any abilities Vatu had given me, my task. Face Ozai with nothing but my wits and physical might alone. If I won, life would leave me be. If I lost well, i rather not think about it. This meant I could not use any of the spirits I had brought into the living world. In fact, one of the conditions life had put was for them to remain in the spirit realm until I finished the challenge. So now, here I was with nothing. I seriously doubted my sword skills or wits were going to be enough to face the big bad idiot whose power now thanks to life towered over mine and the worst part was they expected me to win alone. I suppose it's time for some ingenuity because any other way, I would die at the hands of the biggest egomaniac in this world. I no longer had the power to take on the guy like he was a fly, so I had to consider every element around this challenge, and how to tackle it in, effectively. Ozai was a bender, and benders were heavily reliant to mid-range combat, with a spice of hand-to-hand -hand combat to balance things out, which normally leaves them at their weakest, when their enemy is too close. So if I took that little fact and Ozai's overconfidence, I maybe had a chance to win this challenge. 
but unfortunately that was a chance that I had ruined by revealing myself as the new ever to the last time I saw the fire lord. If the man had a single functional brain if the man had a single functional brain cell, he would take my little stunt as a warning, meaning that because of me, he would now be more wary of the threats around his throne, taking things and threats more to their real value, instead of diminishing them with his pride. Dot meaning milking his pride was not as profitable as it would have been. Fortunately for me, there were other emotions I could exploit on the man, among them his anger. The man was easy to anger, prone to it. While his fire bending was explosive and quite lethal, and his anger would only increase his fire output and therefore its lethality, it would also make it easier to read his movements, and have thanks to that it would give me more control of the fight. Of course this strategy was borderline suicidal, one wrong step, and I would be a goner. So if I were to try and capitalize on his anger, I would have to have a well-planned strategy, and a few contingency plans, in case I failed to control the situation as I wanted it to go. As for my weaponry, now that I had no bending, I had to resort to plebeian methods of combat that if handled well, were as lethal if not more than bending, things like poisons, explosives, traps and more, were the weapons I would have at my disposal to deal with Ozai, meaning in night terms. I would have to fight as dirty as possible, by using misdirection and lies to trick the Fire Lord. So for this fight, I would have to be hundreds of steps ahead of Ozai, in every single possible angle, from where we would fight, so that I could booby trap the entire area, to how the fight should play out, from beginning to end, counting every little detail, from my hits to my fails, all leading to his demise. I had to foresee it all, and act accordingly, and with Vatu by my side. I had a chance, it's as they say two heads think better than one. And while the primordial spirits made for the duration of this challenge, nothing more than a voice inside my head, his thousands of years of experience, and his access to my mind, would help me out more than anything. Why? Well, Vatu not only had access to every single thing I had seen in my previous life, but to information I don't think I ever saw, making my head a never-ending library of bizarre information, full and complete for Vatu's access. Maybe this was part of the gift the being that brought me here had given me, a head full of knowledge, that needed someone like Vatu to decipher. And if the knowledge in my head wasn't enough, there was always the spirit library. After all, right now knowledge was my weapon and patience was my poison. After planning for a bit with Vatu how to proceed with this ridiculously difficult challenge, I decided to face Ozai with a few weapons in my arsenal, some poisons and lots of misdirection and tricks. My strategy was simple, tiring him out in close range, using poisons and weapons as supplements for what I had lost. In my strategy all I needed to do was cut Ozai enough, so that his body would inevitably succumb to the poisons I had, and drop to the ground dead. This of course was not going to be easy, with firebenders poisons was tricky idea, because they basically had a massively high tolerance to them and other foreign substances, known to invade their bodies. Thanks to their bending, that would passively burn away whatsoever it was affecting them. This, of course, it's not as effective as many would like. Because if the poison or toxin is strong enough, there is no fire within that will stop its natural purpose of spreading and killing its victim. Now, this didn't guarantee me I would actually manage to poison Ozai. Because like I had said poisons were a tricky subject, the use of poisons on knives, swords and other melee weapons was very unreliable, and not as powerful as many would think if I had to say it was more of a fantasy myth created by others than anything. Its usefulness was at best questionable because there was no real guarantee the weapon would stay in the wound long enough to deliver a lethal dose of poison inside the body. Which is why, my plan was to cut him as much as possible with as many poison weapons. Why did I use poisons if they were unreliable? Well, if I was to fight him with melee weapons, I might as well use everything at my disposal. One can't never know what will give me the necessary edge to kill Ozai. As for my weapons, I had a short but useful variety of weapon that included but were not limited to throwing knives, explosives, swords, knuckle busters, and a fireproof whip I bought on the Fire Nation and more. These of course were only a little part of plans, because while I had to take Ozai down alone, that didn't mean I had to do it well, alone. The challenge was to defeat him on a one-on-one, -on -one, which was hard. But it would only be infinitely harder if I fought him and his army alone, downright impossible. So what if I lured him into a battlefield I had the best odds to win? What if I had someone to lure him for me? Azala would play a very important role in this. In my plan she would go back to her dad, and make it, so he has to fight me on my terms without him knowing that, preferably in a place with little space, and lots and lots of water to mitigate his fire. Or maybe, one with lots and lots of explosives so that he could not use his fire bending at all. A battlefield where the odds would be stacked in my favor. Do you think he will be suspicious of you? I asked Azla, who simply shook her head with a scoff. He is worse than I was for him the idea of someone betraying him. It's foreign, impossible, Azla chuckled bitterly. He feels everyone follows him, 
Because he is the chosen one to rule this world as a god. I see, I sighed, by the way, is there any room or place full of explosives, where I could fight Ozai? Many. But I doubt he will be that stupid to not see through such an abivious plot as Alahamd. But I could possibly trick him into another place like the Royal Armory, and from there you could drag the battle to the explosive area, trapping him into a hand-to-hand -hand duel, she smiled. I doubt he would see through that. Once he starts fighting he forgets about anything that is not incinerating his enemy. That could work. I was good at dodging. Let's do that, un POVA game of life. I had no idea what it meant, but I felt I had to do something. That dream where I saw the other avatar fighting on his own against all odds, for not only his future, but mine, because somehow they were both connected. It was scary, unreal, simply unbelievable, and yet a part of me told me. I had to go and help him. I am going to the Fire Nation. I told my friends who looked at me like I was crazy. You have yet to master the elements, Katara stated. If you go now, and lose everything will be lost. I'm going with you Twinkle Toes, Toph smiled. I don't know what's worrying you, but I will kick his ass with your ass, she declared sporting a confident smirk. Toph, Katara is right, Sokka sighed, rubbing his temples. I know you are having bad dreams, Arn, and they always have the guy we want to recruit. But going there, just because of a dream is a bad bad idea, you don't understand. I muttered, I have a feeling that if he dies I will be next, something inside me, a voice keeps telling me to help Vatu. Vatu? Toph inquired, who the heck is Vatu? I think that's the other avatar's name. I really didn't know for sure, I see his face, and the voice whispering help him. Help Vatu, over and over again, or we'll be next, life must be stopped, life must be on. I think you need to relax. And, I stopped Katara mid-sentence. I'm the avatar, and this is my choice to make I understand your concern. But every part of me is telling me. I have to go and help Vatu, and I will with or without you. I declared, and if I die trying, then so be it. I have escaped from my destiny for far too long. And this is a calling I cannot ignore. Azala's plan had worked almost too well, with her dad welcoming her with open arms. With no suspicion whatsoever. I mean, why would he be suspicious of the one that has followed his every order until now? He had no reason to do so. As for Ozai, he was in bad shape. Good for me, bad for him though. He had various wounds over his body that limited his movement a bit. And all, thanks to my last visit. Where I was a bit too stupid not to end him, meaning this fight was already looking less complicated for me. But not by much. He was still a fire-breathing human, while I was now a simple human with some physically enhanced abilities normal to this world, meaning while I was currently better than him, physically speaking, he still had the power to end me in one strike, should I make even one mistake. But, regardless of that, I was happy to see he wasn't in his best shape, broke from our last encounter, leaving him with a weakness I would exploit to the absolute limit. But for now I had to wait, in the shadows of the royal palace, until Azula had moved her pieces around enough to trick Ozai into, going where I wanted him to be where then I would try my absolute best to kill the man once and for all, ending this stupid challenge once and for all. As the days passed and I continued to explore the castle, I noticed that someone else had entered the castle the same way I had which was unexpected. Not many would dare to infiltrate the castle just because. So who was it? My answer who soon come in the shape of a blade going for my throat, that I barely managed to dodge, Zuko. So you didn't kill my sister, Zuko stated. And I couldn't help but notice he was wearing his blue spirit armor why though? What are you doing here? Bending over for my dad. No and no, I answered his questions. I came here to kill him. Like you, it didn't take me long to understand what was going on. Zuko had already deserted his dad, and had come to kill him instead of going to join Team Avatar. I see, Zuko eyed me for a second, putting his blades back into their sheaths. He's mine, normally I would say, go for it. But, I either kill him, or I die. I sighed, so no, he's mine, you either what? Zuko asked with a confused tone. Spirit shit, I answered. Right, I forgot you are the second avatar, Zuko replied. So if you don't kill him you will die. He asked and I nodded, that's rough. Here, let's make a deal I kill him. You deal with anyone that tries to enter. And you get the throne deal. I offered, the last thing I wanted was to waste energy with Zuko on a fight that would inevitably weaken me a lot. And is Azala okay with that? The Fire Prince asked in disbelief. She no longer craves the throne. I nodded, she's in on this, very well. There is not much I can't do to stop you anyway Zuko sighed. And I chuckled. For the duration of this quest, I have lost my bending. I chuckled as I saw his eyes open as wide as possible. Are you suicidal Zuko hissed? Without bending he will crush you. I thought you hated me. I laughed. I hated the idea of you outshining me. Like Azala had done all her life, Zuko replied with mild embarrassment. But back to the point, how in the name of a Nai, do you pretend to take on the strongest firebender in the world, with nothing but a pair of swords? I eyed his blades and he blushed. 
I was not pretending to use them against him. Look, I either die trying or die not trying at all see conundrum. I sighed. It's not like I needed him to remind me how stupidly unfair this match was. There must be an angle, something you haven't seen, Zuko muttered. If I learned something from my uncle is that spiritually speaking means what it means literally. I what? I asked tilting my head in confusion. Had drinking his own bad tea affected him so much? I mean, whatever the challenge is maybe it's not supposed to be taken so literally, Zuko elaborated. What exactly did they tell you? He asked, and oh god, I couldn't believe I was even entertaining the idea of telling him. Oh well, what do I have to lose? Well with accurate detail. I told Zuko what the spirits had told me, and I will never live this one down. But Zuko found a loophole, they said every power I had mastered, which meant every element but the one I had yet to use in any shape. Eh, perhaps if you unlock your airbending, the fight would be more on equal terms. Then again, I'm only speculating I have no idea if they left you with any bending whatsoever, Zuko sighed. But it's a start right, I may be. But still I might as well have no bending, air bending has been my Achilles' tendon for as long as I have been the Dark Avatar, I replied. Oh Zuko muttered, what would my uncle say think Zuko, think? Oh Akita to find your power within yourself you first have to find yourself within your enemy. Only then you will find the truest version of yourself. What for days I trained with now Friday Zuko, after he offered to help me out for no other reason, but to honor his uncle, and I accepted I mean what that hell. I had nothing to lose, so day and night we trained not only with the sword, but also trying to see if his theory was right about their bending, and so far nothing. Our fruitless training continued without a point, beyond increasing my swordsmanship to a more adequate level, until we saw a very familiar animal flying towards us, Ung's bison. I sure hope Ung and his idiotic pacifism are still together, I muttered, realizing I would lose hard should he try to fight me. Me too, Zuko muttered. Zuko Vatu, did did Ung call me Vatu? Tell the bald brat I do not want to talk to him. I am trying to unlock some power within or anything to win this duel I refuse to be one with Rava once again. I like it here. His name is Akira, Zuko said, crossing his arms. And he's with me. Seriously Zuko, why the attitude? Not a good selling point at all. And with Zuko things are not going well. But I can save it. I am not looking for a fig quote. I was cut mid-sentence when an ice blade coming from the top appa almost cut my arm. But it seems you are Katara. Ahn shouted, we can here to help him, not kill him. He almost killed you Katara hissed. I wanted to do the same, almost kill him, she's a keeper. I muttered sarcastically, making Zuko snort, who would have thought he had a sense of humor. Maybe this was the real him, when Anna wasn't on his ass. How did you find me anyway? I asked. Before Un could reply, Toph said, Twinkle Toes here just followed his heart. Quite literally I eyed the monk who nodded in response. I see, well that wasn't weird at all well. Here is the thing I can't get help. I either do this alone, or die aside. Not really, Rava spoke as Un spontaneously entered the avatar state, losing control of his body in the process. Even with Arn's help, air bending proved to be useless, which meant I was back to square one. Not that it saddened me much, I expected this result. So the plan started, with a few extra factors, Arn and Zuko would stop anyone from interfering, alongside Azula, while Toph, Katara and Sokka, would destroy the Fire Nation armory, in the case I failed to give the rebels an advantage. As for me, I was waiting for the Fire Lord in the Northern Caves. I had decided not to fight him with explosives nearby in the case he had like me managed to improve on his fire defensively. So, here I was, waiting, sharpening my weapons, going over all the possible scenarios and how to deal with them. One wrong move, and not only life would win, but the Fire Lord. It was quite poetic to be honest. And a bit unfair at the same, taking all my bending when water bending was a gift from whoever had brought me to this world oh well. I will fight like the human I originally was, with my fists, mostly because the technology in this world cannot provide me with an Alaska 47 just yet. Tick tock, little by little I started to hear the voices of Azula and Ozai approaching. It was time. Time to either die or win this challenge. What is the meaning of this Azula? Ozan growled as soon as he entered the cave. At this Azula kicked her father into the cave and jumped back doing a flip while shooting a lightning strike to the entrance, effectively trapping us inside. Go to hell, Azula winked devilishly, and the only entrance to the cave was closed by the debris, result of her attack. As I, I sighed today one of us die. I looked around one more time, seeing the natural pillars around the cave, feeling the damp atmosphere of the cave, and the little space he would have to move. I will deal with my treacherous daughter after I kill you, as I sneered. This time you won't win so easily, ain't that the truth perhaps? I chuckled, unsheathing my poison blade. We will find out soon enough primordials POV Akira and Ozai were about to face off in one of the caves inside the Fire Nation. The area was wide enough for the two of them to fight, 
but not wide enough Ozai would have a clear advantage. Akira looked around for a brief second, and then turned his attention back to Ozai. Let's end this, Ozai rushed at the Akira, propulsing his feet with pure fire bending. Akira stood still waiting for the Fire Lord to be close enough, and once Ozai was a few inches from him, Akira dipped under his attack as Ozai was about to reach him, and in quick motion, slashed the Fire Lord upwards with his blade. Ozai dodged this attack maneuvering around Akira with his fire propulsion. Akira was quick to catch on and slashed in a circular motion, cutting Ozai on the cheek ever so lightly. Am I a joke to you? Ozai hissed, his index finger touching the small wound. You think you can take me without any bending? We'll see how long you keep this bravado. Child, till you die, Akira chuckled, going back into position, his right hand on his blade, while his left reached to his pocket. Now you see me, no you don't. At that Akira threw something to the floor that exploded into a thick screen of smoke around them. Alzai at this scoffed, but before he had the chance to move or do anything, a blade came out of the smoke. In shock, Ozai sidestepped backwards just enough to dodge the blade completely out of instinct. Akira was so close there, the blade passed a hair's breath from Ozai's throat. Insolent. Ozai roared in anger, and before Akira could move out of the way Ozai swiftly kicked Akira in the stomach with devastating strength, using his fire propulsion to speed his kick to unnatural heights, delivering in the process some minor degree burns to Akira, while knocking the wind out of him, and stunning him for a brief moment. Fortunately for Akira, he managed to recover from the attack, and started to move before the Fire Lord ended the battle, running around the natural pillars of the cave throwing knives at Ozai, while using the environment as a shield. A smart tactic, one that Ozai didn't want to indulge in. You will die for your hubris. Ozai stated, flying towards Akira in a straight line. Akira took this chance to throw some small explosives at the Fire Lord, effectively blinding him for a second where Akira stabbed him with his last knife on torso. By throwing the knife with all his strength, you little Ozai growled, pulling the knife off his body, before blasting a torrent of fire towards Akira, who barely managed to hide behind a pillar. You won't we're not using your bending, it's just making this harder for you. Ozai shouted, last time I crushed you too fast, so I thought why not make a day out of this. Akira taunted as he treated the burns on his chest with some ointment to reduce the pain. This way I actually get to enjoy the battle, he added. Ah. Ozai felt right into his game, and rushed at him in blind rage for insulting his pride. Akira smiled at this, putting the cream back on his pouch, while putting on some goggles and a mask, and grabbing what we assumed was another smoke bomb, and once Ozai reached him, he immediately threw the bomb at the ground. This bomb however was different, because for some reason Ozai seemed to be in pain. Specifically around the face, welcome to the pepper strategy moron, Akira whispered to his ear, injecting the Fire Lord with something, as he tried to cut the Fire Lord's head, Ozai however noticed right on time and ducked under the blade. Unfortunately for him, Akira was quick to adjust, and moved his blade to deliver some significant dandy, cutting his right arm under his armpit, inhabilitating his right arm, and his ability to use a lightning. In pain, Ozai screamed, holding his arm in pure agony. However, he was still open for more attacks, and Akira obliged him, going for his head again. Ozai noticed this, and propelled himself backwards with his fire bending. But once again, Akira was quick to adjust to this situation, changing his attack to a closer target, managing to cut his left foot off. Ozai screamed some more, but regained his posture, burning the wounds, avoiding a bleed out. I will end this once and for all. The Fire Lord declared, throwing a torrent of fire to where Akira was. Akira once again quickly moved behind one of the pillars. But this time instead of stopping, Ozai simply continued burning the rock. You will die if you don't use your fire bending to stop the attack, unless you can't use it, he sneered. Took you long enough, Akira muttered, the sides of his body slowly burning under the heat around him. Akira was in a difficult situation. If he came out of where he was, he would die right away. If he stayed there, he was going to die eventually, burning slowly into his deathbed. Fuck fuck, Akira muttered in pain. The sides of his face, arms and legs already showing burns from first to second degree. His head already showing bald parts. It was a wonder how he was still standing with the intention to fight, a fruitless attempt now that Ozai had cornered him. And when all seemed like Ozai was going to win he coughed, blood stopping his assault. For a brief moment the poison had worked. The burned Akira took this golden opportunity to jump out of his hiding spot, and like a spear threw his blade at the Fire Lord, Dai Akira muttered, and as the blade came to Ozai, this in a desperate attempt to survive burned Akira even more. This however was not his primary intention. As his wounds and the poison inside his body didn't allow him to move, he tried to burn the blade, but failed to bring forth the necessary heat to melt the blade down, and was impaled on the head, dying. I won Akira muttered, his body completely naked and covered in burns. Fuck was the last thing he said before dropping to the ground, without realizing during his last second, he had managed to bend the air for a brief second. Akira POV the vendor had said, if the poison didn't kill a person in under 10 seconds, the guy would survive. 
Which is why I had in the last minute resolved to throw the blade at him. I had to win. I had to. So we died, Varda commented. I. it was fun while it lasted. I replied, did not want to die like this though a bit painful if you ask me. We won the challenge though, Varta chuckled. We did I chuckled. I'm surprised I managed to deal so much damage without him burning me away. In the TV series he was shown as a freaking beast. I mean he was above almost all firebenders. But not like in the show. The comet increased his power exponentially something you unknowingly avoided. Had he fought under the influence of the comet, he would have killed you in less than a minute Varda stated. Now what buddy? I asked. I don't know you died. This is new ground for me, Varta admitted. Well whatever it is, thanks for not being as evil as I thought. I smiled. Ha! Huh. I'm still the king of chaos and evil. Varta snorted, and I felt the presence of kindred around me. They had come for me oddly enough. I felt no desperation Akira don't take him you creepy fuckers, you wanna throw hands, let's do it. I could barely hear Vato at this point, but he seemed worried. His cycle the wolf growled has just begun, the lamb finished. And that concludes this episode. If you enjoyed it, I'd seriously love it if you guys could leave a like on the video as it genuinely helps out so much, and it keeps me going, plus it takes only one second. That said, have a wonderful day. See you in the next one.